Hey everyone and welcome to a full stack Next.js e-commerce application that we are going to build in this particular video and we are going to use the latest version of Next.js 13 and that is basically the app router. Now we are going to use lot of other packages for example this will be a full stack applications will be using MongoDB, Firebase, Strapi checkout and lot of other things. Now before going you the demo of this particular uh, application just one thing I want to mention that I've given a lot of effort while creating this video. So if you're liking this particular tutorial please give a like and subscribe to my channel and also if you can also share this video with your friends. So let's see what exactly we are going to build. So you can see that this will be our home page and here we will be having this login functionality. Now here also we are going to build the admin functionality. So let's go to the login page. All right, so let's start with registering a user. So let's I'll click here register. Now here, first of all, you have to give some name. So let's I'll give here John Doe, then give the email John Doe uh, 234 at the rate gmail.com. I'm going to copy this and let's say I'll give you a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then I'll give a role of admin. So here is a option that you can basically select. So I want to register this user as admin. Now let's click on register. So you can see the registration successful. Now let's click on login. I'm going to paste this email and the password is same and I'm going to do login. All right. So you are navigating to the home page. Now, you can see that here we are having mainly these four uh, pages and here there is a view of this admin view so on click of this you will be able to basically switch to the admin view so first uh, let's explore this admin view so i'm going to click here and in this admin view you will be able to see all the orders for all the other users now this part i'm going to discuss in a minute but first let's go to this manage all products now here i will be creating combination of client components and server components so some of the components are server some of the components are client so that you will get idea of both how to use so here you can see that we are having uh, this card view here you will be able to update delete and also if the product is in sale it will show this banner so now let's go to this add new product now let's i'm going to try to add a new product so i'll choose a file and here let's go to the pictures and here i'm going to select any uh, image so let's say this one all right now what will happen this one we are going to use a firebase to store this image and then we'll be getting the url back now many of you basically think that why i'm using both firebase and mongodb and the reason is because if i use both so you guys will get the idea of both the things that how you can use both firebase and mongodb at the same time and based on your convenience or basically based on your client preference you can basically use either firebase or mongodb now obviously i can definitely use only one of them but i it will be better idea if i try to use both at, uh, in this particular same project so that you will get some idea of both firebase and mongodb how to integrate in the next 13 version now here i'm going to select this size and let's give some name here man uh, t-shirt blue all right let's give a price of 200 uh, let's give the same description here here you'll be able to select a category and here we'll be able to give a delivery info so this will be free delivery right now here uh, you will be able to basically select if the currently product is in sale so i'll give this one as yes and let's give a price drop of 50 percent now let's add this product so product is added successfully now you will be navigating back to this page and here you'll be able to see this new product and if you want you will be able to update this product so let's say i want to update so i'll click here and i want to make this price drop as 60 percent and let's update this one so you can see that now this is updated all right so this is all about the all products so here you'll be able to also delete so let's say i try to delete a product so you'll be able to delete this one all right so let's delete this product only so let's say i try to delete all right so here you can see that the product is now deleted and we are getting the updated product so now here what i'm going to do i will be going to this client view so let's go to the client view and here we will be having three uh, mainly four pages so here we will be showing all the products so this is the client view section and we are going to use the same product here all right now here this is the men so it will basically filter based on category this is woman and at the end we are having kids all right now let's go to the details page 
so if i click here it will go to the details page now this is also a server component and here we will be basically showing the details and here we are having this add to cart functionality so if i try to add this one to cart so this will be added to cart all right so we are getting this notification also and here you will be able to also remove so let's say try to remove this will be removed if i let's go to the all products now let's try to add this one here so this is added if i try to add this one this is added now we will be able to go to cart so let's go to cart page and you can see that we are getting two products now all right now obviously you have to have some items here or else this will be disabled so let's check this functionality also let's i'll open this cart now notice here so if i remove from here also this will be updated here if i remove from here this is both the places this is disabled so now let's go to all products and let's add some products so i'll add one then two three four and then five all right so now let's go to our cart and now let's go to our checkout now here you can see that we are having this addresses now for this user you can see that we don't have any address added so what we can do we can create a new or basically add a new address so you can go here it will go to the account page here you will be able to see all the orders and you can add a new address so let's say i want to add a new address so this will be john doe i'll give some address here all right let's give country and let's give some dummy postcode so i'll save this one you can see that this is now added you will be able to update so let's say i'll update this one to one two three four five six let's save this one so you can see that this is now updated and it will be reflected here now not only this one you will be able to see now this one in your checkout page so now if i now go to cart and let's go to our checkout see this is now showing here so now this is disabled because you have to select address so if i select this one let's click on checkout so it will go to the checkout page so this one we are going to use this stripe checkout and here you can see that you will be able to see all the five items here also and this is how much you need to pay now let's take some uh, demo credit card number so i'll copy this i'll paste it here and i'll use some dummy data here so let's give some email with gmail.com let's give some name here so john doe all right and now let's click on pay once this is successful so it will go back to the checkout page it will check if the payment is successful or not and then it will show a message like you will be redirected to the orders page so you can see that showing loader and you can see that now you will be redirected to the orders page all right so you can see that now the order you are getting so here you will see you will be able to see the details and now the currently the order is in processing so this part we are going to discuss so let's go to the details page and you can see that you'll be able to see the details all right so now if i now go back to the order space so let's go to account and let's go to orders these orders because although you are an admin user you will not be able to process this order so another admin user will be able to process this so let's see how that will work so now if i now log out and log in now let's say this is a different user if i try to log in now now let's go to admin view so this is basically the admin dashboard and here you will be able to see all the orders if i now scroll down you can see that awesome so the new order is now showing here and this is the username and this is the user email and this is how much you have paid so this admin user will be able to update this status so let's say i'll update this one here so this is now updated order is now delivered if i now try to log in with this user you'll see that this will be basically updated here so if i now give john do 234 let's log in let's go to account let's go to view your orders you can see that now the order is delivered all right so this is how it will work now this is all the things that we are going to build and believe me there are a lot of things lot of functionality we are going to learn if i now log out and let's say uh, log in with a customer user so this is how it will look 
so you can say that this is a customer user and he don't have access for the admin page but if you try to access the admin view so this is how it will it will basically navigate back to the unauthorized page so you can see that you don't have access to view this page because this is a customer so they don't access the admin view so this is all about all the features that we are going to build i am pretty sure that you will learn a lot of things so in the next video we are going to install all the packages that basically we need so let's start working on this particular project i wish you all the very best and good luck hey everyone and welcome back so now let's install our project first and also in this particular video we are going to install all the dependencies that we basically need to complete this e-commerce project so the first thing is that i already created one projects uh, folder i'm going to copy this path and let's go to our common line and here first we'll navigate to this particular path and here uh, to create a new uh, next.js project we have to use npx create next app at the rate latest and then the name of the app you want to give so you can see that so let's copy this and we'll paste it and we'll give this one as e-commerce let's hit enter now it will ask uh, some questions uh, regarding this particular project that we are going to create and after that it will basically create the next uh, 13 project for us and you can see that we have to basically install some of the packages so i will just type here y and then uh, we'll keep this on no i'll keep this on no tailwind, uh, tailwind css we need yes source directory we need yes and also app router we need yes and this we don't want to customize so this is basically to import all the components and all the packages so for this one i'll not customize this one i'll keep this one as it is so i'll keep this one as no now this will basically install all the packages that we basically need for now i'll just pause this once this is done we are going to install all the uh, uh, packages that we basically need or basically additional packages to create this uh, project all right everyone so now the project uh, is now created and here the first thing we'll just open a new terminal and we have to install a couple of uh, packages that we need so the first one is that if i now go back you can see that we need this bclipped uh, js this is to has all the password while registering or login uh, a particular user we also need firebase we need this joy this is another very good package to validate any kind of uh, schema that we are going to create while creating the api routes then we need this uh, js cookie we need J, uh, json web token we also need mongoose uh, then we need react uh, toastify now this is another very good package this is to show any kind of uh, success or error notification uh, messages then we need stripe this is uh, to create all the backend api routes and everything for the checkout page and this is uh, for the uh, stripe uh, and this is the client side uh, package and also we are going to use this headless ui to create some of the components like uh, model and those things we are having so let's uh, start with this one so we have this uh, i'm going to copy this and let's uh, paste it here then we will install firebase let's go back then we are having this joy this is the package then we are having js cookie we also have to install J json web token so this will be json web token what else we are having we are having mongoose then we are having react toastify so this will be react toastify then we are having stripe and also we have to install this at the rate stripe slash uh, stripe hyphen j so i'll copy from here and let's paste it and at the end we also need this headless ui slash react so i'll copy this and we'll paste it here now let's install all of these packages now once this is done what will be our next step now in the next step the first and a very important thing what we are going to do uh, we will be creating our global context and also will create our main uh, layout page now why this is important because 
for the global state management in this full project we are going to use a react context api so for that one the first step will be to create our context file and also we have to basically create the main layout page now once this is done then we will be discussing some point and then after next video we will be start creating our components and all the folders that we basically need for this particular project so i'll just pause this one for now uh, let's uh, install all of these uh, packages all right everyone so as you can see that all the packages uh, are now uh, installed here so let me just run this uh, project so we have to do npm run dev all right now what will be our next step as i already mentioned in the next video we will be creating our glo uh, global context and also we have to basically create our main layout page now in that layer uh, layout page uh, we will be having basically the common navbar component because if you see the intro video uh, you will see in all the pages we are having the navbar component to navigate from one page to another page so navbar will be a common component and then we'll be having a children children is basically each and every page content uh, where whenever we'll change from one page to another page we have to basically um, change the content so this is uh, what we need to do so let me just run uh, this one here so you have to do localhost uh, 3000 uh, i think it will run and also let's do one thing uh, let me just minimize here let's give it some time all right so you can see that now we uh, we are getting this uh, home page now this content is uh, coming from this uh, page.js file so this is being uh, served here so let me just do one thing uh, let's remove all of this for now and we will be having uh, we will take one h1 tag and we'll give this one as e-commerce uh, website and also we don't need this image component so let's save this so we are getting e-commerce website so that's all for this particular video now in the next video let's set up our global context and after that we will be start working our component so the first component we are going to create and that is login page and the registration page so let's do those in the next couple of videos hey everyone and welcome back so now in this video we will be creating our global context so the first thing what i am going to do uh, in this source folder i will create another two folder so the first one will be our context sorry this will be context and the second one i will be creating the components or basically all the reusable components that we will be creating uh, let's do one thing let's keep this one as small and same we'll do for this one also that's it now here uh, we'll create our index.js and inside components we will create our first component which will be our main reusable component which is navbar and inside this we'll create index.js now here let's quickly create this component so this will be export default function navbar let's return some div for now because we will be changing everything uh, in the upcoming videos we'll give this one as napper that's it now let's go to our context now here the first thing is that we have to create our global context a global context will basically store all the state values that we are going to consume from each and individual component using use context hook so here we'll be doing export const this will be global context and this will be equal to create context and i'm going to give this one as null as a default value now here let's create this component so this will be export default function and i'll give this one name as global state now this global state will receive the children as a prop now children is basically the individual uh, component uh, content that we will be passing in this global state that we are going to return at the end so this will be children now this will return what it will return this will return this global context dot provider which will basically provide all the state variables to the nested child components now here i'm going to pass this children as a content now these children is basically is the uh, all the nested child components that we will be passing from our individual pages now here we have to pass some value for value is basically the state value for now i'll keep this one as empty object 
and for now this is fine so this is all about our uh, global uh, context that we need now how we are going to consume this one now for this one you can see that we are having this layout page now this layout page is basically our main layout or basically the root layout now here what i'm going to do i'm going to cut it from here and then the first thing is that we will take this global state because this global state will uh, store all the state variables so that means whatever component we are having in this particular project we have to keep those components inside this global state so that we will be able to access the those state variables from the um, from this global context and the first thing is that what i'm going to do we'll do like this i will pass this snapbar component here and also here what we are going to do will take a main component and we'll pass this children so that means what i'm doing i'm passing this uh, uh, children is basically this uh, content that i'm passing in this context here all right now if i now save this you'll notice that we'll get one particular error so let me just save it and if i now just go back and you can see that we are getting this error that you are using this context but this is not a uh, client uh, component so in nextjs 13 or basically the latest version every component is a server component by default so in this particular project most of the times we will be using the client component so for this one what we need to do we have to use this use client uh, at the top of this each and every component so we'll just copy this one and the same i'm going to use in this snapbar component also if i now save this and let's go back and i can see that we are getting our content here so we are getting snapbar which is a uh, common component for each and every pages and then we are having the main content of this current page which is e-commerce website which is coming from this uh, page dot uh, js file from here all right so this is all about our basic structure that we need now what will be our next step in the next step we will be creating our navbar component and after that we will be creating the registration page and the login page so let's do those in the next couple of videos hey everyone and welcome back to the next year's e-commerce series now if you are coming here for the first time i am requesting everyone to please subscribe to my channel and also like this video because it will definitely help me a lot to grow my channel all right so let's get started all right everyone so in this video we will be basically start working on this snapbar component so if you remember this snapbar will be a common component for all the pages so i think this will be a good idea to first start working on this particular component all right so now the first thing what i'm going to do i'll remove this code from here and then we'll take a, a empty tag here and then we'll take a nav now another thing is that when i'll be uh, taking all the class names for tailwind i'm not going to explain each and every class name because you will understand that it will be a very very long because we'll be using a lot of classes so i'll request you everyone to check the official doc because most of the classes will be very very easy to understand by the name only all right now in this nav i will take a class name so let's take a background of white fixed we'll do w full which is width as 100 percent z 20 then we'll do top as zero left as zero we'll do border b and then we'll do border gray 200 now here we'll take a div now inside this we'll take a class name so we'll make this one as max w screen excel then we'll make this one as flex we'll do flex wrap items center justify we'll make this one as between and also we'll do mx auto now you might think that from where i'm getting this one see i already have created this project previously right so i already have written these classes in some places and from there i'm just taking because if i am just doing or basically writing this class name while creating this video it will be very very difficult so that is the reason i already created whole project and from there i'm just taking the class name i'm i'm writing here so that it will be basically uh we'll be basically able to finish this project in a less uh, period of time because in this project our prime objective is to uh, learn the functionalities of nextjs 13 and also how to work with databases and firebase so we'll not uh cover much time in css part and also let's take a p of four all right now inside of this we'll take another div now in this div we'll take a class name and we'll make this one as flex 
and we'll do this one as item center and we'll do cursor as pointer now here basically we will be having the main uh, uh, title of this website now if you want you can give any images if you want to give here but for now I'll just take a span here all right now inside this I'll take this name and in this span let's take a class name so for this one we'll make this one as self center we'll do text to excel we'll do font as semi bold we will do white space as no wrap and i think this will be fine now let's format this let's save this and let's see what we are getting and let me refresh this all right so we are getting a header here awesome now next what we need to do all right here i'll take a div now this will take a class name here we'll make this one as flex we'll make the md order so order is basically which ordering we want to place this particular div so this will be order two and we'll take a gap of two now here there are a lot of logic involved in this snapper now the first thing is that if you notice that we are having these uh, nav items here or menu items now for these nav items we will be having different for client view and different for admin view and also we also have to uh, we are having the buttons on the right side so we are having account button card button those things and also log out login so what we need to basically check we have to check whether currently we are in the admin view or basically the user is is a auth user or basically the authorized user so because we haven't worked on those functionalities yet what i'm going to do for now i'll be taking those variable as a constant for now and later we will be exchanging or basically changing those variables with our context state variables now here the first thing what i'm going to take so the first thing let's take this one as uh, we'll take this on a const and we'll take this one as is admin view and we'll make this one as false for now then what we can take we can take also is auth user this will make this one as also false that means the user is not authenticated for now all right now you will understand why basically we need these uh, variables all right now inside of this what we'll do we'll take a fragment here and then here we will be having for now we'll take a button so the first one will be our account button so now you'll understand that this button will only be visible to the authorized users and also for the card button also because if you notice general websites like amazon flipkart you'll notice that user will be able to add uh, to cart even they are not authorized as a guest user but for this particular website we will not um, created that guest function because it will be very very big and there will be a lot of logics involved so what i have done i will keep this card button as a authenticated button so that means if you are authenticated user then only you will be able to add items to cart now here i'll take another button and i'll make this one as cart let's format this let's save this and let's see what we are getting so you can see that we are getting account and cart button here now here what we need to check we need to check if the user is authenticated and if this is not an admin user because when you'll go to the sorry if this is not an admin view so the reason is when you will go to the admin view in that case we don't have to show these buttons here so what we can check here basically we can check if this is not equal to is admin view and and if is auth user that means if the user is authenticated for now we are taking from here then only i want to show these buttons or else this will be null so we'll paste it here or else this will be null now let's format this and if i now save this right you will not be able to see this because the user is not authenticated if i make this one as true right if you see you'll be able to see this one here awesome now next what we need to do we also have to keep another button and that is to switch between admin user and the client user but when we will show that button if the user role is a admin that means if that particular or current user is a admin user so for this one what i will do i'll take another variable here and let's make this one as user and here i'll be having a property like role which is uh, we'll take this one as admin all right so this is a dummy user for now now here what we need to basically check we need to check if this user dot role if this is equal to equal to admin then only i want to show that button which is to switch between admin user and the client user 
or else will show nothing now here what is the catch now again here we have a, another complicated thing not complicated like nested ternary inside this again we have to check if currently we are in the admin view or not so that means if we are in the admin view we have to show the client button switch to the client view if we are currently in the client view we have to show switch to the admin view all right so let me just show you the website and then it will be easy to understand all right so here uh, let me just log in so you can see that currently we are not getting that button because this user is not admin user so we are only getting account and cart that we have already done if i now log out now log in again and i think uh, this is the admin user so let me just log in you can see that for the admin user we are getting admin view but currently we are in the client view so that is the reason we are getting admin view if i now click here you can see that this button is getting changed to a client view and also those two buttons are not showing so that is the reason what we need to check here if the user role is admin this is first step and also what we can check inside this we have to check if this is admin view then i will show a button of client view or else i have to show switch to the admin view i hope this is uh, clear so here i'll take one button and here i'll take another button if this is admin view what i need to show i have to show client view that means switch to the client view or else switch to the admin view okay now let's see what we are getting so we are currently getting admin view the reason is that i think is admin view is false if i make this one as true right so let's see now you're getting client view and if i make this auth user uh, as true also we'll be getting another uh, two more button sorry i have to make this one as false then only it will work okay so you're getting account cart and admin view this is fine okay so now this is uh, one step and now next what else we need we also have to take another button which is to log in and log out now this is pretty straight uh, straightforward because we just will check if this is a auth user then i also log out or else this will be a login button so this will be log out or else we'll take another button which will be login that's it if i now save this let's see so we are getting log out because the auth user is true if we make this one as false so you can see that we are getting login admin view this should not come obviously currently because the lo logic is not correct because if the user is false obviously the user this user will not exist correct so this will be something like this should not exist only so i'll just make this on some random value okay i hope you are getting so now you'll see that you'll only get login here but for now this is fine just to uh, give some idea what exactly we are doing all right so this is all about the all the buttons we need now what else we have to do we also have to basically render all the menu items now menu items is basically all these items here for this one i'm going to create another uh, component so let's create this one as function and we'll make this one as let's say nav items now here we'll return div and let's return some class name so the first thing we'll make this one as item center we'll make this one as justify between we'll do w full we'll do md flex we'll do md w auto and i think for now this is fine also we'll give some id for this one we'll give this one as like nav items all right now next we'll take a ul now for this ul we'll take a class name we'll make this one as flex flex column p4 for md we'll make p0 we'll do margin top of 4 we'll do font medium border border gray 100 we'll do rounded lg for md we are going to make this one as flex row for md we will take some space we'll do space x8 
for md will make margin top as zero for md will make the border as zero md is basically medium devices and background is white so many classes all right this is done now here what we need to map we need to basically map all the menu items so for this one we obviously have to create all the menu items now i'll just pause this video currently the reason is that i don't want to spend time creating all of this so what i'll do i'll create a utils folder and inside that i'll create array of objects and in that array of objects basically we will be having all the menu items and there i'll also having the path so i'll just show you and also what i'll do i'll just copy some svg file the reason is that uh, if i now just show you you'll see that for mobile devices will be having these three so for this one i already have created some so i'll just copy this so that i'll just use the same in this particular component so i'll just pause this i'll create all of this and we'll be back in some time all right everyone so you can see that what i have done just i'll just show you and also i'll add this uh, all of this code in the description so that you guys can uh, download it so you can see that i have this source folder and inside this i have this utils and this index.js now here i have this nav options which is for the client view and then i am having this admin nav options so to switch to the admin view we have to show these uh, two things if i just reconfirm you can see that for admin view we are getting two if i go to the client view we are getting four and here we are having id level and the path although this will give us 404 because we haven't created those pages but for now let's keep it like this now here what we need to do in this nav items component we have to basically check if the currently we are in the admin view or not because we are already having this admin view right so obviously we'll be getting this one as a prop from this particular component but for now we can directly access from here so here what we can do we can check if this is admin view if this is true so that means what we need to do we have to do admin nav options that we have created in the utils file dot map item and now here what we can do will return li the first thing is that we'll give a key so the key will be item dot id and also we'll give some class name for this li so for this li we'll make this one as cursor pointer we'll make this one as block then we'll do a py of 2 pl of 3 and pr of 4 we'll make text gray 900 and also we'll make this one as rounded and for md we'll make the ps 0 that's it all right so let me just format i think we are getting some error all right so i think here we need to give so for now we'll keep this one as null let me quickly just format this so in this li what we have to render we have to render item dot level that's it so i think this is fine now let's save this and let's see what we are getting so currently we'll be getting nothing the reason is that this is uh, uh this admin view is false and also we haven't used this nav items so that also you have to use so for this one what we can do we can go here and then so after this we'll just call this nav items component that's it now let's save this now i'm also i'm going to make this one as true for now just to check whether this is coming or not awesome so this is coming now what we can do if this is true we'll do admin nav options or else we'll just simply copy this from here and we'll paste it and we'll make this one as normal nav options so this is for the client view and if i make this one as false now let's save this you can see that we are getting home all products men women and kids and i think home we i think let's keep it like this still we don't need basically because we are already having this uh, link here but let's skip it so this is fine now what next we have to do we have to also show for mobile device we have to show that three icon for this one i already have just copied from my already existing code so the same we are going to use so let me just copy this from here because you can see that i haven't copied because here we are having these svgs and those things now here what i'm going to do let's paste it here so where we can paste it maybe after this and here we'll paste it and also for now we'll remove this on click and everything for now and let's save this let's see what we are getting for now so we are getting this one 
okay this is fine this we have to uh, give some class name for smaller devices we have to hide these options but for now this is fine you can see that this is getting hidden for medium devices so this is working fine and uh, here you can see that what we have done for amd this is basically hidden so that means for medium devices the display is none all right so that's it so this is all about the basic structure we need and also we have to do another very important thing and that is in the utils what we are going to do we'll basically export some of the global styles that we will be using in most of the places so let's do this one as const and styles and here i'll do this one as button and this will be a string the reason why i'm doing like this because in most of the places we'll do the same so for this one this will be margin top of five we'll make this one as inline block we'll make this one as background as black px of five py of three we'll do text excess which is small we'll do font as medium we'll do this one as uppercase we'll do tracking wide and also we'll do text as white that's it all right now next what we can do we can just import this and the same we can use in all the buttons so let's go here and let's search for button so here we are having so let's make this one as class name and we'll do this one as styles dot button let's copy this and we'll do it here here logout and also login so now let's format and let's save this awesome so we are getting all of this and let's do one thing let's make this one as true if the user is authenticated we should get two more buttons we are getting account card admin view and also logout and if i make this one as i think we are having this condition let me just quickly check so we are having if this is false and if this is true then only we should get if this is if this is true then i think we should get client view all right so you can see that we are getting client view and those two buttons are not seen because currently we are in the admin view so this is basically mentioning to switch to the client view and i think most of the things are done in the navbar all right now next what we need to do we need to do another very important thing and that is you can see that if this is going to the uh, mobile view on click of this basically we have to open a model and these uh, menus we have to show in that particular model so that we are going to do in the next part because the model that we are going to create the same model this will be that particular model the same we will be using for this cart also all right so that we will be basically doing in the next part so that's all for this particular video i will see you in my next video till then good luck and peace hey everyone and welcome back so now in this video we are going to create that common dialog component that we basically need on this card component and also when this navbar will be in the mobile view we have to basically show these menu items in that uh, dialog so for this one if you remember we already have installed this headless ui uh, package so the same we are going to use so the first thing is that let's do one thing in the components we'll create another uh, folder and we'll give this one name as common model uh, now let's create index.js let's use use client and this will be export default function common model now this will basically receive some of the props that we need to pass from the uh, parent component but for now let's keep it like this and let's quickly create the main uh, structure then we are going to uh, make all the make use of all the props that we basically need so the first thing is that we need this transition from headless ui slash react now this will basically eject a root component you can see that this is a property you can say and here in this route we need to pass a show property or basically show prop to show that model and then also we have to pass a as property we can pass here and for this one as we'll make this one as fragment all right now next we'll use dialog from headless ui and this one will do as as div component we'll use some class name for this one we'll make this one as relative sorry we have to make this one inside so this will be relative and all we'll do z index as 10 
also you have to pass a on close prop here that we are going to do now inside of this we'll do transition dot child and here we can pass some properties so the first thing is that we have to pass as so as we'll make this one as fragment only then we can pass some of the prop the first one is enter so this transition is basically as the name suggests is used to tra uh, css transition properties so here we'll give this one as is in out and we'll make a duration of 900 then we'll do enter from and we'll make this one as opacity of zero so that means when this transition will start this will be entered to and we'll make the opacity as 100 all right then we are having leave so when we'll be closing this one we'll make the same so we'll do ease in out and we'll do duration of 500 same we have to do here leave from and also you have to do leave to so leave to you'll be doing opacity of zero and this will do opacity of 100 that's it now inside this we'll take a div here we can self close this one we just have to pass a class name here so we'll do class name we'll make this one as fixed we'll do inset zero we'll do bg gray 500 we'll do bg opacity how much we'll make this one as 75 and we'll do this one as transition opacity <clears throat> now if you want to know about any of this class name just hover it will give you all the properties so this is first step now next what we need to do after this we'll take a div here and here we'll use a class name we'll make this one as fixed we'll do inset as zero we'll do overflow hidden now inside this we will take another class name sorry another div and for this one we'll use absolute we'll do inset zero and we'll do overflow as hidden for this one we'll take another div inside of this and here we'll make a class name we'll make this one as fixed we'll do inset y zero we'll do right of zero we'll do flex We'll do max w full and also we'll do pl of 10. now inside of this we will take a transition dot child now here again we can pass all of these properties now let's copy this for now uh, we'll just use the same all of this that we have used here that's it now here we'll take dialog now this will eject some of the uh, properties so the first one is panel so here we will use a class name so we can make this one as w screen sorry we have to be class name we'll do w screen and also we'll do max w md that's it now inside of this we will take a div here and we will use this class name we'll make this one as flex we'll do height as full we'll do flex column overflow y scroll sorry we'll make this one overflow y scroll we'll do bg as white and we'll do a shadow excel all right now inside this we'll take another uh, we have to take two divs now here we'll take a class name so for this one we'll make flex one we'll do overflow y auto we'll do px of four py of six and we'll do for small devices we'll do px of six for this div we'll take another class name for this one we'll make flex we'll do item start and we'll do justify as between inside this div we will take a dialog now this will eject a title now here we will be having the main heading so here we will be having main 
uh, or let's do this on as model title so this is first prop that we will be receiving so i'll take this one as a prop here all right so now after this we will take another div here and we'll take a class name we'll take a margin top of eight and here basically what we need to pass we need to pass the main content that means the content we want to render in that so this will be another prop that we will be receiving from the parent component all right so this is done now another thing we have to do basically and that is uh, what we can do we can do here let me just check yes so after this we have to take another prop so we'll take here the prop as so buttons because there will be some uh, component where we need to basically show the button so if this is true then only we want to basically render the button component that will be receiving from the parent component or else this will be null so here what we can do is we'll take a div and this div will basically render the button component because for cart component we have to show this component right so we have to pass this component from the parent component and for this one we will take a border t we'll do a border gray of 300 we'll do px of 4 py of 6 and also we'll do sm px as 6 and i think that's it now let's format all of this and also pass this button component that we will be receiving now here now what else is left the main thing is that we have to pass a show property here that is very important this show property is to show the model so for this one we have to pass a show prop that will be receiving from the parent component and also we have to pass a set so which is our set state method so where we need to pass this we need to pass this in this dialog and here you can pass this on close and then we can pass this set so as this on close and i think this is done so now let's save this now let's go to our navbar component and here what we are going to do we'll take a uh, state variable here now one thing is very important because this state variable we no need to uh, pass in other component right so that what we can do we can take this state variable either in this particular component or you can manage this state variable from the context also because we are using context let's do one thing each and everything we will be managing through context and, and this will be easy to understand because what we'll do we'll keep each and every state in one place so that whenever that state is required we will be able to extract from that context so the first uh, state we are going to take here and this will be const and what state we have to take this will be so nav model set so nav model this will be equal to use state of false now let's copy this and these two we have to pass as a value in this provider now let's format this we will go to our navbar so we have to extract those variables so we'll do const and we'll paste it here how we can extract we have to use use context and then you have to pass the global context that we have created that's it so now what we can do if you now go back you can see that here on click of this we have to show that model right so we have to go to this button component here in this button component and we'll give on click and here we'll do this set so nav model this will be true and also if you remember in this common mo model component we have to pass this set so now this set so will be will be receiving as a prop so how we are going to do that so for this one what we can do we can make this one as like if this so nav model if this is true then only we want to render or also we can do like this we can directly take this common model component and then we'll pass this so property and this so property will be so nav model all right if i now save this now if i now click here let's see what is happening so you can see that we are getting some error all right so we have to pass that proper property also this will be set so which will be set so no nav model and now this will work if i now go back and now click here you can see that we are getting this one below and this we need to <coughs> sorry hide so how we are going to do that for this one basically we can do something like this 
So in this component, what we can do, we will pass this some property. So this will be is model and for this one, I will make this one as false. You will understand why we are doing this and also in this common model component, you can see this will receive a model title this model title we are rendering here but for this one we don't have to render this so what we can do we can take another uh, prof here this will be so model title so if this is true then only we will render this or else this will be null and this one we will be receiving as a prop so for this navbar component we no need to show any kind of model title here so this will be false and also you have to pass a main content as a prop remember now main content is basically at the end this nav items component that we have to render so what we can do we can simply pass this nav items component as a main content there all right now here what we need to do one very important point because we are using same component in mobile devices and in normal devices also or means like in less uh, very small viewpoint we can pass a prop here let's say i will pass this one as is model view so this will be true and here we don't have to pass this on anything i'll show you how we are going to do that so that means currently we are in the model view so we'll go here and then we'll receive this one as a prop and by default this will be always false and then what we can do we can basically check in this div we'll take some template literals and you can see that for medium device we are making the display as flex so if this is not a medium device so that means we have to make this one hidden but only we have to make this one true whenever we will be opening this one in a model view so basically what we are doing here we'll check if this model view if this model view if this is true then only we'll show nothing or else we have to basically make this one as hidden if I now format and save this now let's go back you can see that now you will be not be able to see this but if I now close this you are able to see that the reason is because although this is hidden but we are making this one flex for medium devices this is little bit tricky the reason why this is becoming tri tricky because we are using same component in both the places all right but this is fine so we are passing this one as a true whenever we are opening this uh, component inside a model so in that case you can see that we are not using the hidden class but in other class um, in other uh, conditions this will be always hidden only for medium devices or like larger devices this will be a display flex all right so if i now go and then if i now close this uh, sorry open this one and let's click here you can see that we are able to see this one here and let's do one thing we already having some margin here so for this one we'll make this one as this is fine and also let's do one thing let's remove the border i think there are somewhere border is there here so let's go back and we have to go to common model i think somewhere we are using empty so this one will make this one as 20 still we are getting some border I think I have to check from UL I think we are getting UL means I think from here so what we can do I think we are having this border right so we can do something like this we can cut it from here we we'll take template literals and you can see that we are already passing this sorry we are already passing this is model view so if this is true will be empty or else we'll pass this border and border grid and also another thing we will do we'll make this one as border none all right i think now this is fine so now let's check what is happening if i now click here we are getting this and this is getting closed on outside click you can see that and if i now close this one this is getting hidden and we are getting this one for medium devices because the display is flex and i think that's all about this snapbar component that we need and with this also we have also created this cart model also all right because we are going to use the same component now what will be our next step now in the next step we have to start working on the registration page and the login page because we have to first we have to complete the functionality of a user new user registration and also a new user login after that only we will be start working on the admin view so let's do those in the next videos
Hey everyone and welcome back. So in the previous video we have completed the nav section. Now in this video what we will do we will basically create the main UI structure for this registration and also for this login page. So let's start with this registration page. Now if you see that this form controls or basically this input and this select whatever we are having we will be using all of this in all the other places whenever this is required. So instead of creating this one in multiple places what we will do we will create one reusable component that will be form elements and inside that we will create all our reusable input elements or select elements or whatever else we are having. So first let's start with that. So for this one what we will do inside these components we will create another folder and let's give this one name as form elements. Now inside this we will create folder again. So the first one we will give this one as input com component. Then we will create another folder and I'll give this one as select component. Now let's create our index.js. I'll close this. Now let's start with export default function. Sorry, this will be default function and this will be input component. Now this will obviously receive some props, but for now we will keep it like this. First, let's create the main structure. Now here we will take a div and let's take a class name of relative now inside this i will take a paragraph and now here i want to render the label so that means this is the first prop that i will be receiving from the parent components for this paragraph let's take this class name we will take bg white we'll take pt of zero i think background white is not required let's remove it for now then we'll take pr of 2 pb of 0 padding bottom then pl of 2 then we'll take minus mt of 3 mr 0 mb 0 and ml 2 we'll take font medium and also we'll take text gray let's take this one as 600 now next we will be having our main input now here we need to pass some placeholder so this placeholder we will be uh, receiving from props so this will be our second props next we are having a type this also we will be receiving from props or else we'll by default keep this one as text so this will be another prop that we will be receiving next we are having value so value will be another prop and also you have to take on change and this will be another prop that we will be receiving from the parent component so let's take this one as here will be on change and also you have to take value now let's take a class name here so we will take border placeholder gray 400 we'll take focus outline none we'll take focus border black w full we'll take pt of 4 pr of 4 pb of 4 and pl of 4 we'll take margin right of 0 then we are having margin top of 0 ml of 0 margin left we'll take text base which is basically by default you can see it will take the 16 pixel then we are having this one as block we will take uh, for this one we have to take bg so we'll take bg of white we'll take border gray 300 and we'll take rounded md so so many classes and i think this is fine all right so let's save this so this will be our one component the reusable input component that we need to basically use wherever we need to create any kind of form now let's move to the select component so i'll create another file this will be index.js now here i'll quickly create export default function this will be select component 
this will also receive some props but for now let's first clear the structure so here we'll return div for this also we'll take class name as relative then for the paragraph we'll use the same so i'll just copy from here and we'll paste it here this label also will receive all right now next we are having select so for this select we have to pass some value so this value we will be receiving from props so this will be value and also you have to take some on change because we have to um, manage the on change on select of some particular option so this will be on change sorry that's it now next let's use the same class name that we have used from here we don't have to copy the same thing we'll just paste it here now here what we need to do basically we will basically map the options that we will be receiving from the parent components so here i'll take options by default this will be zero oh, sorry empty array all right so here we'll check if this options and then options dot length if this is true or else uh, we will show nothing here so we'll just give this one as option and we'll give this one as select and for this one we'll make the uh, value we'll do id as empty and also we'll make the value as empty but if the options are available so we'll do options dot map so this will be option item and this will return the option now here we want to return option item dot label sorry this will be label and here we need to pass the id so for this one we'll do option item dot id and value will be the same so this will be option item dot id and also we'll take some key here which will be also option item dot id and i think that's all about the select component so that means we have created our main to reusable component that we will be using from all the places so this is one step done done now what is the next step so the first thing is that what we need to do we have to create the registration page because remember we haven't created any of the pages now here what we need to do we have to basically create a folder now if you haven't worked on next.js 13 i will highly suggest just see some of the basic concept that uh, they introduce in the latest version so whenever you will create a particular page let's uh, first i'll create a uh, folder here and i'll give this one name as register now here what you need to do you have to create a page.js file now whenever you will create a page.js file that will work as a index route or basically the main entry point of that particular folder so what will happen in this case this will be page.js so whenever we we'll, uh, go for slash register so this page will be basically getting served so here i'll do a export default function and let's give this one as register and then for now what we will do let's do one thing let's return some div and we'll use some class name here we'll do bg white and we'll do relative for now i'll just do here a register and let's see what we are getting if i now save this let's go back and see that if i now go for slash register so you can see that we will be getting a register phase although you can see that it's not showing here the reason is it's going on top here so that we need to basically take care so how we are going to do that for this one we have to write some global css so what we can do i think we already have the global layout.js and here you can see that we are having this main so here we can give some class name so here we'll give this one as flex we'll also give mean screen which will take the 100 vh as the mean height then we'll give this on a flex call and also have to give a margin top now i'll show you why we need to give a margin top if i now inspect here you can see that the height here is in this nav it is around 64.8 so what we can do we can give a margin top of 65 pixel if i now save this you can see that now we are getting this register here right because uh, this 
this is fixed so for the main content we are taking the height we are subtracting the height of this navbar and based on that we are creating the main content here all right so this is fine so now we are having the register page the same way let's quickly create the login page also so we'll go here we'll create another folder i'll give this one as login and let's create page.js i'll just copy from here and then we'll paste it here and also we'll use don't forget to use this one as yes client the same we can use here and this will be login and the same will be login if i now save this and let's go to the login page so you can see that now we are getting login here all right so now i think we have almost created the main uh, components reusable components that we need and also create the pages now let's start working on the registration page first so we have to basically create this structure here all right so for this on the first thing what we can do we have to create a form controls now that i will be showing in a minute why we need to create form controls because you can see that if i go here we are having one control two three and four now these three are of type of input but this is a select so instead of rewriting this component multiple places what we can do we can create an array of objects and then we can just map that array of objects and based on the type of component we can render those components all right so i'll show you how we can do that but before that let's quickly create the basic structure that we need so we'll go to registration page we'll close everything else and i'll remove this one from here now first let's start with taking a div now here i'll take a class name and i'll make this one as flex flex call now i'm i'll be writing this one little bit first because if uh, as i already mentioned that will not discuss all the classes in details item center justify between pt of 0 pr of 10 pb of 0 and then pl of 10 we'll do margin top of 8 mr auto and then we'll do max w 7 excel and also we'll do excel we'll do px of 5 for large we'll do this one as flex row that's it now inside this we'll take another div here and we'll make this one a class name we'll make this one as flex flex call justify center item center we'll do w full pr of 10 pl of 10 and for large we are going to make this one as flex row that's it now inside this we will take another div here We'll make class name we'll do this one as w full we'll do margin top of 20 mr of 0 mb of 0 ml of 0 we'll do this one as relative we'll do z uh, sorry we will do max width 2xl for large we'll do mt of 0 and for large we'll do w of 5 divided by 12 that's it now inside this we will take another div class name we'll take this one as flex flex column then we'll take item center we'll do justify start pt of 10 pr of 10 pb of 10 and also we'll take pl of 10 we'll do background as white we'll do shadow to excel and we'll do rounded excel also we'll make this one as relative and we'll do z of 10 awesome and now inside of this we will take a paragraph now here we have to basically render this message this sign up for uh, account but once the sign up is completed or this is successful we will be showing another view so something like registration is successful please log in 
so for this one we need to give some condition here but before that let's take some class name so for this p we'll do w as full we'll do text for excel we'll do font as medium we'll do text center we'll do this one as font serif now inside this we have to give the condition so for this one for now we'll take some global variable so let's take this one as is uh, registered and this will be for now false so we will show here if this is registered if this is true then we'll show this one as like registration successful or else this will be this message so i'll copy from here and let's paste it here that's it all right everyone so next what we need to do so we have to basically take another condition the reason is once the registration is completed we have to hide this form controls and we have to show this login button so what we can do we can simply here take another uh, the same uh, flag that if the each uh, register is true so we'll show some button here or else this will be something like null now here uh, what we can do we can give this one as login and then let's take the class name so for this one we'll give this one as inline flex we'll do w full we'll do item center justify center background we'll take this one as black we'll do px of 6 py of 4 we'll do text large then we'll do oh sorry text large then we'll do text as white also we'll do transition all we'll make a duration of 200 we'll do this one as is in out what else i think we'll do this one as on focus we'll show some shadow we'll do font medium we'll do uppercase tracking wide so this basically gives give us the letter spacing and i think that's it this will be fine now let's format this for now we'll keep this one as null just to check what is uh, what we are getting so we'll make this one as true all right everyone so now let's check what exactly we are getting so if i now go back so you can see that we are getting this uh, button here but this box is not centered and also you have to style the scroll bar so i already opened this scroll bar css so we can just copy the same from here so we'll copy this and let's go to our global css and we'll paste it here and instead of this one em we'll make this one as 5 px all right so i think this is fine so now let's check what exactly we are getting uh one minute so we'll go here so you can see that we are getting button and everything is fine but this is not centered so for this one i think the reason is we have given some uh height uh, sorry width for this particular div here so you can see that we are having this max w7xl let me just remove this so this one we can remove and if i now save this this should be centered all right so i think now this is fine all right so I, this view is done so now what we need to do we have to create this particular view but if you remember i already told you that we have to basically create some form controls so for this one where we will create those so we are already having this utils file and here we will create this export const give this one as registration form controls and this will give a id of name then we are having type as text then we are having placeholder this will be enter your name and we are having label of name and also you have to give a component type now component type is basically the component that we have created either it will be input or it will be a uh, select so this will be a type of input so now let's copy this and we'll paste it four times because we have total four controls 
all right now let's quickly uh, change all of this so this will be email this is um, will be type of email this will be enter your email label email and component type will be input next we are having password this will be type of password this is also I'll copy from here and this will be type of input and this will be role this is type is empty for this one we don't have any placeholder and then we are having level which is role sorry this will be level which is role and component type will be select and also you have to create the options because you remember we have to pass the options so we'll create options and here we will create id id this will be either this will be admin and label this will be admin next we'll create another for this one id this will be client or let's give this one as customer not client and the label will give this one as customer that's it so you have created all of this and also one thing i remember that we have created this uh, button styles here i don't think because we are using tailwind css2 we don't have to keep this one like this so we'll be using in all the uh, places so i'll just remove everything from here i think this is not a good practice so that is the reason i i thought about it so i thought that i'll remove this one and we'll use these styles in those particular elements only whether this is div or paragraph instead of keeping like this so I'll remove everything from here and also first thing is that we have to go to this nav bar and then i'll remove these uh, styles we don't need and also wherever we use this one i'll just replace this one with this class name so what we can do right uh, we'll do here edit replace we'll do styles dot button and then we will replace with this one so we'll just pass it like this let's save this so let's see whether this is working or not okay this is fine so now what we have done we have created this uh, registration form controls so what we have to do what we just have to map it so we'll go here in this registration page and you can see that if the registration is successful we'll show this one or else what we need to do we'll take a div here that's it now for this we'll use some class name so we'll do this one as w full We'll do mt of 6 mr of 0 mb of 0 ml of 0 we'll do this one as relative and also we'll do space y of 8 now here what we have to do here basically we have to do registration form controls dot map so this will give us item or let's take this one as control item and here what we will basically do we will check if this control item dot component type if this is equal to equal to input so we'll render the input component or else if this control item dot component type if this is equal to equal to select so we'll uh, use the select component all right or else we'll keep this one as null for now because we don't have anything else so here what i'll do i'll render the input component that we have created so this is the input component and here we'll use the select component that's it now let's format this now remember in this component we have to pass all the properties so the first thing what we need to pass we have to pass the type so type will be control item dot type then we have to pass the placeholder which is control item dot placeholder then we have to pass the label label will be control item dot label all right value will don't have for now so for now this is fine we'll be managing all the form next in the next part and the same here what we need to do we have to pass first we have to pass the options which will be control item dot options then you have to pass the label control item dot label and i think for now we don't have placeholder for select now let's format all of this and if i now save this let's see what we are getting and also you have to make this is registered as false all right so now let's uh, quickly check what exactly we are getting so if i now go back all right so we're getting name email password and role but there are some issue let me just check oh i i got it so i think we have to make this one as position absolute because we're uh, using relative here so let me use absolute here if i now save this let's see 
all right so this is fine the same we have to use in the select component also so this is fine but still there are some issues so this part also we need to check i think here what we can do right so i think because uh, this border is coming so let me just give some background color for this paragraph i think then it should work so here if i give background as white all right so this is working all right so i think here we need to give bg white and same we can give for this one also so this will be bg white now let's save this all right so now this is fine so we are getting name email password and also role is admin and customer so now what next we need to create we have to create the button so button is basically to when user will submit for registering so here what we can do after this here we can take a button and we can give this one as register that's it now here let's take some class name so what we can do i think we can use the same class name that we have used here so i'll copy this one from here and then we'll paste the same here so let's save this and let's see what we are getting all right so we are getting register this is fine but here another catch is that when we will be registering we have to show some kind of loader state but that we will be doing later because for that one we have to complete the functionality now another thing is that don't worry that if you're thinking this design and this is not matching because at the end when we will do review of all the pages then we will be basically fixing all of this minor css thing but for now this is fine so now this is done now in the next video what we'll do we have to start working on this uh, login uh, page now if you notice here here the structure is almost same now what i'll do i'll just copy the whole code from here in the next video and the same i'll paste in the login page because we don't have to write the same css classes again and again the only difference is that for login page if you notice there are two form controls and here we are having four and also there are two buttons so it will not take much time and also in the next video we also have to handle this form and after that we have to start working on the api routes and all the services for this registration and before that also we have to create our mongodb database and also we have to connect uh, connect to our mongodb database so that we will be doing in the next couple of videos so that's all for this particular video i'll see you in my next video till then good luck and peace hey everyone uh, welcome back so in the previous video we have completed the registration page now in this video we are going to create the login page now if you remember we, i already told you that we are not going to write each and everything from scratch because if you see the structure here we are having four form controls and one button and here we are having the same form controls only two and then there are two buttons so the first thing what i'm going to do i'll just copy all the code from this registration page and then we just need to change the configuration for these form controls so let's go back and then i'll just close everything else here and let's open this login page then the first thing what we can do here you can see that we can copy this part from here so let's copy it and then we will paste it here now here there are something we need to keep in mind and that is this thing we are having that is registered so this part is not required because once the login is successful we will be navigating back to the home page of this particular website so no need to show any kind of extra information here so i'm going to remove this one from here and if you see that we are having only login as a text so we'll keep the same so I'll remove everything from here and we'll keep this one as login and same also this part we can remove so let me just remove from here also and also you can remove this logic that's it all right now here you can see that we are having registration form controls but instead of that we have to create login form controls so let me just go to the utils file so we are having this index.js and here we we'll, we will basically create another form control and that will be for login so this will export const login form controls now here we are having uh so let me just copy from here so we'll copy this one then we'll paste it here sorry so this will be for email and then we are having one for password so we can give this one as password type will be password 
enter your password and the label will be password now let's save this now we'll go to the login page and instead of this uh, registration form controls we have to make this one as sorry we have to make this one login form controls that's it and also in this button we are having instead of register we are having login now first let's save this and let's see what exactly we are getting so if i now go back and let's go to our login route all right we are getting some error input component is not defined so this we need to define and also you can see that we don't have any kind of select component here so that means we can remove this condition so we will remove this part from here and also we'll import this input component now let's save this let's see all right so you are getting login email password and login and then you have to show this particular link which will be new to website and then there will be a register uh, register button so that we can do very easily what we can do we can go here and then after this button we'll take another div and let's give a class name of for example flex flex column and gap of two now inside this i will take a paragraph and i'll give this one as new to website and then we can copy the same button from here and here we can give this one as register now let's format this and let's see awesome now what we need to do on click of that we have to navigate to the uh, registration page how we are going to do that so for this one we will be using something from next slash navigation so for this one we will take our router so we'll do this one as router which will be equal to use router and this we have to do this one from next slash navigation to do this one as from navigation that's it and now let's copy this and then here on this button we have to take a on click and we'll do this one as router dot push and we have to make this one as slash register so that means on click of that we want to navigate back to the registration page let's save this and now if i now click here it is going to the registration page and now i think the main structure is done if i now go back this is the login page and this is the registration page all right so main ui is now completed so in the next video what we have to do the first thing is that we have to create our mongodb database and also we have to connect to the database and after that we will be start working on this registration page the first the way we will be doing first we will be creating the backend for this or basically the api api route the models services and then after that we'll be start working with the front end and back end integration for this registration page and then only we will be able to create the login page functionality the reason is until unless we we, we will basically create only one user it is not possible for us to check whether the login is working or not so in the next video we will be start working on this registration page functionality so that's all for this video i will see you see you in my next video till then good luck and peace hey everyone and welcome back so in the previous video we have completed our main ui structure for both registration and login page and you can see that i just logged in in my mongodb database and here what we need to do basically first we have to create the project and the first thing we need to do is to create the database connection so you can see that i am currently in this project slash create in this particular page and here first thing is that you have to give some name for your project so let's give this one as next js e-commerce 2023 i'll click on next so here you have to choose the project owner and also one thing is very very important i will highly suggest for each and every one if you please create your own mongodb database account and then use the same link because if you use mine then it will be a problem so just create your own and the same url you can use in your project here you have to do create project now this will create the project and now it will basically navigate to this cloud instance where we have to create uh, you can see that we are currently in this cluster page and here i'll create build a database now here obviously we will choose this free tier so i'll click on this free option uh, we'll keep this one as a aws and then we'll do this one as create you can obviously give some name to this cluster but for now i'll just do create all right now here we have to do some security so let's 
verify now this will create you can see that we are having some username and password and password we can give some password like uh, one two three four five six seven eight uh, then we'll do create user so it is saying that it's too weak so what we can do one two three four five six seven eight and then two zero two three all right now here i will add my current ip address so already i think it's added here and also this is my local environment and then will be finish and close and then we have to do go to the database now here i think it will basically deploy all the changes you can see that now this might take some time for um, each and every one of you once this is done then we will be able to connect so once this is done i'll just pause this video for now and then i'll be back in in a minute all right everyone so this is done now we will do here connect so once you will click here so here you will uh, get this particular option and that is you have to do this on mongodb for vs code and you'll get this uh, url here and the same you have to use so now we'll go to our uh, vs code and then inside the source i'll create another folder and i'll give this one as um, let's give database and inside this i'll create index.js and the first thing is that what we need to do is to import mongoose from mongoose and then we will create some of the options but before that let's create our connect to db now this will be async method and here we have to also do this on export default connect to db now here what we need to do this will be const connection url and this one is the same that we have to use so we'll copy from here and for now i'll just use it like this and here instead of this password we have to use the password that we have used and that is one two three four five six seven eight two zero two three that's it and now after that what we need to do we have to use this mongoose and this will eject a connect method and here we have to give this one as connection url and here also we will be taking some of the options so this all basically will give this one as config options now here we'll use this use new url parser this is as true and also we'll use this use unified topology this is as true and the same we can use here so we need to pass it here so this will be config options that's it and then this will give us a uh, promise and then here we can just log something like this so we'll do console.log and we'll uh, write like database or let's give this one like this uh, e-commerce database connected successfully that's it if there are any error so we have to obviously uh, log the error so what we can do we can just catch it here sorry we can take error here and then we can just do console.log then take template literals and we can do something like this getting error from db connection and here we can just render this error dot message that's it so let's format this and i think for now this is fine and also if you want there is a property in uh, mongoose and that is called uh, strict query and you can make that one as false but for now i think this should work so now let's save this and this is all about the uh, database connection that we need now what is the next step now if i now just go back and you can see that the first thing is that what we need to do we have to create the model for this registration or that means the user that will be registering for the first time so that will be new user so whenever we will be creating some kind of schema for that one we have to always manage those schema in a different folder so inside this source i'll create another folder and let's give this one name as models now here basically we will be having all the models that we will be creating for example for new user then for product for cart orders and those things now here we'll do the first thing is that user.js so this will be our newly created user 
now here we'll do import mongoose from mongoose and then we'll do const user schema now this will be new mongoose dot schema now here we have to basically pass that what are the fields that we basically need so we need a name which will be of string we also need email which will be also a string we need password which will be a string and also we'll need a role whether that is a admin user or a customer so for this one this will be also a string now here we'll do const user and here what we have to do we'll do mongoose dot models dot user or else it will be mongoose dot model and this will be user and here we'll pass this user schema that we have created and then we obviously have to export this user schema that's it so this is very simple that we need so this is all about a new user whenever we will be creating from here in this page so this is our first step so whenever we will be creating any backend there's there are some steps are involved so the first thing is that we have to create the schema the second thing is that we have to create the api route the third thing we have to create the services file and the fourth we have to integrate that services file with our front end so this is the whole process all right so now next step we have to create our api routes so for this one we will be going inside app and here we have to create our folder and the name has to be api now inside this will create another folder and i'll give this one as register and then inside this i'll create route dot js so this will be our route api route for the registration uh, functionality that we will be creating all right now here this will be obviously a post method because whenever we will be typing some name and we have to post and we have to save those details in our database so this will be export async function and we have to do post and this will get a request object that we will be passing from our front end now here the first thing is that what we need to do we have to connect to our database so because this is async so directly we can do await and this will be connect to db that's it so this is the first step now next thing is that if you go here you see that we are having name email password and role so that means these all the value that we will be receiving from our request object so what we can do we can do here const and then we'll be getting name email password and the role this will be will be getting from avid request dot json now we have to basically validate these values that exist or not and for this one if you remember if i just go to the package.json we have installed this package called joy and this is a schema validator that you can use and this is very very useful so that we need to do so how we are going to do that so for this one we will be use uh, always creating a schema here and this will be joy we have to import it and this will be dot object and here you can give that what are the fields that are mandatory and what are the fields that are not all right so the first thing we will start with name so for this one we will do joy and here this will be dot string and this will be dot record so that means this is a mandatory field then we are having email so this will be joy dot string sorry dot email and this is also required next we are having password so password we can give here joy dot string and here what we have to do we have to give a minimum of six so that means the password has to be minimum six uh, letters and this has to be obviously required and at the end we are having role which is also joy dot string dot required so you have created our schema now this schema we have to validate before that we have to do another thing i'll show you so you can see that in nextjs 13 there is a property that we can always use in our api routes and that is called dynamic now this basically will change the dynamic behavior of a layout or a page to a fully static or dynamic now here what we are going to do we will be always using this force dynamic as an option now so this basically will disable all the caching and always revalidating the data that we'll be getting 
now if you are using next.js version 12 you can use this one whenever you will be using this get server side props in the pages directory but we are using next.js 13 right so this is different so you can't use this get server side props so for this one what we can do always we can do export const and then this will be the property name is dynamic and the value you can see that there are so many values that you can give you can give auto force dynamic then you can give error and also i think there are some more force static so here the value will be we'll give this one as force dynamic and here after this we have to basically validate the schema so how we can do that so whenever we will be validating if the schema is getting failed it will always give us a uh, error details so that we can destructure so this will be const error and this will be the schema that we have created and this will eject a uh, validate method so you can see that this is a method now here you have to pass all the values that that needs to be validated so for example we are having name we are having email we are having password and also we are having role so these all are the values that we are validating all right now here what we can do if there are error so if error is exist so we will obviously directly return so what we will return we will return next response and this will be a json and here we can basically give something like success is false and then we can give a message so which message so this error will give us a details and we can pass the first um, array so that we'll be discussing in a minute for now because until unless we'll integrate with uh, our front end it will be difficult to understand for now this is fine so if there are any kind of schema validation error we'll immediately return now next what we need to do we have to start working on saving our uh, user in, in the database so for this one we'll take a try block and then here and also first let's take a catch also so this will be error now here we'll do something like console.log and we can give like error in new user registration and and i think for now this is fine also we can give like return next response dot json and we can give obviously success as false and we can give like a message but we can give like something went wrong please try again later so this is all about our error handling now here what we need to do the first thing is that we have to check if the user is already exist or not how we are going to check that so that is so we have to check if the user is exist or not now that is pretty simple so we can validate using the email so you can do here const is user already exists so here what we can do we can do here await and now you can see that we are already having this user model that we have created so in the model here so we'll just import this one and this will be dot find one and here we have to pass this email as a property that by which property you want to find the user so that means if there are same user with uh, sorry if there are different user with same email so it will obviously give us an error so here what we can do if this is this is already exist so we'll return so i'll just copy from here we don't have to write every time and we'll paste it here this will be false and here message what we can do we can give like user is already exists please try with a different email that's it all right or else what you have to do now that means the user is not exist so first you have to has the password so for this one we will be using the bcrypt js that uh, js that we have installed the package this is the one so what we can do we will do const has password this will be await uh, and then here we we'll use the has and then we will you uh, pass the password and pass a number of like uh, 12 here 
all right so this is basically the salt which can be string or a number now here we'll do const newly created user which will be equal to avid user this is the model and then this will be dot create so this will create the new user and will pass name will pass email will pass password which will be our hash password that we have created and also you have to pass the role so that means this will create our new newly user and now here we can check if this newly created user if this is true then what we can do we can return another response so we'll copy this and we'll paste it here and in this time this will be a true and here we can give account created successfully that's it so this is all about our uh, the first api route that we have created i hope this is pretty simple and also i have also discussed each and every step in details so that means we have completed our second step created our model created api route now next thing we have to create the services file now what is services file services file is basically we are we will be keep, keeping all the uh, api calling logic in one place so it will be very easy to uh, understand so we'll go to a source and then here we'll create another folder this will be services and here i'll create another folder i'll give this one as register and let's create index.js that's it now here we'll do this one as export const now register sorry we'll give this one as register new user and this will be definitely a sync method and here we'll be getting the form data now this form data we will be receiving from our front end now here we'll do try and if there are any uh, error so we'll do catch and we'll just log here console.log uh, error that's it now here in this one what we can do we can do const api response or make this one as only response and we'll do this one as await and this will be a fetch now from where we have to fetch it we have to go to the api route inside api we are having register so from here we want to basically fetch the data so you have to go to slash api slash register i hope you are getting and here what we need to do we also have to pass the method so sorry this will be method which will be a post method and also we'll pass a headers and here we'll pass content type as application slash json and also we will be passing the body body is basically the details of all the name email password and the role that will be creating so body will be json dot stringify and this will be the form data that we will be getting that's it so this is all about the response we need and then we'll do const final data which will be await sorry we don't have to do i think directly we can do response dot json and then we'll just return this final data now let's format this and let's save this and everything is completed so we've complete uh, created our model we go to our route we created the main route from where we'll be saving the data into database and this is the services file from where we'll be basically fetching from that api route now next step in the next step what we need to do we have to basically handle this registration form from the front end side and then we will be basically calling this services file from this file and then we'll be saving the user in the database and that we'll be doing in the next video so that's all for this particular video see you in my next video till then good luck and peace hey everyone and welcome back so in the previous video we have created all the model services file and the api routes for the registration page now uh, it's time to integrate our front end with the back end so i'll just close everything else and you can see that this is our registration page now what will be the first step first step is that we have to handle this form from the front end side so what we will do we will basically take here const first we'll take a initial state now here this will be name as empty email will be empty then we are having password which will be empty and then role will be by default we can keep this one as customer 
now what we'll do we'll do this one as const form data set form data which will be equal to use state of initial form data sorry initial state or let's make this one initial form data that's it now what we need to do we have to handle this form now how we are going to do that now this is very very simple so you can see that we are having this uh, we have actually mapped here so if I, if I now go to this input component you can see that this will receive this on change prop so here what we can do we can simply just take this on change prop now this will give us an event and now here what we can do we can simply do this one as set form data which will be the form data and then here we are having the control type dot id so this id will be equal to equal to value which is basically event dot target dot value so here we can do control item dot id will be equal to here con sorry this will be equal to event dot target dot value that's it and what will be value now value will be this name email password and role so it will be initial form data of control item dot id so that means we want to take the for first one it will be name for second one it will be email so because this is dynamic so we'll do this one as initial form data of this will be control item dot id i hope you are getting so this is basically name email so control item dot id is first it will be name so it will be initial form data dot name then it will be initial form data dot female uh, sorry not female initial form data not uh, dot name then initial form data dot email something like that and the same we can use here also we can copy this and we can pass it here now let's format this and let's log this form data all right so now let's check what exactly we are getting so i'll go here and sorry let's open the console and i'll type something here all right so here but it's not coming i think something is wrong let me just check so you're having set form data and then this is correct initial form data uh, this will be form data of not initial form data we have to take the state variable here this one so now it will work so i think this will be also form data now let's save this let's check so now if i type something here let's say sangam so you can see that it's getting updated email also is getting updated same for password and also role if i change this one to admin see it's getting changed so now this is working fine all right everyone so next what we can do we can also give some kind of validation from the front end end so until unless the user will fill all of these fields this button will be disabled so how we are going to do that so for this one uh, let's take a function and i'll do this one as is form valid now here what we can do we can take a uh, sorry we can return here directly that if form data and and form data dot name and then form data dot name dot trim if this is not equal to equal to empty if this is not empty that means the form is valid right so there is value same we can do like we can copy this and we can do and and for email and for password so this will be for email this will be for password so all of this if this is not empty that means this will be true or else this will be false and what we can do we can go here and in this button we can give this disable that if the form is not valid so that means if this is false all right and also you can give something like disabled and we'll make the opacity as 50 format this let's save this and let's check all right so now this is disabled and also i'll show you what exactly is happening here so let's log here is form valid and i'll invoke this so you can see that if i now go to console you can see it is false so that means these two are not filled and then now this is true 
you can see that so now if I remove here give something give value and this is working fine all right so now almost everything is done now what is the next step so next step we have to basically call the API so here what we'll do in this button we'll do a on click and we'll make this one as handle register uh, we'll do this handle register on submit I'll go here we'll do function handle register on submit now here uh, we can make this one obviously we have to make this or not we can we have to make this one as async and here what we can do we can do here directly const data this will be equal to avid now here you can see that we can call our services file that we have created so if I now go to our services you can see that we are going to register new user so this will be register new user and then we can pass this form data that we have created all right so now this will basically give us uh, it will go to the services file and based on that it will call that database and it will save the data and if I now log here this data and now let's see what is happening so let's format this let's save this now let's go back now I'll close this one let me refresh this page also so I'll give my name here Sangam I'll give some sangam at the rate gmail.com and I'll give a password of one two three four five six seven eight and I'll register with admin now let's see what is happening if I click here we should get something and let's see what we are getting line number 21 uh, I'm not sure whether the API is getting called or not all right I think API is getting called and you can see that we are getting uh, account created successfully but we oh all right so you can see that now we, are, we got actually success true and account is created successfully let's go to our mongodb database and refresh the collection so we got our user and this is our first user nice job so this we have created our first user so now what is the next step we have to do so next step there are quite a few things we have to do so the first thing is that we have to show some kind of uh, loader until unless uh, the user is getting registered and also we have to uh, show some kind of toast message that we have installed here that the user is getting successful and also we have to navigate back to that particular view once the user is getting uh, the successful is completed so for those things we will be doing in the next part and for this part I think we have actually completed the main main functionality of registering the user into our database so that's all for this particular video I'll see you in my next video till then good luck and peace hey everyone and welcome back so in the previous video we have completed all the functionality for the registration page now it's time to start working on the login page so the first thing what we have to do again we have to follow the same process that we have basically used while working on the registration page so first we have to work on the api route for this and then you have to create the services file and complete the backend functionality first and then we will be start working with the front end integration so let's do one thing let's go to our code and i'll close everything else here and then uh, let's go to our api and inside this i will create another folder and i'll give this one name as login now inside this let's create our route.js now let's start working on this one so the first will be this will be export async function and this will be again a post request and we'll be getting the request object here and also before that we have to basically export this dynamic property also so i'll copy and paste it here and now the first thing what we need to do as well as we have to connect to our database so this is the first step now next thing is that in this request object when we will be typing email and password so this email and password we will be receiving from this request object so this will be email comma password that we will be getting avid request dot json now here again we have to create the schema so this is our schema which will be joy dot object now here obviously 
uh, first you have to start with email which will be joy.string dot email and this will definitely a required property the same for password so password this will be joy dot string and this will be required all right sorry so this is our schema now first thing is that we have to validate the schema and if there are any errors obviously we'll be getting the error so we can see that this is basically the same process here so we'll do here const error and this will be equal to schema dot validate and we have to validate this email and password that we will be receiving now if there are any error so let's copy it from here only so if there are any error we'll just return this error message awesome now next what we need to do we have to basically check that user whatever email id he is typing whether that email is exist or not so for this one we'll take a try block and in the catch block we'll take error and for now we'll just log this one or let's copy it from here only so we'll copy from here let's copy this and here we can give error while logging in please try again and also this will be i think we have done some mistakes so this will be error error while new user registration and let's do this one please try again all right now here what we have to do first we have to check the user so we'll do check user and this will be avid and we are having this user model that we have created and here we can use this property and that is called find one all right and by which property we want to find we want to find based on this email whether that that email is exist or not all right now if this is false that means that user is not exist that means that account can't be find so we can return the following thing so we'll do one thing we'll copy this uh, response from here and then return instead of this message what we can do we can just simply do account not found with this email this is done if this is not the case then what we have to do we have to check whether the user whatever he is entered the password that password is same as the original uh, database password that is actually stored in the database so what we can do we can do here const check password and this will be avid and we can use this compare from bcrypt js and we can basically pass this password which is the entered password by the user in this page and then we can check with this check user dot password which is the original password as simple as that now here if this is false again the password is wrong so we can basically copy the same response from here and we can pass here that the password you have entered that is wrong something like that or let's make this one as incorrect password please try again that's it if this is also not the case that means the user is now authenticated means whatever data he have entered in the email and password that is correct so we have to start working on the uh, we have to basically first create the token and then based on that we have to return the response to our front end so what we can do we can create our token so this will be token which will be jwt dot i think we have to also import jwt so first let me import jwt from jwt web token now here what you have to do so here you will get this sign property that you can use and now here we have to pass some property so the first thing is that we have to pass the id which will be check user dot underscore id now this is basically this id will be created by mongodb for each and every individual uh, user which will be unique all right and also we can pass this email which will be checked uh, user dot email and also you can pass the role which is this check user dot role 
all right and the same we can use here so this is the first thing and then what else we have to pass we also have to create or basically pass a secret key now this is a jwt secret key that you can also create an environment file and from there also you will be able to ex uh, extract the same for now i'll just pass a like something like default secret key all right also you can pass another property and that is called expire scene means uh, this token will be expired for how many time for this one i'll make this one as one day so now this will create your token and now you have to basically create your data that means the final result so what we can do we can make this one as called uh, const final result now this will be this token that you have created then we will pass a user so this is our user where you have to pass the email which will be checked user dot email then we'll pass the name which will be check user dot name also we have to pass the id so this is our main id check user dot hyphen id and also we'll pass a role which is the check user dot role which will be either admin or that can be a customer all right so this is our final result or let's make this one as final data that's it so this is our final data so now what we'll return we'll just simply return this next response dot json now here what we have to do we definitely have to pass the success as true that means the user is authenticated and we'll pass a message which will be something like login successful that's it and at the end we will pass this final data that we have created now this is all about the api route that we need for our login route now you see what we have done i think i've already connected to the database we first extract the email and password then we check the schema if there are any error we'll return the error then we'll check whether the user is already exist or not if not then account can't be found then we check the password if the entered password and original password both are same or not and if all of this is correct we'll create the token and then based on that we'll return the data now this data we will be receiving in our uh, front end all right so once basically we'll hit on this login button we will receive this final data if the user is authenticated that means if he enters the correct email and the password all right now that's all about this api route now next again the same process we have to basically create the api service file so for this one we can create another uh, folder inside the services folder and let's give this one as login and this will be index.js now this will be export const now this will be very simple login and this will be a async method now again we will be receiving the form data that is the entered user and password here we can do try now const response this will be avid fetch now from where we have to fetch it we have to go to slash api slash login right so this will be slash api slash login here what else you have to pass we have to pass a method so method will be definitely post then you have to pass headers headers will pass the same thing which will be content let me just copy it from here only no need to write again so we'll copy the same thing from here so this is our headers and also have to pass the body body will be json dot stringify and this form data all right so now also have to pass a catch here so this will be error and we'll just log this error for now so this will be console dot log error now if the uh, this is uh, the api call is successful that means the service is called so we'll do const data which will be request sorry response dot json and at the end we'll return this data that's it so this is all about our services file for the login now these both are exactly same so that means we have completed the api route we have completed the services file in the next video what we have to do we have to handle this form and then we have to basically call this api from our front end and based on that if the user is authenticated we have to navigate this user to the uh, uh, to the home page and 
then we will be able to handle this all of this because now the functionality is completed so based on that we will be able to show these buttons whatever buttons you have to show either that is admin user will show this button or else not so that we will be doing in the next video all right everyone so in the previous video we have completed the back end for our login page so let's start working on the front end part so what we can do we can just open this page.js which is our login uh, page from the front end side so i'll close everything else now let's start working with first we will create our initial uh, form data so this will be initial form data and this one will make email as empty and password will make this one as empty now here we'll do const form data set form data which will be equal to use state of initial form data all right now here again we have to first we have to pass the value property and the on change property so the value property will be form data of control item dot id so this we have already done in the previous uh, register uh, video uh, when you have uh, handled this register page form the same we have to do here so this will be on change it will give us event and here what we can do we can do set form data which will be equal to form data and then here we can do control item dot id this will be event dot target dot value and this is done now let's save this and let's log this form data and let's see what is happening so this will be form data so we'll go here let's open our console So I'll type something here. You can see that we are getting email and this is our password. So this is fine. Now again, we have to also handle the valid form. If the user is not entering anything, they will not be able to click on this login button. So that also we have already done. So what we can do, we can create another function and make this one as is valid form. Now here, what we can do, we can return if form data and then form data dot email and end form data dot email dot trim if this not equal to equal to empty the same we have to do it for password also so we'll copy this one from here we'll do and end and this will be password and this will be password so if both are not equal to empty that means this is the valid form is true or else this will be false and then in the login button we can make disabled and this will be equal to not equal to is valid form also for disable we can take a opacity and make this one as 50 let's format this and let's see what is happening so you can see that this is now disabled we'll type something here and this is now enabled all right so now next what we have to do we have to start working on this calling this api so on click of that we have to call that api uh, route so we'll take on click and we'll make this one as handle login so we'll go here and let's create this so this will be async function handle login now here the first thing what you have to do you have to do const response will be await and here we have to call this login service that we have created in the previous video and here we have to pass this form data correct so this form data is basically the one that i'll be entering in the form all right so let's see what exactly we are getting in this response so we'll go here let's open our console and we can do one thing uh, let's go to first network tab and i think i have uh, registered with my email so the same we can use here so this was sangam at the red gmail.com one two three four five six seven eight let's click on login and let's see so this is pending all right this is now 200 so login is successful awesome so you can see that now we are getting final data we are getting the token and in the user we are getting my name role is admin this is the unique user id and also the email awesome so that means this is now working fine so here also we are getting success true message and the final data all right so now 
the uh, front end and back end uh, uh, connection is now completed for this login page now there are quite a few things you have to do the first thing is that we have to make this user as a auth user and also you have to store the token in the uh, cookie so for this one we install this js cookie package so let's do one thing let's go to our context and now here what i'll do i'll take another state here and this will be is auth user and set is auth user so this, this is the first step now this is very very important we have to create this one because first time this will be let's make this one as null also we will be take another step which will be our user information to store and this will be set user and this will be equal to let's make this s as small same for this one and for this one we'll make the this one as also null now these two we will be passing here in our context let's format this and also you have to pass the user and the set user now let's do one thing let's copy all of this we'll save this we'll go to our login page now here we will be extracting those from the context so this will be equal to use context of global context now why we need all of this the reason is that whenever user will be logged in we have to first store this user information and also you have to make this set is auth user as true because the user is authenticated or else this will be false so how we are going to do that so here what we can do we can simply check if this race dot success if this is true that means the user is authenticated else we'll make set is auth user as false now here the first thing will make this set each is auth user as true that means the user is authenticated then we'll make this set user as this race dot final data so this is the data that we are receiving so you can see that if i just go here so we are getting some warning for this uh, uh, we are getting some warning for this key for now let's forget this so let me just show you we'll go to our api login and route and you can see that we are having this final data dot user so this will be erase dot final data and this will be dot user so this is our user information also you have to make this set form data as initial form data so you have to uh, reset the form in for email and password now what we are going to do we will basically store these cookies so we'll import this one from js cookie and here what we'll do we'll set this token so user token so this token will be this race dot final data dot token all right also we have to do another thing in the local storage we have to set this user information which will be json dot stringify and this will be the same this raise dot final data dot user so so many things you have to do so that means this menu we have done now let's log here this is auth user and the user information and let's see what we are getting now let's save this we'll go back go to console and then i'll give my name here and this one two three four five six seven eight if i do here login all right so now is auth user is true and also you're getting the user information so what do you have to do now once this is auth user is true we have to navigate from slash login to slash that means to the home page so for this one what we can do we can simply do here use effect and we can do something like we will take this is auth user as a dependency and we'll do if this is auth user if this is true so we'll do router dot push and this will go to the slash so this will go to the home page if this is true we're navigating to the home page let's see if this is working or not see it's automatically now going to the home page but now you'll notice one very interesting thing so this data currently we are storing it's in the login page and also we have stored this one in context state variable but what will happen if i just refresh this page 
this is in the home page now this is very very important concept so you see that this is in the home page so i'll go to our home page what is the home page home page is basically this page.js here all right now here let me just do one thing we'll do use client and here i'll do const is auth user and this will be use context of global context so this is the one now let's log this here and let's see what is happening is auth user if i now save this you can see that this is coming true if i now refresh this and you can see that this is coming as null just uh, forget this warning for now we'll just fix it uh, later you can see that now this is null although the user is already authenticated that means whenever we refresh this page that state variable value will be resetted so for this one what we need to do we have to do very important thing and that is in the context whenever user will load this page we have to check that if the token is already registered in that cookies if the token is already available that means the user is authenticated so every time this is auth user will be true but how we are going to do that now that is pretty simple we can go to this global context now this is the advantage of using this context here i'll take a use effect and you will get to know now here what i'll do i'll take this cookies as a dependency and now let's do one thing let's do console.log and here i'll do cookies sorry this will be cookies what i'm doing let me just so this will be console.log cookies dot get and this is the token so this token we have uh, saved here you remember here if i now save this and let's see what is happening we are getting the token that means the user is authenticated but you see the state variable is null so what we can check see we can obviously directly we will be able to check like this if this token is true so that means the user is authenticated or else we can simply do like this if this cookies dot get token if this is not equal to equal to undefined so that means the user is authenticated so we'll make this set is auth user as true and also we will do const user data and this user data will be json dot parts because we've already saved the user data in our local storage this will be local storage dot get item and here we'll get the user or else this will be uh, we'll make this one as uh, let's do something like this this will be user or else this will be empty object all right and then what we'll do we'll do set user as this user data all right else will make this set is auth user as false now if i save this and let's see so you can see that because the token is already exist here so that means the set is auth user is true that means currently the user is authenticated awesome so now we have mm, done the most of the things so the first thing what you have to do in the nav bar we have to basically handle these buttons all right so currently we are in the nav bar page and you can see that previously all of this uh, we have kept as a static variables but now we have stored all of this in a context variables will uh, will basically extract those values from our context so let's do one thing first we'll come here and we'll do const and we'll take user is auth user from so this will be use context of global context so now here we are having this is auth user so i'm going to remove it from here and also remove this user from here so i let me just check where we are using this user so we're using this user dot role all right if i now remove this and let's save this and let's see what is happening so let's refresh this page you can see that we are getting account cart admin view and the logout the reason we are getting all of this because this user is currently authenticated if i now go here and then log this user and is auth user so this is in the nav bar component we will be able to see this one let's log uh, go to console 
So you can see that in the navbar we are getting is auth user true and in the object we are getting the information. So that is the reason we are getting all of this button. And the reason we are getting this admin view because the current user is an admin user. So that is the reason we are getting. Let's quickly do this logout functionality so it will be easy to understand. Now for this logout what we can do, uh, let's go to our logout button. So let's search for logout. So here we are having this logout. So here I'll do on click. So this will be handle logout now this will be pretty simple so what you can do you can simply take a function we'll make this one as handle logout now what else we have to do the first thing is that you have to make this set is auth user as false so this one will be taking from context we also have to take set user so for set user we will make this one as null we'll also do cookies dot remove so we'll remove the token the user token that we have saved we also do local storage dot clear we'll clear everything and what else you have to do you have to do router dot push so whenever will the user will be some other page you have to basically redirect back to the home page and this router we will be getting so this will be router which will be use router from next slash navigation let's save all of this let's see so first i'll refresh this page i'll click on login see so it's going to the login page if i refresh this page again you can see that you will be able to see this login button only you will not be able to see all of this if i now click on this login i think we haven't given the router so let me just give here so i think we are having login here so in this button we'll do on click and we'll make this one as router dot push so it will go to the slash login page so now let's see so i'll click here it's going to the login page i log in sangam at the rate gmail.com one two three four five six seven eight i'll click on login let's see awesome so it's going to the home page now and you can see that we are getting account cart admin view and the logout if i refresh this page again you will be see this view only if i click on logout it's going to the logout page and now you you will not be able to see those buttons because the currently user is uh, not authenticated so that's all for this particular video now in the next video what you have to do once the user will log in we have to show some kind of loader just like we have done in the registration page so that we will be doing and after that we will be start working on the admin view functionality also another thing let's check so i'll go to the register and let me just give some random name like what we can give we'll give tom and then we'll give this one as tom at the rate gmail.com and we'll reg basically i'm registering so i'll give one two three four five six seven eight and i'll keep this one as customer let's do register so registration is successful i'll go to login and i'll give this one as tom at the rate gmail.com i'll give this one, one two three four five six seven eight if i now log in it should be successful but you see you are not able to see the admin view because the currently the user is a customer user is not admin user so this is working fine if i log out let's go to login again if i log in with my account four five six seven eight click on login now you're able to see the admin view so this is working fine awesome so in the next video we'll just finish some of the things in the login page and after that we will be start working on the admin view so let's do those in the next videos hey everyone so in the previous video we have completed most of the functionality for the login page and also have completed the logout functionality in this video we'll just do some kind of improvement so whenever user will be logged in we'll show some kind of loader and also have to show the uh, toast message so for this one uh, we are going to create another state in the context now this uh, state that we are going to create this is very important i i'm telling you everyone to just note it down you see we are having a common loader now this common loader is basically a page level loader now there will be another kind of loader that is we called a component level loader so that is also required the reason is that uh, if i now show you you can see that in this uh, all products let me just load this page whenever we will be clicking on this particular button and if we are uh, showing some kind of loader here now you can see that these all have a different kind of id so that means we have to basically check which product we have clicked in and 
in that particular product only we have to show that loader if we just do this one generally so the loader will show for all the products i hope you are getting so that is the reason because this is a component level loader we have to also store the id and also you have to uh take the loading state so i'll show you how we are going to do this one so the reason why i'm taking this one for login page also because i believe is that because we will be showing the loader in this button so this is not a component level loader so that is the reason we'll create a component level loader and the same will be showing here so let's see how we are going to do that so this common loader is basically a page level loader let's do one thing i believe is that let's copy this one and instead of common loader i'll make this one as page level loader all right so let's make this one as page level loader and for this one we'll make this one as set page level loader that's it all right now here i'll take another state and this will be component level loader set component level loader and this will be use state of here we have to take loading state which will be false and also you have to take additional property which will be id now for some cases this id is not required but most of the cases this is required and you'll get to know when we'll be working on other pages so i'll for now i'll just copy this now obviously you can do this one in your own way there are multiple ways you can do this one but i believe that this is one of the uh good way that you can do because we don't have to write this state in each and every page so let's paste it here and then we'll just copy both we'll go to our login page and first we'll just take it from our context all right so now when we will be logged in the first thing is that we have to make this one as true so we'll do set component level loader so here we have to make the loading as true and for this one we don't need any id so we'll make this one as empty so we'll copy the same here and for this one we'll make this one as once the logged in is successful we we'll make this one as false and same we can do here also false all right now here what we have to do so here we can check if this component level loader and then component component level loader dot loading if this is true so what we can do i think we have created a uh, common let me just check what is the loader and then we are having this component level loader so this we can do so this will be component level loader or else this will be login and here we have to pass some properties so the same i think we can take it from the registration page because the same i think we have used here also so here we have to pass this text color and the loading so we'll copy all three and we'll paste it here so instead of registering this will be uh, logging in and this will be component level loader and then component level loader dot loading that's it also we have to basically show the notifications so we'll import the notification component that we have created so this is our notification component and from here we can basically copy this toast message that we have to show so we'll copy this one and we'll go here and we'll show this message here so i'll just import it from react toastify and instead of data this will be race dot message and if something goes wrong so you have to show error and then we'll show the same message and now let's test everything if everything is working or not so we'll refresh this page now here we'll give some name here so i'll give some them at the rate in gmail.com one two three four five six seven eight now let's click on login so we're getting and you can see that we are immediately going to the uh, home page that's why you're not able to see the toast but this is fine because if i now log out and then log in again let's give my email here gmail.com and i'll give here one two three four something else and if i now log in let's see what is happening so you can see that incorrect password please try again now here either we can basically reset this form but for now i think this is fine now even if i give correct uh, password one two three four five six seven eight but if i give something different in the gmail let's log in and let's see 
so i cannot found with this email so this is working fine so i think we can keep it like this only so now let's give a correct one so this will be gmail.com and if i log in it should go to the home page and it is going and this is working fine even one very important point now you see that if the user is currently authenticated right so if i try to go to the login page so it should navigate back to the home page because if you are authenticated you will not be able to log in so let's see if that is working or not if i now go to the login page let's see see immediately it's going to the home page the reason is because this is working here you can see that we are checking if this is auth user is true so it will go to the home page the same we can do in the registration page also so let's copy this because currently if i now go to the registration page you see that it will be here only and this is completely wrong so what we can do we can go to a registration page and the same we can basically use here so let me import it and this is auth user we have to take it from the context if i now save this let's see see now it's going to the home page so we'll not be able to um, check uh, basically access this uh, page if you are currently logged in but if i now log out and then try to go to the registration page it should work and this is fine awesome job so now i think we have completed one of the most important module in this particular project and that is the registration and the login functionality now from the next video the first thing what you have to do let's go to the login page and let's log in so one two three four five six seven eight we log in here so we have to start working on this admin view and this is very very important so the first thing will be working on creating new products and store those products in firebase and also in mongodb now many of you actually uh, think that why we have used both firebase and mongodb the reason is there is no particular reason we can obviously use either of that I have used both so that you guys will get both the ideas like how you can use both Firebase and MongoDB at the same time and also how you can use either Firebase or either MongoDB so it will give you ideas of both the things so that is the reason I have used both so what we'll be doing whenever a user will be selecting any image we will basically use Firebase to store that image so we'll get some idea on Firebase and then once we'll get the URL back that URL will be storing in the MongoDB database so those things we are going to do in the next couple of videos all right everyone so it's time to start working on the admin view so the first thing what you have to do you have to create the uh, pages and on click of that you have to navigate to the admin view and this is the most important part the first thing we have to do so we'll go to our code and inside app what we'll do we'll create a folder and we'll give a name as admin view now here i'll first create a page dot js now here we'll create two folders so one will be all products and another one will be add product so let's quickly create all of these uh, pages so i'll close everything else so this will be export uh, default function admin view and for now let's do one thing let's return here div and this will be admin view let's copy this and we'll go to our add product we'll create our page dot js and we can paste it here and this will be admin add new product so this will be admin view add new product let's copy this we'll go to our all products create our page dot js and this will be admin all products that's it so now let's save this and let's see what is happening so first thing is that we'll go to our nav bar component so we'll go here now you can see that we are having a button and that is called admin view so on click of that we'll go to on click and what we want to do we want to do router dot push and let's we want to go to the admin view now here you can see that we are having this admin view flag that we have taken here i think which is false what will happen whenever we we'll click on this button we'll go to the admin view and the path name on this url will change so something like localhost 3000 or the base url slash admin view so we can check whenever it will go to the slash admin view that means currently the path name is in the admin view so each admin view will be true 
what else this will be false i hope you are getting so how we are going to do that so for this one we can import something like so let me just show you so we'll do here const path name and this will be use path name all right and now here let me just log this path name so you'll be able to understand let's save this and if i now open console so you are getting slash you can see that so if i now go to slash admin view let's see what is happening so it, you can see that we are getting admin view here forget about all of this we are getting slash admin view here so what we can do basically we can check simply const is admin view and you can check if this path name dot includes admin view so that means that time this will be true and we can remove this one from here also you have to pass this admin view as a prop in this component so we'll do here and let's go to our nav items and we'll pass this is admin view as this admin view and the same we can pass here all right so now what we can do in this button we have already clicked that it will go to the slash admin view but when you'll go to the client view so what you have to do we'll copy this and then instead of the slash admin view, we have to go to slash now let's save this see we are already getting client view here first we'll go to here so i think we haven't given anything here so the first thing is that we have to give here also so what we can do we can give a on click and we can give this router dot push and this will go to slash so let's go here so it's going to the home page i'll click on this admin view notice so it's going to the client now it's showing client view and we are not able to see those because we are currently in the admin view if i refresh this page still this will work if i go to the client view it's going back to the client view all right so this is working fine forget about this this we are going to do so that means switching between admin view and the client view is completed so what we have to do next once we'll go to the admin view you can see that this is the home page and here we are having two so first we'll start working in this add new product so let's go to our uh, utils and then here we are having admin view slash all product i think the same name we have given here let me just check so you're having all products and this will be add product so now let's save this now if i click here so let's see what is happening i think we are getting some error so let me first refresh this page once so we'll click on this product and let's see what we are getting we're not able to see the text here so it's still getting admin view all right so i think the same we have to give in the nav but so let me just check what we have given so we are having admin view option all right we haven't given any on click only so that is the reason so we'll give on click and here we'll do this on router dot push and this will go to the item dot path and the same we can do here also and this router we can pass as a prop so this router this router is basically this use router that we have used so we'll go to go here and pass this router as prop and the same we can pass for mobile one also if i now save this let's see so now if i click on this manage all products so you can see that now we are getting all products if i click here add new product so now we are getting add new product and also i think there are 78 so this is getting changed so that is the reason all right so what we can do right we'll go to our main component so the main component is this layout and instead of this one we'll make this one as 8tpx now let's see all right so now this is fine so we'll click here we'll getting admin view all products click here add new product go to client view and this is getting changed so now i think this is fine so now in next video the first thing what we are going to do will start working on this add new product this page so let's do this one in the next video
hey everyone and welcome back so in the previous video we have completed switching from admin view sorry from client view to admin view and also the vice versa so now in this video first thing we will be start working on this add new product page now you can see that uh, there are few things that i just want to mention here we are having one two three four five six seven seven input now these inputs actually the common component that we have created you remember while working uh, with this registration and the login page now here the first thing is that what i'm going to do in this utils file we are having this form controls right where we are having id type placeholder label component type i just quickly create for all of this the reason why i'm not creating in the video because it will just obviously waste uh, our time so i'll quickly create all the form controls uh, for example these seven form controls and then i'll just come back and then we'll be start working on creating the ui for this particular page all right everyone so as you can see that i created this uh, array of objects admin add product form controls we are having id type placeholder so these all for name price description category which will be a basically a select then delivery info on sale and then we are having the price drop all right so now let's close everything else for now and we'll go to our add product component and then we will be start working on the ui first all right so the first thing is that why what we are going to do i'll just remove this one from here and then for this main div i'll take a class name of w full and we'll make margin top of five mr of zero mb of zero ml of zero will do relative then here we'll take another div and for this one we'll take a class name we'll make flex flex column items start we'll make this one we'll do justify start pt of 10 we'll make p of 10 here then we'll do bg as white we'll do shadow to excel we'll do rounded excel we'll do relative that's it now next we will take another div here for this one we'll take a class of w full to m mt of six margin top mr of zero mb of zero ml of zero and we'll make the space y eight Now here the first thing is that you have to take the input to select the image so we'll take input for this one we'll make accept so this will only accept image slash star then here we'll give a max so we'll make this one as one two three four five six we'll do this on type as file that's it and also you have to take a on change so for this one we'll make this one as handle image that's it and uh, we'll do this one as use client and here we will create this function handle image for now so this is all about the input now next if i now go back you can see that we are having this available sizes so for this one we'll take a div we'll take a class name sorry we'll do a class name We'll make this one as flex gap of two and we'll do this on flex column here we'll take a simple label and we'll make this one as available sizes that's it now here we will create a tile component now just like we have created input uh, component select component so we'll go to our form elements and we'll create a tile component here so this will be tile component and we'll create this one as index.js all right so here we'll do export default function this will be tile component now this will receive some props so the first thing it will receive data prop it will also receive the selected prop which how many we have selected and also it will receive uh, receive a on click prop all right now here we'll do return data and and data dot length if this is true so what we have orders uh, basically we will render here null so what we can do here we'll take a div we'll do a class name here 
we'll do empty of three we'll do flex we'll do flex wrap items center and we'll do gap of one here we'll do data dot map so this will be data item now here we will take a level the first thing is that we'll uh, pass a key which will be data item dot id that will be passing and also we have to show some class name here uh, render some class name so the for the first thing is that we'll do a cursor as pointer and for now i think this is fine later when we will be selecting let me just show you so you can see that we are getting changing this one so that we will be doing in a minute and here inside of this what we can do we can simply take a span or i think we can directly uh, or let's take a span only so here we'll do data item dot label now for this span we'll take the class name so we'll make this one as rounded large we'll do this one as border we'll do border black we'll do px of six py of two we'll do font as bold that's it so for now i think this is fine let's save this now i'll go to this component and also we'll go to our uh, utils first so here we'll create another util config so this will be export const available sizes so here we'll do id of s level of s we'll copy this and we'll paste it two times so this will be size of m and this will be size of l that's it so now what we have to do we'll go to this component and then we have to basically call this style component that we have just created and then we have to pass the data so here what we can do we can simply take this style component and here we have to pass the data so data will be available sizes that's it and for now we will pass uh, will not pass any selected or on click let's save this and let's see what we are getting first so we'll go to add new product so we are getting available sizes and this is uh, the file uh, that we have basically created awesome so now next thing what we need to do we have to basically render all the form controls and these things we have already done before also so what we can do we can basically uh, import this admin add product form controls that we have created here so this is the one now here i will do dot map so this will be uh, what you can do you can give control item and the first thing is that obviously you have to check if the control item dot component type if this is equal to equal to input so we'll do something or else if control item dot component type if this is equal to equal to select we'll do something or else this will be null so if this is input i think we have already done we have to import input component if this is a select component we have to do select component sorry i think i have done in the wrong place i have to do it here all right now we have to pass all the props so the first thing is that we have to pass the type which will be control item dot type then you have to pass the placeholder which will be control item dot placeholder then you have to pass the label which will be control item dot label we have to pass the value and the on change but for now these three are fine now here again we have to pass the label which will be control item dot label and also we have to pass the options so for select we have to pass the options which will be control item dot options now let's format all of this let's save this and let's see what we are getting and you can see that we are getting all the form controls here awesome so now this is fine so we've created our main ui now we have to basically render the button so for this one we'll go here we will take the button here and we'll do this one as add product now here we have to take some class name so we'll do class name we'll make this one as inline flex 
we'll do w full we'll do item center justify center bg black px of 6 py of 4 i think this thing i have already done in previously also if you want you can copy from there also text as white and i think for now this is fine let's make the font as medium we'll do uppercase and we'll do tracking white let's save this and let's see all right so now this is fine so i think the main structure is now completed and by default you can see that category is main and on sale is yes so now in the next video what we have to do the first thing is that we will not start working on the front end first we will be doing the same process again so we will be start working on the back end so we will create the model for this one then we will be creating the api route for this one then we have to create the services and after that we have to start working on the firebase first because first we have to store the image to that only we will be start working on this particular form so let's do those in the next videos hey everyone and welcome back so now in this video we will be start working on the back end for this add product section so let's go to our code and the first thing we'll start with these models now inside this i'll create another file and i'll give this one as product.js so this will be basically our product schema and i'll close everything else so here let's import mongoose from mongoose and then this will be const product schema and this will be equal to new mongoose dot schema and here what we will do we will pass all the properties that are basically required so the first will start with name which will be a string then we are having description which will also will be a string then we are having price which will be a number then we are having category which will be a string then we are having sizes which will be a array then we are having delivery info which will be of string we are having also sorry we are having on sale this will be a string so this will be either yes or no then we are having price drop so what is the sale is going on how much is the price drop for that particular product so this will be number and at the end there will be image url which will be a string and for this one we will make the timestamps as true so this is all about the product schema that we need now here what we can do we'll do const product this will be mongoose dot models dot products or mongoose dot model and here we'll pass products and then the product schema that we have created that's it and at the end we have to do export default product and also we'll make this one as caps so this is all about the schema we need for this page all right so this is the first step now next step if you remember what you have to do you have to go to app then you have to go to api and you have to create our api routes now for this one what we can do we can simply uh, create another folder let's make this one as admin only we'll make this one as admin and here we'll create another folder and let's make this one as add product and inside this i'll create route.js all right so now the first thing is that we'll go to here and this is the first step uh, not this one we'll go here and copy this dynamic property and we'll paste it here now here we'll do export async function sorry this will be function and this will be a post here i'll get the request now here the first thing is that what we need to do we have to do try and we'll first do await connect to db so this is the first step if there are any error so we'll just log this error for now 
and we'll use the same uh, message that we've used that something went wrong please try again and also you have to import next response let me format this so this is fine now what else you have to do we have to do const and this will be add new product schema this will be joy dot object and here we basically have to pass all the properties that we need so let me just do one thing let me copy from here instead of rewriting again and we'll paste it here i'll start with name so name will be joy dot string and this will be dot required now obviously we need all of this as a required property so we'll use the same here so we'll copy this for description we will use the same so this will be also a string now see i'm not rewriting the same thing again and again because it will obviously uh, increase this length for this one we'll make this one as number for category it will be string only sizes this will be array delivery info this will be string on sale this will be string price drop this will be number and image url this will be also string so this is our new product schema all right now next thing what we need to do here one very very important point now this is extremely important whenever we will be adding a particular product here we have to check two things the first thing whether the user is authenticated or not because if you are not authenticated you will not be able to add second if the user is an admin user or not for this one what we are going to do we will basically create a middleware so this middleware basically hold the information of whether the user is an auth user or not and from that middleware we will be able to extract whether the user is an admin user or not but that one we will be doing in the next videos for now what i'll do i'll just hard code it the value so i'll just take const user and i'll make this one as admin for now but this one we will not be using like this we'll be getting this information from our middleware all right now here what we need to do we have to check if this user is equal to equal to admin then only they will be able to add this one all right if the user is not admin it will basically show that you are not authorized to add the product so here what we can do we can simply do else and then you can copy the same thing and you can basically show here you are not authorized simple all right if this is a user then what we need to do so basically you have to take all of this from our data so now here what we can do we can simply do const extract data this will be equal to await request dot json now here from this what we need we need name we need description we need price we need image url we need category we need sizes we need delivery info we need on sale and also you need price drop so many things now this all we need from where from data all right so that means whatever user will be entering here now first thing we have to basically validate if these all the data are valid or not using this joy schema so this thing i think we have already done previously so this will be error which will be equal to add product schema dot validate and here we'll pass all of this We'll copy this here and we'll pass so if the error is exist so that means that there are some failure in the schema so what we can do we can simply use the same message here so we'll copy this and we'll paste it here so success will be false and we will be basically getting that what kind of error we are getting here if this is not that means everything is fine so what you have to do you have to basically create the product so we'll do const newly created product which will be await and now remember the product schema that we have created here so this will be product so this will be from models you can see that and it will basically give us this create method that we can use now this will basically create the product but how it will create it will basically take a document and this document is basically this data document that we got so this is the extract data and also you have to do this one for extract data and this will be extract data 
so this will basically create or save the data in our database all right so if this newly created product is true so that means the success is true and the product will be added successfully so this will be true and this one will make this one as uh, product added successfully or else what we can do we can something so like uh, let's copy this we'll show success as false and then we'll show here uh, failed to add the product please try again and the success will be false wow so many code all right so i think this is all about the product schema that we need all right so now next step we have completed the second step so next step we have to create the services file so we'll go to our services and now here what we can do we can simply create another folder here all right uh, or let's do one thing let's create one folder only i'll make this one as product and we'll keep everything inside this so this will be index.js now here what we need to do we have to create our first uh, service which will be add a new product service so here we'll do export const add new product which will be async it will receive from data now this will be try catch this will be error and we'll just show something like console.log error now here what we need to do we'll do const same thing again and again response which will be equal to avid fetch where we have to do we have to go to slash api slash so inside api we are having admin so this will be slash admin then slash add product all right now here we'll pass method which will be post we will also pass headers so here we have to pass content type as application slash json and also we'll pass a authorization all right so this authorization will be basically the token that we have saved so here what we'll pass we'll pass a beer token uh, let me check the spelling beer here okay fine and then here what we'll do we'll do cookies i think we already saved this one we know dot get and here we'll pass the token that we have saved so this is our authorization all right now here we also have to pass the body which will be json dot stringify the form data that will be receiving from the front end so this will basically call the service now here what will do const final result which will be let's make this one as data only and this will be we'll do await response dot json if you want i think it's better to use await only and then we'll return data here i think for other services we haven't used await here maybe i made some mistakes so let me just add for all of this so we'll go to our services login i think here we'll add this await and register also will add this await here uh, all right so i think this is fine so this is all about the add new product service we need so we have completed the schema we have completed the api route we have completed the services next step what you have to do you have to start working on this handling this form and you have to save this image into firebase and after that only we will be able to integrate front end with back end for this and we'll be able to save the data in the in the back uh, in in our database so let's do those in the next videos hey everyone and welcome back so in the previous video we have basically created the basic structure so in this video we are going to start working on this handle image functionality so this image we are going to save in the firebase storage and the link that we will be receiving the that particular link uh, we are going to store in the mongodb database so for this one uh, so you can see that i'm in this uh, firebase console and i'll be creating a new project so uh, you can also do the same because we have to initialize the app so for this one you have you need firebase configuration the same you need to use so let's give some name like next js 
e-commerce 2023 we'll click on continue we'll keep this one enable and now we have to select a account i'm uh, selecting my default account and let's create project now let's discuss so the uh, the main reason why i have used firebase and mongodb both i think uh, i already discussed the same topic previously so that you will get both the knowledges that how you can use firebase and also the mongodb so based on your project requirement you can use either of those so it's still so let's wait wait for some time all right so this is done now let's click on this continue all right the first thing is that we have to add a web app so we'll go to this settings icon and let's go to project settings and here you have to create a web app now here we will give some name so let's give this one as next uh, next js e-commerce uh, we'll not do any hosting for now we'll do register app now once you register this app this will basically give you the configuration now this might take some time all right so i think this is done so this firebase configuration you need to use so i'll just copy this and we'll go to our utils uh, folder that we have created so this is our utils folder and here we'll do export and then we'll paste it so let's save this and also uh, let's copy this one this app initialization so we'll go here and in this file we will do this one and this firebase config will import from utils and also initialize app we have to i think we have to import this one from firebase so we'll do import something from firebase firebase we've already installed slash app now here you need to do initialize app all right so this is done now let's save this so we'll now go to our console and let's go to build and here you have to go to con uh, storage now you'll get a link here so let's get started start in test mode and next done let's done now this will create the bucket for you from from this particular bucket you'll get a url and based on that url you have to create the storage and directly also you'll be able to upload any images from this service and also you'll be able to save it so let's give it some time and i think this is this will take some time sometime and sometime it will be first all right so you can see that this is done so you see from here also you'll be able to upload the file so this link you need so i'll copy this and let's go here and we'll export this one so this will be export const we'll give this one as a firebase storage url and this will be this one all right so this is next step now here what we need to do have to create the storage so i'll create a storage here and this will be get storage so this one also you need to import from firebase slash storage so i'll do import from firebase slash storage and this will be get storage so this get storage we need and here you have to pass this app and then you have to pass the url that just now we have done so this will be firebase storage url all right so this is done so now what we need to do the first thing is that here let's make this one as a async method and here in this handle image method we will receive a event property and let's log here event dot target dot files and let's see what we are getting so i'll save this we'll go here let's open our console i'll choose some file here let's select this one you can see that we are getting a file list and this first uh, data we have to extract so this will be what we can do we'll do this one as const extract image url and this will be await and we'll create a helper method so helper for uploading image to firebase and this one will do event dot target dot files of zero and also we'll be doing a log here all right now let's create this uh, function here so we'll do this on async function helper 
for uploading images uh, to Firebase and this will receive the file. All right. Now here, what we have to do, the first thing is that we'll create a unique uh, file name. So we'll do const create unique file name. Now this will receive a get file property. Now here, what I'm going to do, so first let's do this one. So this will be const get file name and this will be this create unique file name and then we'll pass this file as argument. Now here what we'll do, the first thing is that we'll take a, uh, we'll take a timestamp here and we'll make this one as current date. So this will be date dot now, sorry, date dot now. All right, here I'll create a random string uh, value and this will be math dot random and here what we can do we'll do to this one to a string make this one to 36 and then we'll take a sub string of 2 to 12 all right and then what we'll do we'll just to return we'll do template literals and here we'll do get file dot name now this name is basically if i just show here you can see that from this file you'll be getting the name of that particular file and here we'll just append this timestamp and also we'll append this random string value and that's it so this will create our unique file name so this is first step now next what we need to do we also have to so let me just give enter here so we'll do const whenever we will be storing something we have to create a storage reference so we'll do this one as storage reference and for this one we have to take a ref which will be importing from firebase slash storage and this reference is basically from where you want to store that file so we'll do storage here so here we have to pass the reference from where we want to basically uh, store that image so we'll take a e-commerce folder here and we'll pass this uh, gate file name so this will create the storage reference and then we'll do the upload so this will be upload task and we'll make this one as upload image and this will be upload bytes resumable so this will also have to import from firebase slash storage and here you have to pass this storage reference that you have created and which file you want to store so this will be the file that we are receiving all right so till this part this is done so now what we are going to do we'll just simply return a new promise here and this will give us a resolve and reject property and now here this upload image will eject on method and here you have to pass four things the first thing is that event and then you have to pass the next or observer then you have to pass if there are any kind of error and also you have to pass a complete callback now you can obviously differently create all of this and then separately you can pass or directly in an object you can see that something like that so we'll create all of this so next is a function then we are having error then we are having complete and then on upload task which is basically in our case upload image dot on then you'll pass all the things here one by one but for now we'll just do simply like this and here what we have to do the first thing is that we have to pass the state so that we'll pass a state changed now next thing is that we have to pass a next observer which is will take a simple function next what we need to do is to take a error so this will be our error function and at the end we have to take a callback function on complete now here we'll do error and if there are any error we'll do simply console.log we'll log this error and we'll just reject this error all right and on complete what we have to do here we'll do get download url this is from firebase slash storage and here we have to do upload image dot snapshot dot you can see that we are getting this ref now this will give us a uh, promise so here also what we can do we'll get the download url now here we can simply just resolve this download url all right and if there are any error so we'll just do catch error and here we'll simply uh, reject the error that's it and this is done now let's format all of this and let's save this and let's see what we are getting in this extract image url just refresh this page 
I'll go here and I'll select this one here and let's see what is happening. So now this should basically return. You can see that we are getting a URL back. Awesome job. So if I now go to network, you can see that it is first storing this one and at the end it is returning this uh, stored image URL. So this is now success. If I now go here, let's refresh this. So you can see that you will be able to see this e-commerce and then inside that. Now the reason is I already told you. So here we have created the storage reference. So this is basically the folder name and where inside this folder we want to store the images. And if I now go to inside this, you will be able to see one image. And this is the image that we just uh, stored here. So you can see that this image we are getting here. So that means the main functionality is completed. If I do another let's uh, let's first refresh this page and we'll do another so we'll take this one i will do which one this one we'll do and let's see so once both of these completed and then we'll be getting one uh, url back so you can see that we are already getting the url back if i now refresh here we should be able to see two images instead of one all right so you can see that this is working fine although these all images are not relevant to our e-commerce project so for now i'm going to remove all of this this is not required i will be i already have all the images in my local and from there only i'll be able to uh, i will be saving those so for now i'll just remove all of this all right this is just to confirm that this is working fine so this is done so now what we can do simply we can go here and i can see that another thing we have already taken this one as a client component because we have to work on the interactivity so what we'll do first we'll create our uh, form data here now the form data is basically all the form data that we are going to store on adding a new product so what we can do we can simply take here const and we'll take this one as um, form data set form data which will be equal to use state of initial form data this initial form data will take here so this will be initial form data now here we need name which will be empty we need price we'll give this one as zero for now we'll give a description which will be empty then we are having a category so category will be by default main then we are having sizes which will be array then we are having delivery info which will be empty we also need on sale which will be either yes or no so we'll keep this one as no for now we'll need image url which will be a string just now we have done and also you have to do price drop how much is the price drop for that particular product this will be zero so this is our initial form data so now what we can do we can simply check here if this extract image url the one we are receiving from the firebase if this is not equal to equal to empty that means we are receiving that and then what we can do we can simply make this one as set form data which will be equal to basically form data and then we'll do image url which will be equal to this extract image url that's it we also give some kind of loader but for now this is fine just to check let's see what is happening in this form data so i'll save this and let's go back so i refresh this and then uh, let me just go here and then for now i'll just select the same only and let's see what we are getting so you can see that we are getting the form here and here in the image url you are getting this particular url here so let me just copy this and i'll paste it here sorry we'll co we have to copy the value and we'll paste it here and you'll be able to see you'll be able to get that url so i'll give enter and you can see that we are getting the image here so this is fine so now let's start working on this form handling and this will be pretty simple so what we can do we can simply go here and in this input we will take a uh, value property first so value property will be form data of control item dot id this we have already done and on change we'll take a event property and here what we can do simply set form data which equal to form data and then we will basically make this 
uh, we'll do control item dot id which equal to will be this event dot target dot value that's it and also let's copy the same and for select component also you can use the same here so now let's format all of this let's go back and let's see what we are getting so we'll type something here you can see that name is updated price is 56 description this i'll change to woman getting changed on sale this is yes let's see if this is working so on sale is yes so this is done all right so now we have to basically handle this uh, available sizes now let's do this one so what we can do uh, so let's first go to the tile component so here you can see that we are having on click so this method we can take so we'll pass this on click sorry we'll take this on click and this will be handle tile click all right now here so first we will create this uh, method here so let me just create let's create here so this will function handle tile click this will get the current item and from where we will get this one so we'll have to go to this component you have to take on click here and then we will pass this on click which is the props and then we'll pass the current data item as argument that's it let's save this and let's log this get current item sorry sorry this will be get current item and let's see what we're getting so if i now click here so we're getting item s level s and this is working fine so now this is pretty simple what we can do first we will copy all the sizes uh, the existing sizes i'm talking about so this will be from form data dot sizes that means what we are doing is just taking from the state variable from here we are not directly mutating the state and then what we are doing we'll do here const index which will be copy sizes dot find index so we'll check if that ID, uh, item is already clicked or not and for this one what we can do we can do this one as item dot id if this is equal to equal to get current item dot id and here we can check if this index is equal to equal to minus one that means that item is not clicked so we'll just push this so we'll do copy sizes dot push and we'll push the current item which is the get current item all right else what you have to do we have to just do copy sizes which is equal to copy sizes dot filter and we'll take item and we'll do item dot id is not equal to equal to sorry what i've done so this will be item dot id not equal to equal to get current item dot id this is done and at the end what we'll do we'll do set form data which is equal to form data and then here we'll pass this on sizes will be the copy sizes and this is done so now let's format this let's remove all of this let's save and let's see so currently array of zero if i let's say click here so we're getting array of one so you can see that we are getting ids level s but if i click this one again now you can see that this is getting removed so this is working fine so what we can do simply remember we have to pass some selected properties so here what we can do we can pass this selected as this form data dot sizes so this many are selected and you can go here and then we have to give certain condition so what condition you have to give in this label we can basically check if this item is already selected or not so what we can do we can take this one as template literals and then here what we can do we can basically check if selected and and selected dot length if this is true and and selected dot map so we'll do item first we'll take the id so item dot id and this will be dot index of this data item dot id if this is not equal to equal to minus one that means that id item is already present not equal to minus one already present so we'll do bg as black or else this will be empty all right and the same we can use here also we'll copy this one 
uh, let's do one thing let's copy this part from here because the same logic we need here and I'll just paste it here for now and instead of this class name I'll just cut it from here we'll remove this class name from here and we'll paste it here and instead of bg black for text we have to do this one as text white that's it let's format this save and let's see if i click here so you can see that this is coming fine for now we are getting some padding this is fine if i click here again you can see that this is getting removed so this is working fine right so that means we have handled our form what will be our next step so in the next step we already created our backend we have to integrate this one with the backend and then we have to store the data in our mongodb database so let's do that one in the next video hey everyone welcome back so in this video we will be integrating this add product front end with our backend so i believe we have already created our api so let me just go to admin and then this is the api that we have created and also for this one we have this services file which is i think this one so product is the services file let me close everything else all right so now here what i'm going to do in this add product we first will take on click method and this will be handle add uh, handle add product i think this is fine now here let's go and the first thing is that this will be async function sorry handle add product now here what we need to do first we'll do const race which will be await and we are already having the services name which is add new product so this will be add new product now here what you have to pass you have to pass the form data that we have created that's it and let's log here race let's save this and let's see what we are getting all right so let's start with uh, choosing the file so first i'll go here i already uh, saved this picture so i'll select the first one all right so now let's give some name let's also select all the sizes so i'll select all three i'll give some name like main t-shirt then give a price of 100 uh, let's give some description we'll copy from the old one that we are currently having we'll go to all products uh, let's copy from here only so we'll copy all of this from here and then we'll paste it here category will be main delivery info we'll give this one as free delivery on sale we'll keep this one as yes and price drop there is a 15 percent price drop all right so i think everything is done let's do one thing let's go to console and then we'll do add product let's see i think we are getting some error so let me just check all right all right so you can see that awesome job so product is now added successfully so that means this product is now in our database let's refresh our uh, collection here let's see we are having products i'll go here and you can see that we are having our first product and also image URL is, url is also available and this is sizes and everything is done awesome job so now what we have to do so there are quite a few things we have to do the first thing is that once we'll click on this add product we have to show some kind of loader we have to reset this form we'll go back to our manage all products page and then we have to render the all the added products all right lot of things so we'll do one by one so first thing is that let's do one thing we already have a common uh, loader that we have created i hope you already know this one we use that one in the login page go to our context let's go to our login page so we'll go to our login page and then from here you can see that we are having a component level loader and set component level loader so these two we are going to import from our uh, uh, context so i'll copy this from here we'll go here and let's import this one so this will be const paste it this will be equal to use context of global context all right so before we'll save this one the first thing what we need to do will we have to make this one a set common level uh, a component level loader and we'll make the loading as true correct and also we'll make the id so you have to remember you have to pass additional id property for this one this will be empty now here what we can check if 
race dot success if this is true that means that product is added successfully so we'll make the loading as false and the same will do if anything goes wrong all right next what we will do we'll also import toast so from react toastify and this will be dot success here we'll pass race dot message all right and also you have to pass the position so we'll do position which will be equal to position i think this will be toast dot position dot uh, where top right let's copy this if there are any error we'll just show error also don't forget to import the notification component at the end so this is our notification component that we have created all right and also once the save is completed we have to reset the form so this will be set form data which is equal to initial form data so that means we have resetted the form and here we'll pass the same all right so this is done now what we have to do so you have to basically show that uh, loader so i think that we have done here remember if i now go back sorry go down you can see that we are checking here if the component level loader and load, load loading is true so we'll show that loader or else this will be logging the same we can do here so we'll do if component level loader and and component level loader dot loading if this is true so we'll render component level loader or else this will be add product and we'll remove this one and the props will, will copy from here no need to write again so we'll copy this text color and the loading so these three you have to pass it here so we'll do this one as adding product all right this will be uh, white color and this loading is correct means whenever this loading is true then only i think everything is done let's save this and let's see what is happening all right so let's start from first so we'll close this one i will choose some file let's choose the second one all right so uh, this one the first thing is that what do we need to do so this will be the kids one so i think we have to choose kids we'll select all three we'll give kids red t-shirt we'll give a price of 75 description we'll copy from here and we'll paste it you can give whatever you want based on your convenience for now i'll just uh, there is no need to write uh, description right it will just waste our time we'll give free delivery no sale and price drop will be zero let's click click on this add product let's see awesome so you can see the product added successfully and this is now resetted if i go here and then refresh this and you can see that we are getting two product so this is working so what is the next step next time is uh, next step is basically simply here what we can do we can take a set timeout and then just give a one second delay here and what we can do we can simply do here i think we have to first import the router so i'll do here const router equal to use router from next slash navigation and here we'll do router dot push and it will basically go to this route so we'll go here uh, let's copy this and we'll paste it here let's save this and let's see finally we'll test once again so we'll go to add new product we'll select here uh, we'll select this one and i think this all uh, we'll copy from here only for this one we'll select only one and we'll give this one as man white t-shirt slim style all right give a price of 150 description will copy from here we'll paste it category will be men delivery free delivery price sell yes and there is a 50 percent drop let's add here and let's see awesome so now it's going back to this page and in this page what we need to do we just have to extract this here so if i now refresh this one you can see that you'll be able to see three products so we're getting three products and these three products we have to render here and after that we have to start working on the update functionality 
so that's all for this particular video so you have almost completed the add new product so let's start working on this manage new manage products section another very important point is that you see here if i go to all products this component that we are going to create the same reusable component will will be using in all the places same here also so that is the reason we don't have to create each and every component multiple times so let's start working on this component in the next video hey everyone welcome back so in the previous video what we have done we have completed uh, our functionality for the add new product we also have added three products here now what we have to do first thing is that you can see that we are having this product tile now as i already told you that the same component we will be using in the client view and also in the admin view so the notice if you notice here you see that this part is common the only difference is that here we are having add to cart but if i go to the admin view and here we will be basically having two button one is update and delete so what we are going to do we will be creating this one as a common component and then for admin view there will be a button component and for client view there will be a button component the reason is that it will be very easy to manage so let's see how we are going to do that so the first thing is that what i will do inside components i'll create a folder and i'll name this one as common listing uh, common listing is fine and here i'll create index.js all right now here we'll create two folder one is for product uh, tile and one will be for product buttons all right so here we are having index.js and the same we will use here also so let's start with this uh, common listing page now this common listing page is basically the main uh, structure or this grid view that we are having here so we'll first uh, we will start with use client the reason is we need interactivity so this has to be a client uh, client uh, component so here i'll create this one as export default function common listing all right now this will receive uh, some of the props but for now we'll keep it uh, like this first we'll create the structure so here i'm going to return a section all right now here we'll give a class name let's give this one as vg white we'll do py of 12 we'll do text uh, for small i think let's give a py of 16 this is fine now inside of this we'll have a div for this one we'll give a class name of mx auto we will also give max w screen excel we'll give a px of 4 and uh, we'll give a sm px of 6 and for large we'll give a px of how much we'll give this one as 8 all right now inside this we'll have another div here we'll take a class name we'll give a empty of 10 make this one as grid we'll do grid columns 2 we'll give a gap of 6 for sm we'll do grid column as 4 we'll do sm gap of 4 and for large we'll do empty of 16 now here this will receive the data the data is basically the list of products that we will be receiving from the apis all right but for now what i'll do just to show you i'll take a dummy data for now so let's take this one as dummy data and how we are going to take this so this will be array or object and from our database we'll copy only one for now later we'll just obviously we'll be getting from the api so we'll copy this one we will paste it here oh so let me just quickly uh, format this and then we will we will be start working on the rest of the things all right everyone so i have formatted the data so let's start working on this so now here what i'm going to do so whenever we will be receiving this data we have to first map it so we'll do this one as dummy data and then dummy data dot length if this is true or else this will be null now here what we have to do we have to obviously do dummy data dot map this will be item now here we will take a article 
and inside this we will basically create our product tile component all right so let me just quickly create this one so this will be use client and this will export default function product tile let's return some div for now and this will be product tile so here we'll just import the same so we'll do product tile and then we'll pass this item as this sorry you'll pass this item as a prop this is the single item all right so this item we are passing here all right and also have to give some key here so we'll give this item dot id so this is all about our product tile and then we have to create the button component so here we'll take a uh, take the button component so this will be our product button so let me just copy all of this we'll go to product button and this will be our product button all right so let's save this and we'll just import the same so product button awesome so this is done now in this also you have to pass the item so we'll pass this item as a prop all right so this is completed so this is all about our basic structure that we need now we have to start working on the product tile component now this product tile is basically so if i now go here so let me uh, also another thing is that this will be a server server side component so this will be a server component the reason is because this is we are fetching the data and for this one no need to use client component and that is also not recommended so for this one this we have to create as a server component but whatever interactivity we need for example button click and those things that is the reason we've created this um, product island common listing component as a client component and we will be doing those functionalities in these client components all right so now next thing what we need to do to start working on the product tile component so the first thing is that we'll receive the item as a prop here so this is the first step and here we'll take a div and inside this we'll take another div we'll pass a class name and let's make this one as overflow hidden we'll do aspect w1 then we'll do aspect height of 1 and we'll do a height of 52 now inside this div we will take an image all right in the source we have to pass the item dot image url and alt we'll just keep it like product image that's it all right so here also we'll take a class name and we'll do this one as height full we'll do width full we'll do object cover we'll do a transition all let's make a duration of 300 and we'll do a group hover and let's make the scale as 125 let's see if this is working or not so this is all about the image we need and now next what we need to do we have to check if this item dot on sale if this is equal to equal to yes that means the currently that product in sale so here or else this will be null so inside this what we can do we can take a div and then inside div we'll take a paragraph and we'll make this one as cell now here we'll take a class name for this one we'll do rounded full we'll do a bg of black and we'll do p of one we'll do text of uh, 8px we'll do font bold we'll do uppercase We'll do tracking wide i'm not discussing all of this because we have already used these things multiple times text white sm will do py of one and sm will do px of three and for this d we'll take a class name we'll make this one as absolute we'll do a top of zero we'll do m of two we'll do rounded full and we'll do bg of white I don't uh, let's make this one as BG of black and for this one I'll remove this let's see what is happening let's format this so this is one now next we'll take another div for this one we'll take a class name 
so for this one we'll do my of 4 we'll do mx of auto we'll do flex we'll do w of 10 by 12 we'll do flex column we'll do item start and we'll do justify between now inside this we'll take another div we'll take a class name we'll make this one as mb of 2 we'll do flex and then here we'll take a paragraph and we'll render the price so here we'll take template literals we'll take a dollar and this will be item dot price and here for this paragraph also have to take a class name so for this one we'll take mr of 3 text sm we'll do font semi bold that's it and after this we'll take a h3 and we'll make this one as item dot name for this one we'll take a class name and we'll do mb of 2 we'll do a text gray 400 we'll do text sm and i think that's it so these all are the things you have to render now we have to go to the product buttons but before that let's see what exactly we are getting so we are in the common listing page and another thing we have to start working on the all products page so because you can see this is the admin all products now this is a server side uh, server component uh, means the data will be fetching from the server side so what we'll do the first thing is that we are going to import this common listing page here all right so now let's see what we are getting let's save this so you can see that we are getting all of this here but there are some styling problems so that we need to check i think it is fine but some border is missing all right so for this one what we can do we can go to our common listing and i think we have used some article so for this one we can give a class name in this article so we'll give a class name of relative sorry this will be relative and also we'll give this one as flex flex column and we'll give this one as overflow hidden we'll do border and you have to do cursor pointer let's save this now let's see all right so now this is fine so you have to start working on the uh, buttons now all right so here we are having product tile so this is basically the button component so let's go to our code and we'll go to our product uh, button component now here another thing is that we have to do this one for both the uh, components so what we can do basically we have to give some kind of condition to understand if this is an admin view or not right so how we are going to do that so that we have already know so in our navbar component we have already done now there are many ways you can do that i am telling you again if i now go to our navbar component you can see that here we are having this is admin view so from this path name we will be able to identify if this is admin view correct so we'll copy this and we'll go to our product button component and here we are going to use the same now this path name is right this path name is basically to take path name which will be use path name from next slash navigation and the same we have to use here so if this is a is admin view the view will be different if this is a client view there will be only one button so let's start working on that part all right so the first thing is that what we can do first we'll start uh, let's do one thing here we'll check something like this so if this is admin view so we have to pass two buttons or else this will be a single button right so we'll do something like this just to check so this is one button and we will copy this pass it here this will be two button and for client view this will be only one and let's see what is happening so let's save this so you can see that now you're getting two uh one and two correct and if i refresh this page also still this will work so this is fine so now we have to start working on the button component so what we can do we can simply take the button for for the client view what we have to do we have to make this one as add to cart so we'll do add to cart all right so let's give a class name here so we'll give a empty of 1.5 we'll give flex 
we'll give w full we'll do justify center we'll do bg of black px of 5 py of 3 text xs we'll do font medium we'll do uppercase tracking wide and we'll do text white all right so the same we'll be using in in this button also same class name so we'll paste it here and we'll paste it here and for this one this will be one will be update and the second one this will be delete so we'll just format this and save this and let's see what is happening so we are getting update and delete so this is fine and now here the some difference is there because maybe some padding but for now i think this is looking nice so we are getting the uh, for the product item here so now because this is completed so what will be our next step so in the next step we have to first create our api routes api routes i mean when we will be fetching the data from the api means the all the products so for this one i have to create our api route to fetch all the products and also the services file for the same so let's create that one in the next video and then we will be uh, calling the data from our component and then we have to render those uh, uh, products from the database so let's do this one in the next video all right everyone so let's start working on the api routes to fetch all the admin products this is not the client products this is the admin products from the api so i'll close everything else for now all right now let's go to our api first so we'll go to api we'll go to admin and then we are having add product and here i'll create another api route and this will be all products and here we have to create route dot js all right so first we'll go here we'll copy our dynamic property and we'll paste it here now this will be a get method so this way export async function get and now here we'll receive the request all right the first thing is that we have to connect to the database all right and also another thing we have to check if the user is admin so this part we haven't done yet so once we will integrate this one in the next video we have to create the middleware so middleware basically will hold the information whether the user is authenticated all the time or not and if the user is authenticated at the same time that user is admin user then only they will be able to fetch the data so for now we'll keep it like this only so we'll just use a dummy uh, data for now and we'll check if the user is admin then only it will do sorry if the user is equal to will to admin then only it will do or else it will show that you are not authenticated something like that so we'll just copy it from here and we'll paste it here all right and also we are going to keep this one inside try block and in the catch we'll catch some error and we'll use the same thing now see these thing i'm not writing the same thing because we have to write this exact thing right so i'm just copy pasting so i'll copy from here we'll paste here and we'll make this one as error all right so if, if the user is admin so you have to basically get all the products we'll do const get or let's make this one as extract all products and this will be equal to await and we have to import the product schema that you have created this is the model and this will be dot find now dot dot find what it will do this will find all the documents right it will find all the documents you can see that and then it will return return the list of do documents that matches that find all right so now here what you have to do you have to basically check if this is true extra all products so we'll just simply return so what do you have to return you have to return next response dot json and we'll do success as true all right and also you have to pass the data which will be our extract all products so this is our data all right and if there are nothing is found so we'll show that something like we'll copy the same thing paste it here and we'll make this one as false and data will be no data so what we can do we can send some status like 204 and we'll send some message here so message will show something like no products found and we'll remove this all right 
so this is all about the uh, api route that we need and this is pretty much simple so now we'll go to our services file and then we are having this products services so here we'll create another function and let's make this one as export const get all admin products all right now this one will make this one as async obviously now here we no need to take any parameters so here we'll do try let's make the catch again so this will be error we'll just log here error so in the try what we'll do we'll do const response now one very 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 important point is that when we will be fetching something from server side you have to give the absolute url absolute url i mean here it will not work like that it will give you some error and i will be discussing that particular point in the upcoming videos so what we need to basically give absolute url means you have to give this full url that is look with this localhost 3000 when i'll be deploying this one so we have to give this base url so with this base url you have to give so what we can do we can copy this one from here now this is very important concept now here what you have to do we have to do avid and then we do fetch and here you have to pass this one and then inside this you have to go to api slash admin slash all products that's it so from here you are basically fetching and also you have to give here the method so method will be a gate method all right so now this will give you the data and this will be const data avid race dot json and then we are going to return the data all right everyone so we have uh, created the services file now what you have to do let's go to our page now here this is a server component you can see that we are not using any use client on the top of this component so for this one we because we already have the services file here we no need to create any uh, any other function here what you can do you can simply do something like this const all admin products and this will be avid and before that you have to make this one as async and this will be avid get all admin products all right and let's log here these all admin products let's save this and let's see what is happening and you can see that if i now uh, expand this one we are getting all the data here and this is coming from the service server side awesome now i'll note uh, i'll show you another thing is that the reason i make this one as absolute or we have used the base url also if i now remove this part from here let's see what is happening so here if i now save this see you'll get a parse error that it will basically fail to parse the url so that is the reason whenever you will be fetching use this base url also let's save this so now what we have to do we uh, let's see what we are getting in what format correct so if i now go here you can see that we are getting success and the data so this data we need to take so here we can go to our page so common listing will pass a property here this will be data and this will be equal to all admin products dot data so we'll check something like this all admin products and and all admin products dot data so we'll go to this common listing page sorry so we'll go to this common listing page here previously we are doing using dummy data so we'll take a data that we are receiving from props and this data we are going to map it here and this dummy data will remove so remove this dummy data from here all right everyone so i think almost everything is completed so now let's check what exactly we are getting so we'll go back and awesome you can see that we are getting three product here now let's test another thing is that i'll add a new product and let's see whether that is reflecting or not so let's uh, choose file so i'll uh, choose the fourth one and for this one what we can give we'll give this one as a man uh, denim jacket we'll select two we'll give a price of 250 we'll copy the description from here we'll paste it this will be free delivery and also let's give a 50 percent drop now let's add this and let's see what is happening all right so you're not able to see that updated data i think this is maybe the because of cache so let's see if this is updated here or not 
then there might be some issue all right so we are getting four data here uh, let me just check so this is the service let's do one thing let's give cash uh, we'll do no store so we don't want to store so now let's save this and let's see all right now we are getting that one this is fine but let's add another one we have to confirm so i'll add another one let's add this one so for this one what we can do we'll give only l this will be men slim jeans price of 250 we'll copy the description from here paste it delivery free delivery if you want you guys can modify this information for now i'll just keep same for all of this and let's this one i uh, will make this one as uh, zero only on sale will be no so let's add this one and now this should actually reflect so let's see whether this is reflecting or not so this is not reflecting all right so now this is coming but there are some issue so this we have to check let's add another one and if this issue persists then the, we have to check so let's add this one here mm, so we'll add all three women jeans add a price of 150 we'll copy this paste it here category of women this is free delivery and yes and this will be 10 let's add this one and let's see all right so now this is updating so i think this is fine now let's refresh this all right so this is fine let's add another product i just want to reconfirm whether this is working or not let's choose uh, this one uh, this one which one only one will choose m let's give this one as woman white t-shirt price of 50 description will use the same let's give a category of woman delivery free delivery on sale yes and we'll give this one as 10 percent let's add this one and let's see all right now this is working awesome so you can see that now we are able to see all the products here and this is getting served from the server side so this is a server component and you can see that the only difference is that we are not caching so this is like no store so this is fine if i now refresh this we should get all the products and awesome this is working fine so i think that's all about the listing now in the next video we will be start working on updating this product and also have to start working on deleting so once that is done the admin view is completed then we will be start working on the client view so those things we are going to do in the next videos hey everyone and welcome back so in the previous video we have completed the main listing functionality for this admin user now in this video we are going to work on this update and delete functionality so the first thing is that we will be start working on the api for the same so inside this api we are having admin and let's create another folder here and let's give this one as a update product and also we are going to create another one and that will be delete product all right now inside this will create our route dot js all right so the first thing what we are going to do so we will first uh, use our dynamic property here so we'll copy this and we'll paste it here now let's start with so whenever we will be updating a particular product so that will be a put method so what we can do we can take here export async function and this will be a put and here we'll get the request all right the first thing is that we'll take a try block and then in the catch block we will do as usual so we'll go here and let's copy the same thing so we'll call this and then we'll paste it here and let's import next response now inside this try what we have to do the first step we have to connect to our database so this is first step and then we are going to extract the data so this will be avid so request dot json so this is our the data so whenever we will be clicking on any of the button we need to get the data for this particular product all right so first we'll get the data now here we have to extract a couple of few things so the first we'll start with id we also need name we need price we need description we also need category of that product 
then we need sizes we need delivery info we need on sale price drop and also you have to take the image URL all right so these all the properties we are going to take from this extract data all right now what we have to do we'll take another variable and we'll make this one as uh, let's say updated uh, product now for this one we'll take avid and we will import the product schema from our model and this will be because we are updating a single product so this method we can use that is find one and update you can see that now here what we have to do we have to basically pass that which product you want to uh, update so for this one this id we will be this id that we are having that is this id here all right next what we have to do we will be passing all the other properties and at the end we will be passing new property this is as true now here what we have to pass we will be passing all of this here so we'll copy this so that means this is the updated value that we will be uh, typing in our form when when we'll update this particular product and we'll paste it here let's format this alright so now this will update our product and we can now simply check if this updated product is true that means we'll simply return next response dot json and here we'll pass success as true obviously and then we'll pass a message something like that product updated successfully alright so this is all about now if there is anything is wrong so we can take a else block and now let's copy the same thing from here and we'll paste it here so this will be false and we'll do the same thing that something like failed to update the product please try again later so this is all about our product update api route that we need now what is the next step in the next step we have to create the services so for services we are already having this product services and here we are going to create all the services so let's start with our update new product sorry update existing product so we'll take another method here so this will be update product this will be async and here we will get the form data so we'll take try and then in the catch we'll simply just log this error for now that's it now in this try what we can do this will be const response avid fetch and where we have to go we have to basically go to so this will be a uh, this will be a client side so on button click we have to do it so what we can do we have to go to the, our api then you have to go to our admin and then you have to go to update product so this is update product all right so this is all about the url next we have to pass the method so method will be put and you have to pass the headers so headers we can basically take from here i think this one so this is authorization we need so we'll use the same thing and then next what we have to do we also have to pass the body so body will be simply json dot stringify and here what we have to pass we have to pass this form data that's it now this will basically trigger that api endpoint and after that we'll do const data equal to await response dot json and then we, at the end we are going to return the data so this is all about our update product and also you have to do export here all right so this is i think done next we will start with our delete api route now delete api route we have already created the folder we'll create another route file here so this will be route.js again we'll do the same thing we'll copy from here and we'll paste it now this will be export async function this will be delete and here we'll get the request now we'll do try and catch so for catch we are going to use the same thing so i'll just copy from here only the messages so i'll copy this and i'll paste it here and let's import this next response 
all right now here again the first thing we have to do connect db now here we are going to extract the search params now this search param will be new url and here we'll get the request dot url all right now here from this search param we are going to extract the id that has to be deleted so for example whenever we'll click on this delete we have to get the id of this particular product so this will be equal to search param dot get and here we will get the id all right now if the id is not present so we have to return something so we'll return next response dot json and here what we can do we can simply make the success as false and we'll do message which is product id is required if there are no id present now next what we have to do const deleted product this will be equal to avid now this will be again product from model and here we have to do find by id and delete you can see that this is the one all right now here we have to pass this id so based on this id we want to delete that particular product from the database again if this deleted product is true that means it is successful so we'll copy from here only and we'll paste it here so success will be true and we have to do product something like deleted successfully if not that means it is false so we'll just log here false and here will show something like failed to delete the product please try again so this is very simple so that's all about the api route we need for delete a particular product now here again we'll go to our uh, services and here we will create another method this will be co export const delete product and also let's make this one update a product and delete a product all right now what we have to do here now delete a product we are going to take so let's make this one async so we'll get the id from our ui when we'll click on that button button and we'll do try and we'll do catch here sorry and here we are going to do log and log this error now here the first thing what we are going to do this will be const race avid fetch so here we have to go to sorry we have to go to slash api slash admin slash delete product all right now here what we have to do again we have to pass the method so we'll pass the method as delete all right and also we'll pass the headers so in the headers we have to pass the authorization so we'll copy from here and we'll pass it here that's it now at the end we'll do const data equal to avid res dot json and at the end we are going to return the data same done all right and also we have to do another thing i think we have missed this one so here we have to pass this id because this id we are going to extract so let's make this one as a template literals so this id you have to pass so here we'll pass this id that's it let's save this so this id basically we are going to receive here all right so this is done so that's all about to create all the api route and the services for delete and update a product in the next video we are going to do the client side functionality so on click of this button we have to go to this add new product section and then we have to populate all the data in the form and once we'll update based on that we have to call that api and on delete what we need to do we have to delete this data and at the same time we have to refresh this page here because let's say if i click here immediately i have to remove this data remove this card from this ui also so these two things we are going to do in the next video hey everyone and welcome back so in the previous video we have created the api routes for both the update and delete so in this video we are going to integrate that functionality with the front end so the first thing is that uh, what we need to do if you see here whenever we will click on this update we have to basically hold that information for that particular card and we have to populate that data in the in this particular form so for this one the first thing is that we are going to take a straight in our context so let's go to our context and here we will take a state and let's give this one as current updated 
product and set current updated product and this will be equal to use state of null now let's copy this and we will pass it in our context so this is the first step now next step is that we have to go to all products and then here we are even common listing then product button now here you can see that we are having update and delete so what we need to do whenever we will click on this update button we have to navigate to that particular page and also you have to store that information how we are going to do that you can see that in this product button we are passing the information for the single item so that means whenever we will click on this button we will get the information of this particular individual card so in this product button we will take this one as a prop so this is the item that we are receiving and also we will take this current updated product from our context so this will be global context and then on click here what we need to do so the first thing is that we will make this set current updated product and we'll set this one as an item which is the current item and also we'll do router so let's do const router and this will be equal to use router so router dot push and we are going to navigate to the add page so we'll be going to this page all right so let's pass it here that's it so now let's save this and let's copy this current updated product let's copy this both sorry copy this both and we don't need this one so we'll remove this one from here so now what we need to do we have to go to add product and then here the first thing is that we'll take this current updated product from context and now let's log this current updated product here and let's see what we are getting so if i now save this and let's open our console let's go to manage all products now here if you see once i'll click here you see we are getting this information line number eight uh, sorry here updated product which is basically the one that we have clicked so that means we are now able to get the data in this page now we just have to populate here now to populate here this is extremely simple what we can do we can simply take a use state here so let's take use state here uh, sorry not use state uh, we have to take use effect and then we will give this uh, current updated product as a dependency and we'll simply do if this current updated product not equal to equal to null so we'll just simply uh, set this form data as this current updated product all right now let's save this and let's see so you can see that these values are now getting pre-populated here if i now go back and then let's say i click here you can see here now there is a problem now the problem is if you see this data we are storing in the state what will happen if i now go back and come back in this page again you can see that this data is still present so that means what we need to do whenever we will change this route and based on that if we haven't clicked on any of this product card here so that means whenever we'll go to this page you have to reset this form again so how we are going to do that so to do this one we can simply go to our navbar component so in the navbar component what we can do here we can basically check based on this path name as a dependency that if the path name is not this add page and also current updated product this is if this is not null that means this data is present so that means whenever this data will be present and we will be changing the route we will reset this one because we don't know whether the user want to update the product or not because if i now go back and come back here again to add a product but if you see already data is present and this is wrong so this is a data of a existing product so what we can do we can simply take a use effect in this nav bar and here what we can do we can give this path name as a dependency and also we have to give this current updated product also as a dependency right and this one will take from here and also we'll take this set current updated product so here what we'll do we'll check if this path name is not equal to equal to 
this add product path name and if this current updated product if this is not equal to equal to null so what we'll do will simply make this set current updated product as null again all right so this is one very important step we have to do if i now save this now let's see so if you see if i now change this route and come back again see now this is resetted so if i go back and click on this update so now still this is not coming so we have to check what we have done wrong so let's see if i click here it is getting resetted oh i think the reason is because maybe we have given this current updated product as a dependency we have to remove this one so because of this this is gets getting also resetted so we only have to give the path name as a dependency if i now save this now let's see if this is working or not so we'll go back uh, we'll click here all right now this is coming so if i now go back here again so let's do one thing let's log this current updated product here in this nav bar now let's see so this is null first time if i now go back here this will be null this is fine we'll go back we'll do here this is coming so we are having nav bar so this data is coming but if i now just go back here again you can see now this is null and if i come back this is null so this is working fine all right so now this is done now what we need to do when we'll click here we are getting the data now once we'll update this data we have to call the update api if you see here in this add product when we are saving this one so we are having handle add product and we are calling add new product but here what we need to do we have to basically check if this current updated product is not equal to control null that means currently we are doing a update instead of adding so we'll just do it and you have to do update a product and you have to pass the form data here or else this will be new product so that means we are checking either we are updating a product or we are adding a new product something like that now once this is done another very very important thing we have to do see once we'll save this and we'll go back to this page we have to get the updated product every time whenever we'll go back to this list page so how we are going to do this one so whenever we'll do some update in the client uh, client component and because this is a server component but the components that we are using that is a combination of, combination of client components so if i now show you if you see here all products this is a server component but this common listing is a combination of client components that we are using so what we can do we have to basically do a reload every time we'll do any update in that add uh, add page so basically here so how we are going to do that so in this common listing page we'll just import router which will be use router and then whenever this page will load so on use effect what we have to do we have to basically refresh this page so we can do router dot refresh all right so that means whenever we will update or add a new product we want this data to be updated every time so this is another important step we have to do now let's save this and now let's see what is happening all right so first i'll close everything let's click on add, uh, edit and i'll remove this slim from here all right and let's go here also you have to do this on update product but this is fine for now let's click here and let's see so product updated successfully and you can see that now this is updated so edit uh, slim is not there if i do update here let's make this one as for example what we can do we can make this one man uh anything like man red t red shirt if i do here click and you can see that this is getting updated so this is working fine so now what we need to do once we'll click on this update we have to make this one as a update so for this one i will go to add product and then here you can see that we are having add product so you can basically check if this current updated product if this is not equal to, equal to null so we'll make this one as a update product or else this will be add product so this is first step all right and also here you can see that we are having this text here so here what we can do simply here also you have to change this one so we can check that if the same thing we can check if the current updated for not equal to, equal to null so we'll make this one 
as updating product or adding product so this will be updating product or adding product and also here once this is successful that that means updates update is successful we also have to make the set current updated product as null also now let's save this and let's see so we'll go to this page now let's go here and we'll make this one kids red t-shirt and let's make this one as 100 all right so kid red t-shirt and 100 let's click here and let's see so this is kids red t-shirt this is 100 and update is working fine awesome now next thing what we need to do we have to start working on the delete now again the same concept once we'll click on this delete we already have done router dot refresh if you see here so the same thing we have to do so we'll go to this product button and then we are having this uh, delete here all right so here what we can do we can take a on click and here we will take a method and make this one as handle delete product and we'll make this one as item so we'll pass the item as argument and here what we'll do we'll create a function i'll make this one as handle delete product we'll get the id now here the first thing is that you have to do also have to make this one as async and we'll do const uh race this will be await delete a product and we'll pass the id now here what we need to do uh we also have to check what is coming so let's do one thing let's go to our add product page so i'll close this one from here and here i think we can use the same uh, logic the reason is that uh, we don't have to write the same thing again and again so i'll copy this one from here this is just the re response so basically what we need to do we are checking if the delete is successful so this set component label loader we have to import from context now see here you remember we have used this id so that means we have to basically check that which item we are currently uh, deleting here so based on that we have to show loader in that component in that card only if you don't take the id now what will happen if you click on delete all the items will show deleting that is wrong so id how you will get you will get this id from here so this is item so you have to do this one as item dot id and the same we can do here so this will be item dot id so that means currently we are deleting this item also you have to import toast set form data this is not required this is also not required and this is not required the same we can remove this one so this is fine so that means we are deleting and then once this is done what we have to do here basically we will check if this component also we have to take the component level loader so we'll take this one from our context so we'll go back here and we'll import this from context so now what we'll do we'll do component level loader and this loader dot loading if this is true and also we have to check another thing and that is this item dot id that we are having this has to be equal to equal to component uh, level loader dot id that means this is the item that we are deleting if these all are true in that case what we have to render we have to render component level loader or else this will be uh, delete uh, delete so in this component level loader we will use the same uh, properties that we have used so we have to take text color and the loading so we'll do here we'll copy here and let's pass it here so loading will be this loading and text will be deleting product all right so this is done so that means we are checking if this loading is true and the item dot id is equal to equal to that id then only this will be deleted or else this will be only delete now let's save all of this all right now everything is done now let's check what exactly we are getting all right so i think we have to remove this delete from here all right and also okay there is another thing we have to do because we are using the toast component here so in this common listing page uh, we will use the notification component so that we need to use to show the notification so this is one thing and also i think everything is done 
uh, we have to make this one as true and also another thing because if you remember in the common listing page we were doing this router dot refresh whenever we will add or update a product the same thing we have to do while delete is successful that means once the delete is done we have to do router dot refresh once to get the latest data so now let's save this now let's see if this is working or not so let's do one thing let's delete this one here so we'll do click here delete so deleting product so it's deleted now you can see that it's working fine if i do delete this one and it's working fine let's delete this one it's working fine awesome so now everything is done all right so here we are getting something is wrong adding product so this is wrong so let's go to our add product and here i think this is true but what we need to do uh so i think we have done something wrong i got it why so we'll make this one as false here this is the reason and here what we need to do before we will delete there only you have to do this one i think this is a completely wrong thing so that i have done so here we have to make this one as true before deleting an id now this will be false and id will be empty because once the delete is successful so now let's save this now let's see so we'll go back here and we'll come back still this is adding product this is in true state so let's do one thing uh let's first delete here something so i'll delete this product from here so this is deleted i'll go back now it is correct so you can see that we are getting add product now let's add another product here so let's i'll add this one now uh for this one what we can do we'll do all three we'll do woman uh, white t-shirt let's give a price of 100 let's copy the description from here so we'll paste it here give this one woman delivery in for free delivery sell yes price drop let's give 15 percent we'll do add product so this is added now we are getting uh latest here let's update this one so we'll do update let's make this one as uh white woman's slim white t-shirt and we'll make this one as 150 now let's make this one as no and we'll make this one zero so now this is final let's update this one let's see so it's updated now so you can see that now this is updated we are getting we are not getting any sale so now let's do one thing let's delete this product so if i delete here so now this is deleted awesome so this is done so i think now what happened this admin view is almost completed what will be the next step in the next step it will start working in the client view now in the client view the first thing is that we'll be start working on this uh, all products page so this is the page now here one uh, very important point is that one thing if you noticed in this all product this is the same as this add product page now this admin view only an admin user will able to access and also that user has to be authenticated but this route the client view every user can uh, access this page whether the user is authenticated or not so what we need to do to view this card any user can view this card but to update and delete only admin user can update and delete so that is the reason this part actually i noticed so if you go to this api admin and then all products see here we have given this user is equal to equal to admin because we haven't created the middleware yet but here we don't have to check this condition because this route that is all products out for client view and admin view this has to be a non-authenticated route because any user can access but whenever they will update and delete that time we have to check whether the user is admin user or not so for this one for now we'll remove this logic from here this is not required for all all products so remove this one from here and this one from here but when we will basically update or delete so for this one for delete route and update route or add route for all three the user has to be authenticated and also user has to be an admin user but for all products any user can uh, check uh, or basically view that particular page so this is another thing i just want to do so that means now this will uh, create uh, this is uh, all about the admin view what i'll do in the meantime i'll create some more product here 
and once that is done then we will be start working on the client view in the next part so the first thing is that we'll start working on this all products men women and the kids these four page because for four pages the view is same only difference is that you have to just create a route so whenever we'll go to men we have to check this category men and based on that you have to filter the data so that one we will be doing in the next video hey everyone so in the previous video we have completed the admin section and now from this video we have to start working on this client view so the first thing what we are going to do if you see here in the client view we are having this four section or basically four pages and on click of each and every page we have to basically pass the category and based on that you have to filter the data but for this all products this for this particular page whatever data we will be receiving this will be same as the admin view the only difference is that if you see here we are having only one button and in the admin view we are having two button now this point i already discussed because this all products page this page any user can visit whether the user is authenticated or not so that is the reason we have basically removed that particular logic from our api route the first thing what we need to do we have to create another api route and that will be basically to filter the products based on this category so for example when we will go for men we have to filter based on men women and kids so first we are going to create this api route and the services file and after that we will be start working on the uh, client side so let's go back and what we are going to do uh, let's go to our api and you can see that we are having admin view and inside that add all delete and update now because this route will be on the client side either what you can do you can create another folder here for example like client uh, side products and then inside that you can create the route but for now i'll keep it like this only so inside this admin what i'll do i'll create another folder here and let's give this one name as product by category all right now let's create our route dot js now the first thing what we'll do we'll copy our dynamic property so we'll copy this one and we'll paste it here now let's create so this will be export async function now this will be a get method so we'll get the request and here the first thing what we'll do we'll try try block we'll take a catch now in the catch we will basically log the same thing that we usually do instead of rewriting so we will copy this from here and we will paste it and also we have to import next response so in the try block the first thing is that try to connect to dv so this is the first step and here next thing what we need to do the first thing is that we will get the search params from so this will be new url and here we'll get the request sorry request dot url so this is the thing and the reason is that because we'll be passing that categories men women and kids so that value we need to extract so after that we'll do const get data something like that and this will be await and then we are having the product model so in the product model we'll do find and then here what we need to do based on what we need to uh, find the products if you remember we have a category while adding a new product so we'll, we want to filter based on category so we'll pass a category and this category has to be this id that we will be receiving and another thing we have to do we have to extract the id so we'll do const id and this id will be this search params dot get and here we'll pass the id that we will be passing so that means we want to pass the id and based on this id this id will be basically the value of this men women or kids and based on this category we want to find the data as simple as that now once we'll get the data so if the get data is present so what we can do we can simply return next response dot json sorry this will be dot json and here we will pass success sorry we'll pass success as true and also we'll pass the data as get data all right and if nothing is present that means the data is not present so we'll return the same thing so we'll copy this and sorry we'll do inside and we'll make the success as false and data will be because empty so we'll pass the status here status is uh, for example 204 and we'll pass a message like uh, no products found something like that 
all right so that's it i think this is all about this route for uh, to filter based on product by category now what will be the next step now in the next step we have to create the services for the same so we'll go to our services file and let's go to our services and then we are having product now here basically what we need to do we will be creating here another method so let's do one thing we'll go here and let's create uh, export so const uh, what we can do will give product by category all right this will be async method now here what we are going to receive we will be basically receiving the id from our ui this id is on click of this we have to basically get that which um, uh, product we are clicking and based on that we have to extract this value and that id you have to pass all right now here we'll take a try block as usual and in the catch block we'll just log the error so we'll do error all right now here what we need to do we have to do const brace which will be await so you have to go fetch and we'll go slash api and also we are going to use this full url because that uh, this one we have to do as server side rendering so we'll paste it here and instead of all products we have to do admin slash product by category and here what we need to pass you to pass the id which will be also let's do one thing let's take this one as a template literals so this id will be the id that we will be receiving that's it so this is one step next what we need to do we have to only pass the method so method this will be get all right now this will give us the data so this will be data await race dot json and at the end we are going to return the sorry we are going to return the data so that's all about the uh, route we need so that's it now let's save this now next step what we need to do we have to go to our component or basically pages and inside app you can see that we will create another uh, folder here and let's give this one name as uh, product all right now inside this product we will create another folder and we will give this one as listing now inside listing we will create four pages now either you can definitely create those in one page but i just want to keep everything uh, separate so that it will be easier to understand and here i will start with all products then inside listing we will be having men all right then we'll create another one we'll give this one as woman and inside this we'll create another one that will be kids now let's create our page sorry not we have to create the file so this will be inside page.js all right so now here we'll create export default function and let's give this one as all products and also let's check what we have given in the admin product so that both are different so we are giving admin all products so this is fine so here what we need to do so we are going to return if you remember we have created this common listing page now the same we are going to use so we'll use the same so this will be common listing and here we have to get the all products now this is a server side component so look const get all products and this will be so also you have to make this one so you are going to use the same method that we have used and also you have to make this one as async so this will be await get all admin products because at the end both are same and then what we'll do we'll do this one as data and let's see what is the name so this will be dot data so you have to check get all products and and sorry get all products and and get all products dot data now let's format this let's save this now another thing what we need to do so uh, let's first check what we are getting so we have to go to slash product slash listing slash all products and the same we have to give in our uh, nav bar so we'll go to our utils and if you remember we have all the utils here so here you can see that we are having slash product slash listing slash all products i think this is the same name we have given all right so now let's see what is happening 
so we'll go to our client view now let's click on all products and let's see awesome see awesome job you can see now we are getting the same product and see we are only having add to cart the reason is if i go to this common listing page see here what we are doing in this product button if you remember we are basically checking if this is an admin view then we will show two button or else we will only show the add to cart button because this is in the client view so we are only showing add to cart awesome job so you can see that now this is working fine and this is the same data that we are rendering in the admin view so we don't have to rewrite the same thing again and again so this is done now next thing what we need to do whenever we we'll click off any of these we have to basically pass that whether this is men women or kids and this is pretty simple so what we can do we can simply go to our all products and let's do one thing let's copy this page.js or let's create instead of uh, copying we'll do page.js for all three so this will be kids then this will be men page.js and for women this will be page.js now here uh, let's start with men so we'll do this on export default async function i uh, will do men all products and here we are going to return the same component common listing and here what we have to do we'll do const get all products this will be equal to await if you remember we just now created that services product by category so this will be product by category and here we are going to pass the main that means this is the main id if you remember we have passed this uh, id here so this is currently we are calling from the men so the same for women this will be women and then we will be having uh, kids now here what you have to do is just have to do data and this data will be get all products and and get all products dot data now we'll see how this will work and we don't have to read see now how we are reusing all the components instead of rewriting so this is all about man all products now let's save this let's go to our woman so again we will create the same component for default async function woman all products and here we are going to return the same thing this will be common listing page and here we'll do const get all products this will be avid product by category and here we are going to pass woman all right and at the end this will be data which will be get all products and and get all products dot data now let's do one thing let's copy this instead of rewriting the same we have to do for kids so we'll paste it here and this will be kids all products and this will get all products instead of women we have to pass this one as kids now let's save this also let's verify whether we have used the same route here or not so we are having product listing men women and kids now see what will happen if i click on this men see we will only get based on uh, men see now we are only getting i don't know why this is coming maybe we have given uh, men for this one let me just check but for if i click on woman let's see what is happening so you are getting only four if i click on kids we should get only two and also let's check why that is coming for men let's go to our manage all products and let's go here update Oh, we are having category men here so we'll make this one as woman and let's update this product so product updated successfully now go to client view now if i go to men all right so still this is coming uh let's do one thing i think uh let's go to our services file once I think to get all the products we are not storing any any kind of cache so maybe because of that so let's do one thing let's copy this no store cache and the same we will use here also in this product by category so now let's see because in our uh, common listing page if you remember we are doing router.refresh whenever there is any change so this should work now awesome so now this is not coming so if I go to woman so it's coming here you can see now there are five in the all products we are getting all the products 
and let's do one thing let's go to admin view and add another product and let's see whether that is reflecting in the kid section or not so we'll add another product in the kid section so we'll go to admin view let's go to add new product choose file so we'll use this product all only uh, what we can do let's select all three let's give kids red t-shirt we'll give a price of 50 we'll give some description the same description for now we'll give and we'll select category uh, category of kids this will be free delivery let's give a sale of yes and price of is 25 percent let's add the product all right so now let's see whether this is reflecting or not so this is getting reflected here we are getting sale let's go to client view first let's go to all products and here we are getting this if i go to kids now see this is getting updated here so that means what we are basically doing we are doing the we are not storing any kind of cache here and every time we are refreshing so we are getting the updated product and all of this basically getting rendered on the pre-rendered on the server side so that is the reason you can see this is extremely fast we don't have to give any kind of loader or anything also so that means the listing page is now completed so what will be our next step so next step will be on click of this you have to basically uh, go to the details page so this is the details file and if you see here why you are getting this kind of load at the because when i created this website for the first time i haven't created all of this as a server side i just created randomly just for the demo purposes on the client side but here what we have to do we will be making this one obviously a server side component the details page so in the next video we will be start working on the details page so let's do one thing first we'll create the api route and all the other services and then we will be rendering uh, sorry we'll be creating the ui so let's do this in the next video hey everyone and welcome back so now in this video we will be start working on the details api route and the services file so let's do one thing uh, we'll go to api and then inside this api inside admin only will do like product by id something like that so we'll create another folder here and we'll give this one as product by id although these all should not be inside admin folder but as i already told you what you can do you can create another folder here for example like client and inside that client you can again create another subfolder product and then after inside that you can create like by id listing something like that but for now i'll keep it like this product by id and here i'll create our route.js now here let's uh, close everything else first and we'll first copy our dynamic property all right now here again this will be export async function and we'll have to do this one as a gate definitely and here what we, we have to do we'll do try block and in the catch block as usual we will just log the same thing so we'll go here and we'll log this one and let's import this also that's it now here we have to do await connect to db i think now we have done this thing multiple times you also will be able to do it by yourself and also now here the first thing is that what we have to do we have to do search params and we'll do new url and here what we have to do we have to do request dot url all right now here we have to get the id or that is the product id so this will be the search params dot get and this will be id if the id is not present that means the product id that means we have to provide the id so we'll return next response dot json so we'll return a success of false definitely and also we'll give a status of 400 and also let's give a message of something like please provide the uh, product please or let's give this one as product id is required all right so this is one use case now next what we need to do we have to do const get data uh, const get data this will be equal to avid then we'll import the product dot find and here what we have to pass you have to pass the id so based on id we are finding so and this will be id so this id so this you have to do not id product id all right so based on product id we want to get the data so if what we'll do if the get data 
is true so what we'll do we'll pass return here sorry we'll return here next response dot json and here we'll make the success as true and we'll do data as this get data of zeroth all right so this is one step now next if the data is not present and also i think this will be an array although i'm not exactly sure so we'll check this one let's give this one as get data dot length also all right now here if this is not means we have to return a 204 so we'll copy this and we'll paste it here we'll make this one as 204 and we'll do this one as no data found no product found all right this is very simple so this is all about the api route that we need let's save this so now what we have to do next step i think we already know we have to go to services file and we'll create another method here and this will be export const product by id this will be async we'll get the id and here we'll do try catch so here we'll log the error now here what we'll do we'll do const response and this will be await fetch now from where we to fetch let's copy this all right sorry we'll do template literals and here we have to do id because the same i think we are fetching from the id only here this is fine and now next what we need to do we have to do method method will be get and cache we will do no store now next const data this is will be await race dot json and we are going to reach on the data this is done so that's all about this structure we need now let's save this now what we need to do we have to create our page page means our uh, details page so let's do one thing let's go here and inside product listing here we will create another one and this will be a dynamic component so we'll do something like this details and inside this we'll create page dot js all right so now here first we'll create the component all right so let's start with so this will be export default async function we'll give this one as product details now this is a dynamic page because whenever we'll click from the listing page it will receive the id so this id will be receiving from the params and here for now let's return some simple div and we'll give this one as details now here what we need to do we have to do const and let's make this one as product details data this will be avid product by id and here we have to pass this params dot details now params dot details is basically the id corresponding id and also let's log this product details data and let's see what we are getting also we have to do another thing uh, we have to go to our common listing page so here and whenever we will click on this each and every individual item we have to navigate to the details page so how we are going to do that so for this one we'll give an on click here and here we'll do router dot push and this will go to slash product slash the item dot id corresponding id so now let's save this and also now let's log go back let's open this and let's see what we're getting so if i now click here so it is going to the details page so it will extract this id and we are getting data empty all right so this is not working so let's see your product by id so doing local product by category sorry this will be product by id so now let's save this let's check awesome so you can see that we are getting the data here so we are getting success and this is the data so this data we have to basically uh, receive or basically render in our ui so for this one what we need to do so in our 
product details page this is a server component but this also will be a combination of client components what we are going to do just like in our listing pages what we have done we simply created another common listing page so we'll create a common details page and in the details page we'll be rendering all the details so inside components i'll create a folder and i'll give this one name as common details so here let's create index.js now this will be a client component so we'll do here use client now let's do export default function common details and here we will be receiving the item from the parent component as a prop now let's start working on the ui all right so here the first thing is that we'll return a section and let's give a class name of we'll give him mx auto max w screen we'll give this one as excel we'll give px of 4 sm px of 6 and large px of 8 all right now inside this we'll take a div let's take a class name so we'll give this one as container mx auto px4 all right so inside this we will take another class name sorry another div and we'll give a class name here so for large we'll take a column gap of 12 for excel we'll take a column gap of 16 we'll take a mt of 8 we'll take grid grid columns 1 gap of 12 we'll take large empty 12 for large we'll do grid calls 5 and for large we'll do a gap of 16 all right now inside this we'll take another div now here we are going to take a large column span 3 we'll take large row and one all right now inside this we'll take another div so many divs we have to take here because of the structure so for this one we'll take a large flex and we'll do a large flex uh sorry we'll make this one as item start all right so we'll take another div here inside this we'll take a class name we'll take a large order of two and we'll make a large ml of sorry ml of five all right now here we have to render the image and inside this we'll take the image now here for this image wrapper we'll take a class name we'll make this one as max w excel we'll take overflow as hidden and we'll do rounded large for this image we'll take a source source will be item dot image url and also we'll take a class name so we'll take a class name for this one to h of full w of full max w we'll do w full and also we'll do object as cover let's take a alt here so this will be product details all right let's format all of this so this is done now next step what we need to do so after this we will take another div here we'll take a class name we'll take empty of two w full we'll take a large order of one we'll take large w 32 and for large we'll make the flex shrink zero now here what we need to do we will basically render two also we have another images right two small images here so these two we are going to render so inside this we'll take another div here and we'll take a class name we'll make this one as flex flex row i'm writing little bit uh, uh, quickly so that it will not take much time item start and large flex call here inside this will take a button 
and inside this we'll take a image and for this one again the same thing we have to do we'll do copy this one from here and paste it here but for this image uh, i think max w width is not required for this button uh, we will give a type as button and also we'll use a class name here so we'll make this one as flex zero we'll do aspect square we'll do mb of three height of 20 we'll do overflow hidden we'll do rounded large we'll do border of two and we'll do a border gray 100 and i think this is fine also we'll do text center let's format this now the same structure we have to again copy here and we'll paste it here so two times we are having although these two are static but for now this is fine all right so after this we will take another div here so we have to render the name description those things so let's take a class name of large will do column span of two large will do row span two and we'll do large row and two inside this we'll take h1 tag and here we are going to render the item and and item sorry item dot name all right so for this h1 tag let's take a class name so for this one we'll do sm text to excel we'll do font as bold all right we'll do text gray 900 and also we'll take sm let's make this one as 2 excel all right and for sm i think this is not record for now this is fine all right so after this uh what we can do we can basically uh take h2 so basically if i now go back here you can see that we are having two size we have to render all the sizes but for that we don't have any functionality for now but we are going to implement those things later for now we'll just simply keep the price add to cart the delivery info here this is a static text which is cancel anytime and then the description of that product so let's do one thing let's remove this part and then we'll take another div here and we'll take a class name we'll make empty of 10 we'll do flex flex column we'll do item center we'll do justify between we'll do space y4 we'll do border t uh, we'll simply give uh, border t okay we'll do border b we'll do py of 4 we'll do sm flex row and we'll do sm space y0 all right now inside this we'll take another div we'll take a class name we'll make this one as flex we'll do items end all right so inside this we'll take h1 and we are going to render so we'll take dollar and we'll render item and and item dot price for this is one let's take a class name so what we can do we'll take text 3xl and font bold so this is fine now next thing is that what we need to do we'll take a button here and this one will be our add to cart all right so for this button we will give a type as button and also we'll give a class name here so we'll do mt of 1.5 inline block bg black px of 5 py of 3 text excess font medium tracking wide we'll do uppercase and we'll do text white that's it all right so now after this what we are going to do so here we will take a ul and here we are having class name which is mt8 space y2 
here we'll take li and we're going to render item and and item dot delivery sorry this will be delivery info okay so in this class name we'll do flex item center we'll do text left We'll do text sm font medium and text gray 600 all right and let's do one thing let's copy this and we are going to render the uh, static text so here this will be something like cancel anytime all right that's it so now after this we will take another div here i will take a class name we will make this one as large call span 3 now here what we are going to do if you see here if i now go back we are having this some kind of tab here so let's say in later we are going to add a new tab something like review so we'll add here only so that we'll be able to switch between those two so inside this what we'll do we'll take a div we'll take a class name we'll make this one as border b and border gray 3 and 400 let's take inside this we'll take a nav all right so here we'll take a class name We'll make this one as flex gap of four and inside this will take a, a and here we are having description all right so for this one we'll give a href of has and let's take a class name here also so we'll do border b2 we'll take border gray 900 we'll take py of four text sm font medium then we'll take text gray 900 uh, and i think for now this is fine all right so now what we have to do so after this we will take another div here and we're going to render item and and item dot description all right so here let's also take some class name we'll do at margin top of eight we'll do flow root and we'll do sm margin top of 12. let's format all of this uh, let's remove this one from here all right so this is fine now what we need to do if i now just go back to our page you can see that we are having product details data so this is basically this data i think let me just log and let's see what exactly we're getting i'm just give my name here just to check let's save this so we are getting here a object of data so what we have to do we'll just render here the common listing a uh, common details page that we have created and we have to pass the item so item will be this product details data and then product details data dot data let's save this let's see what we are getting all right so we are getting all of this here but something is wrong here so this structure we have to check but the data is coming so this i think we have done some wrong in the ui part so let's go to our all products and let's click on any other product let's say this one let's see all right so now this is coming fine the only difference is that this part has to be on this side so that will check so if i go here let's click on also if you see here right if i go to woman so here also if i just click here it will go to the same page see it's working fine if i refresh this also this will work this is working fine right so that's all for this particular video now in the next video i will check that what is the issue why this is coming so that we are going to fix in the next video that these parts would come on the right side so let's do that in the next video and after that only in the next video we will be start working on the add to cart functionality so whenever we we'll click on this add to cart we have to open this cart model that we have already created so the same we have to render those products here and then after that we'll be start working on the cart page so let's do those things in the next video 
Hey everyone, welcome back. So in the previous video, we have completed the details page, but there are some structural problem here. You can see that. So this is a pretty simple. What we have done wrong is that we are having this item dot name. After that, only inside this particular div, which is the right section, we have to paste all of this. We have paste all of this outside. So what we've done, we have copied all of these, the description section, delivery info section and the price section and we'll cut it from here and then simply we'll paste it after this uh, item dot name. All right, let's save this. So now you can see that this is working fine. Now another very important point you have to do, if I now go to the all products or basically the product details page, whenever the product will be in sale, we have to update this price so that is pretty simple what we can do we can go to this common listing page and then we are having this product tile now let me just close everything else here now what we can do simply here we will take two more paragraphs right and now here what we'll do we'll check if this item dot on sale if this is equal to equal to yes so we are going to render this or else this will be null the same and then we'll cut it from here and then we'll paste it here and then here what we are going to do we'll take a template literals and what we are going to do we will basically check if this item dot on sale if this is equal to equal to yes so what we are going to do we'll do a line through or else this will be empty all right and here we have to do some kind of calculation so what calculation you have to do this will be item dot price minus item dot price into what we have to basically do we have to take the item dot price drop that means how much is the price drop then we have to divide by 100 and then what we are going to do we will take all of this all right and then we will basically make this one as two fixed of two so this is one and also we'll take this one as font uh how much will take sorry you don't have to take font you have to take text red let's make this one as 700 this is fine same thing we'll take here so this will be item dot on sell if this is equal to equal to yes we are going to render this or else this will be this one so we'll cut it from here and we'll paste it here now here what we are going to do we will basically take this one something like this remove this and we'll do minus and this will be off and here we are going to render the item dot price drop that means this person is off currently if i now format all of this let's save this and let's see what we are getting so you can see that we are getting uh this is the previous price original price and this is the new price and this is minus 50% uh, off also you can give something like this percent off and something like this all right so this is fine so now you can see that we are getting all the details so this is now on sale and this will be coming for all the product the same we have to do it here also so in this part so let's do one thing let's copy the same logic from here we are going to use the same and then we will use this one in the common details page also so where we have to do this one so we are having item dot price somewhere so here and we'll paste it here all right and also we will do the same thing in this also so what we'll do we'll basically check if this uh sorry if this item dot sell is yes so this will be item dot on sell then we are going to do line through or else this will be empty now let's format all of this and let's see what we are getting so you can see that we are getting minus 50 and let's make all of this as h1 only so we'll do h1 and for this one also we'll do h1 and let's copy the same style here also so for this one we'll remove all of this and for this one also remove all of this now let's see all right so now this is breaking because we have very less space what we can do we can simply remove this part from here so we don't have to show this one we'll only show these two 
that how much is the original price and how much is the uh, new price and here what we'll do we'll give some something like for this one we'll give a mr of 2 for example let's see all right so now this is fine all right and here we have to do another thing we'll remove this space okay so now everything is done so if i now go to all products uh, let's click this product here so will be only giving uh, only getting 100 let's go to the women section and let's click this product here so we are getting the updated data here so now this is only one improvement that we need to do so now this actually complete our details page and also this listing page now we will be start working on the add to cart functionality and the cart page in the next video so let's do that in the next video hey everyone welcome back so now let's uh, start working on our cart functionality but before the the very important thing what we need to do we have to create our auth middleware so from that particular middleware we are going to know that whether the user is authenticated or not so for this one what we are going to do inside the source we'll create another uh, folder and let's give this one name as middleware all right now inside this we'll uh, check something like auth user dot js all right now here what we need to do the first thing is that we will go to any api route let's go to for example this one and let's copy our dynamic property and we'll paste it here and let's close everything else so here we'll do const auth user this will be async method so this will receive request and here what we are going to do first we are going to get the token so how we are going to get the token so this will be request dot headers dot get now if you remember in the headers whenever we are calling any authenticated api we are passing this authorization so if i now show you from here uh, let's go to our services here all right so we'll take this authorization here so that we are going to get for now we'll keep it like this and we'll check what exactly we are getting and let's log here uh, for example token all right so now let's do one thing first we are going to export this auth user so this will be export default and this will be auth user how we are going to check this one let's go to any route for example let's say add product route and here uh, what we are going to do sorry not here we have to go to the api route so here we are going to check const something is auth user all right and here we will do await and this will be auth user all right and here what we are going to do we will be passing this uh, request as a parameter now if you see here in the auth user we are logging this uh, token here so let's see what we are getting in this token so we will be basically just checking this one what is happening so here we'll give this one as is auth user and you can see that this is the add route uh, product api route but we don't want to add any uh, any product now so what we'll do is just give some wrong value here so that it will not go inside this if we just want to check what is coming in this is auth user now let's save this now uh, let's go to our admin view we'll go to add product and if i do here click add product so obviously you are getting you are not authorized but let's see what we are getting in this below you can see that we are getting bear and then this is the token and this is working fine so that means this is the token that we need to extract so here what we need to do we have to split it with space and then we have to take the first element so what we can do if this is true means this is exist so then we are going to split this one and you have to split it with space so you can see that there is a space between bearer and this token so we will uh, split with space and then we'll take the first element which is the token so this will give us the token now obviously if token is not uh, present so we are going to return false that means the user is not authenticated all right and now what we are going to do here we'll take a try block and in the catch block if there are any kind of error so we just uh, log this error and then we are going to return false and in this try block what we are going to do first we are going to import so we'll import 
JWT from JWT web token all right and here we will basically take the information so what we can do basically we can take uh, extract auth user info so we have to basically verify whether this token is true or not so we'll take avid and then here we are going to do jwt dot verify we'll pass this token and here what we have to pass we have to pass the secret key now if i now go to our login route you can see that we are having this default secret key so we'll verify with this secret key so we'll pass it here okay now here let's see what we are getting in this uh, extract auth user info so this will be extract auth user info let's save this also you can remove this avid from here this is not required so uh, we'll go to here and then we'll again trigger this one here let's see what we are getting all right and here you can see that you are getting this information here so this is the id this is the email of that user role also your you will be able to extract from here so if you are getting this information means the user is authenticated for sure and from this information you will be able to extract whether the role of that user is admin or not if the role is admin then only you want to do certain operation all right so now what you have to do so now you will be getting the extract auth user info data and now here what we can do if this is true then what we can do we can simply return this one the same okay so now this will give us uh, this info now here this here what we can do previously we are doing this one hard coded so now what we can do we can basically check here is auth user and dot role if this is equal to equal to admin then only we want to do certain operation and also uh, i can remove this one from here and let's log this is auth user and let's see what we are getting and let's log give some uh, message here so that we'll be able to understand so now let's do one thing let's click here just to understand that whether it is authenticated or not so you can see that we are getting sangam and this is the admin user so this is working fine although we haven't filled anything but i just want to check whether the middleware is working or not so that means the middleware is completed so from this middleware everywhere we will be able to check that whether the user is authenticated or not so this is one very important thing we need to do also we have to do this one in other places also so let me just remove this one and we'll check where where we are using user triple equal to admin i don't think we are using sim some other places so let me just check so we'll just copy this part from here i think in the all products also you have to check sorry not all products all products will not be authenticated anyone can check in the delete product we have to do right so here what we can do simply uh, let's do one thing i think the same we can use here the same logic that if the user is authenticated then only so directly where we can do we can simply do something like this from here first let me paste this one so we'll import the auth user and here we will check the same logic that if the user is authenticated then only they will be able to delete the product or else not so here we'll copy till this part and then in the else we will simply log something like this that you are not authenticated all right so this is one very important concept uh, sorry very important thing we need to do and i think the same we have to do it for this update product so let's do one thing let's copy it from add product only so we'll copy it from here and let's paste it here now what we can do we can copy the same thing and we'll sorry sorry we have to paste it here and here what we can do we will extract this one here and then also you have to import this from the middleware and then we are going to do the update 
feature or else not so we'll copy or cut all of this we'll paste it inside and else what we'll do we'll simply do the same thing that you are not authenticated so we'll do here that you are not authenticated all right so this is one very important features uh, important concept that we need to do all right so this is fine so now uh, we have created the middleware now let's start uh, working on the cart api routes so we have to create three api routes for cart one is add to cart one is to get all the cart items and then one will be remove from cart so let's start working on that so what we can do we'll go to our api and then here we'll create another folder let's give this one as cart and we'll create three folder here so one will be add to cart uh, one will be all cart items and second one will be delete from cart all right so now let's create our route.js now let's close everything else now the second thing what we need to do we have to basically go to our models and then here we have to create our cart models because whenever we will be creating the card we have to basically check whether the user id is present or not and second thing is that product id also you have to check whether the product id is present or not so we will create another file here and let's give this one as card.js now the first thing is that we'll import mongoose from mongoose now here what we are going to do we'll do this one as const card schema and here we'll do new mongoose.schema and here we are going to pass that user id that user id is required and this one will be type of mongoose dot schema dot types dot object id and the ref here we have to also give the ref and we are going to give this one as user then we are having the product id so we are also having the product id so we'll take this one as product id now this is also will be a type of object id and ref will be products and at the end we also need a quantity property for now we will keep it a type of number we'll do required as true and also we'll do a default value of one all right now next what we need to do here we will also pass a timestamp and make this one as true so this is done so we'll do const card will be equal to mongoose dot models dot card or this will be mongoose dot model of card and we'll pass the card schema and at the end we have to do export default card so this is all about the model we need so we are passing user id product id that which product we are currently adding and then the quantity for now we'll keep this on the default as one now next what we need to do we have to start working on the api routes so let's go to our route so we'll start with this add to cart first we'll go to any other route for example let's copy this property from here and we'll paste it here now this one whenever we'll be adding a new product to cart this will be async method so this will be export async function and this will be a post method definitely because you have to add or save the products into uh, database here we'll do try and in the catch we'll do the same thing so for now we'll do log error and uh, let's copy from here only because we don't want to write the same thing again and again so we'll simply copy this part from here and we'll paste it here that something went wrong all right so here we have to do await connect to db this is the first step now next step what we need to do we have to check whether the user is authenticated or not and that we already done so you have to do is auth user and this will be equal to await auth user and we'll be getting this request now here you don't have to check whether the user is admin user or not now this is very important because whenever you will be adding a product to cart you don't have to be admin user any user can add a product to a cart so what we need to check whether this user is exist or not 
so simply we can check if this is auth user is true that means the user is authenticated else he is not authenticated so we'll copy this and we'll paste it here and we'll show something like that you are not authenticated so if this user is authenticated what we need to do we'll do const data so this will be called avid request dot json and then here what we need to do we are going to extract the product id and also you have to extract the user id that will be receiving from our front end from data all right and now what we need to do we also have to create a add to cart schema so this will be add to cart schema validation this is for the schema validation so for this one we'll do joy dot object and here we are going to pass the user id so this will be joy dot string and this has to be a required property same way to do it for product id and this is has to be joy dot string dot required all right now here what we need to do next we have to check that if this schema is valid or not and this we have already done multiple times so const error and this will be add to cart dot validate and this will be basically to pass this user id and the product id if there are some kind of error so we'll return the response so we'll copy this and we'll paste it here and here we are going to basically uh, render the error dot details of zero and i think we have to take the message also all right so this is the validation error item dot message if there are no error that means you have to now find the product so we will basically do const is current cart item already exists so that means the product we are adding if that is already exist or not if that is the case you can't we will not be able to add the same product again right so this is another thing we have to check so we are going to do avid and this will be cart model that we have created dot find so we are going to find based on what we have to find based on the product id so we'll pass this product id as this product id and also we are going to pass the user id for that particular user as this user id if this product is already exist that means you will not be able to add the same product again so it'll show some message like this product is already in cart all right so product is already added in cart now uh, let's do something like please add a different product all right if this is also not the case that means now you will be able to save the product so this will be const save product to cart and this will be equal to avid you have to do cart dot create and we'll pass that data all right and then we'll do if this save product to cart if this is true that means you have already successfully added this one so this will be product is added to cart something like product is added to cart else we'll show some message like that failed to add the product please try again so this will be something like failed to add the product to cart please try again all right there are so many condition we need to check i think this is now fine also let's save this also another thing we have to check that is very important that we have made some changes right so we have to check that whether this admin functionality is working or not so let's do one thing let's go to our manage all products and let's uh, try to update this product here so we'll click here all right so this is another very important point. you see that when i'm trying to update it's going to the details page and i think this also i noticed so for this one what fix we need to do uh, we have to go to the common listing page and here if you see we have given this click on this article so instead of this article you have to give the click on this product tile so i'm going to cut it from here and let's save this 
let's go to our product tile and we have to give it here instead of there and also let's import const router equal to use router now this should work so now let's go back so refresh this page so now let's say I'm trying to update this product so it's going here let's give a price of 120 and let's see if this is working or not so I'll update this product product updated successfully so now this is 120 the 48 and this is working fine all right so now what we need to do we have created our add to cart uh, route so now we have to create the services file but before that let's do one thing let's in one go we will create all the other routes that is required for this cart page so we also need to get all the cart items and all the delete so once we'll create both then we'll be going to create the services file all right so let's start with to get all the cart items all right so here uh, let's go to this route I'll close everything else we'll create our route.js and here we'll copy the dynamic property we'll paste it here so this will be a get method and this will receive the request now here the first thing is that we'll do try and catch as usual now here we'll do await connect to db all right and also here what we need to check if the user is authenticated or not the reason is you will be able to see your cart if you are uh, logged in in your uh, in your application so here we're going to copy this one and then we'll paste it here so if this is a is auth user then only it will do or else you are not authenticated so let's copy this one from here and these things you will understand that why i'm not rewriting because this will only increase the time so we can simply copy this and paste it here and here also we'll paste it and for this one we'll source like something went wrong please try again all right so if this is a auth user then what we are going to do we'll first do const search params this will be equal to new url and we have to do request dot url all right now here we'll do const id this will be equal to search params dot get and this will be id if there are no id so we'll simply return next response dot json we'll return a success of false and we will show something like message sorry we have to show message that please log in something like this all right now here what you have to do now first you have to basically check that or basically you have to extract the cart items so we'll do const extract all cart items and this will be avid cart dot find and now based on what you have to find we have to find user id which will be this id so for this particular user we are finding so that will be receiving this id all right now what we want to do we want to populate here so we want to populate this user id and also you want to populate the product id okay and this will be the product id and now we'll do if extract all cart items is true that means this is successful so we'll copy this paste it here success will be true and this data we have to pass here so let's pass this one as data which will be this extract all cart items else what i have to do we will copy this one from here let's copy from here and we'll pass a success false we'll pass a status of 204 and we'll pass something like no cart items are found 
all right so this is all about the get all cart items route okay now next at the end we have to do the delete form cart and also let's complete this one in this video then in the next video we'll be start working on the services so let's make this one as route.js first let's copy our dynamic property from here now for this remove from cart this will be a delete method so we have to do export async function delete this will also receive the request and again the same process and i i will also suggest that uh, sometime instead of following the same thing you can also try to write these things by your own because if you notice that these concepts we have done multiple times now in this point you will be able to create any kind of request whether this is a get put post and delete all right and if you do it by yourself also it will give you good hands-on experience and believe me these all are the projects that we are creating these all are industry level projects all right although this is a dummy project you may argue with me that some of the functionality will not follow in a large scale project but most of the times you will work on these similar kind of things and i'm i'm telling this one from my own experience all right so now let's take a try and we'll take a catch we'll take an error and we will return this one same thing the first thing is that we have to do avid connect to db and also you have to check the authenticated user so we'll do is auth user this will be equal to auth user of this request if this is auth user is true that means the user is authenticated else we will show the same thing that you are not authenticated so here you are not authenticated all right so if this is authenticated again the same thing so we'll do const search params equal to new url and this will be request dot url now here we are going to get the id which will be equal to search params dot get this will be id and again the same thing if you noticed if the id is not present so we'll copy this one from here so we'll we'll basically we'll show that instead of please login we have to show because this is while deleting so we have to show that cart item id is required all right if this is not the case then we'll go to the next step which is const delete cart item this will be equal to avid cart dot find sorry we have to do find by id and delete and here what we need to do we are going to pass this id and here we'll do if this delete cart item is true that means the deletion is successful else will show something like failed to delete so we'll copy from here we'll paste it in both the places for this one this will be true and we'll do cart item deleted successfully all right and here we'll do failed to delete cart item please try again awesome so now we have created all the three routes that are required for this cart page in the next video we will be creating all the services and in the from the next video only we have to start working on this delete so first we'll go to the client view let's go to our all products so first we have to start with this add to cart so we'll click here once we'll click here we have to open this model if you remember on the right side if i show you here let's go to all products first let's log in and then if i add here you see product is already in but we are getting this uh, model so this you have to basically do then we have to working on this remove functionality from here and also to get all the products and after that only we will be start working on this add uh, cart page all right so there are a lot of things we need to do so this or this page and this add to cart functionality we are going to start working from the next video so that's all for this video see you in my next video till then good luck and peace
hey everyone and welcome back so in the previous video we have created all the routes for our cart function right now in this video we are going to create the services and also you have to integrate with our front end but if you remember in the previous video i mentioned that there is a spelling mistake so here in this model instead of this product id p caps you have to make this one as small so this is one minor correction we have to do all right now let's uh, i have to run this so let me just do npm run dev all right now next thing what we are going to do we will be start working on the services so the for this one uh, what we can do we can go to services and then we'll create another folder here and let's give this uh, give the name as cart and here we're going to do index.js all right so basically here we have to create uh, three services add to cart get all cart items and also delete from cart so let's start with the first one so you have to do export const we'll do add to cart and this one will do async this will receive form data and now here we'll do try and in the catch block we'll just log here error so here we'll do const response this will be await fetch and here we have to go to api slash so let me just go here api slash we are having cart slash add to cart all right and then we are going to do this one as a method this will be a post method and here we are going to pass headers so we will do content type as application slash json and also have to pass the authorization so let's do authorization and for this one we will do this one as bearer and we have to pass the cookies dot get and we have to pass the token for authenticated user next we have to pass body and this will be json dot stringify will pass this form data that's it so this is about our first and at the end we'll do const data equal to avid race dot json and we are going to return the data here now let's create two more so one will be export const get all cart items again this will be async method now we'll create another one so let's copy this and we'll do this one delete from cart now for this get all we have to get the id so we'll get the id here i will do try here we'll do catch and we we'll just log the error here now here we'll do const response this will be equal to await fetch and you have to go to slash api slash cart and then you can see that all cart items slash all cart items all right now for this one we'll do method this will be a get method and also you have to pass the headers so for this one let's copy the headers from here only and we'll paste it here we don't need this content type now we'll do const data equal to await race dot json and at the end we are going to return the data also another thing we need to do here we have to pass this id so let's take this one as template literals and here what we are going to do we'll make this one as id which will be equal to this id all right now let's format and save this next delete from card now see for delete from card it will be exactly same like this so instead of rewriting we can just copy from here so you can copy this part from here and we'll paste it here the only difference is that this will also receive the id because whenever we will be deleting something we have to get the id of that product that we want to delete and here instead of all cart items you have to make this one as delete from cart so this will be delete from cart this one method will be delete and this is done so now let's format all of this let's save this and now next thing what we need to do we have to integrate this one with our ui 
now for this one the first thing what we are going to do we will be start doing uh, the add to cut functionality so let's go to our components first so we'll go to components then we are having common listing page and here you can see that we are having product buttons now here what we need to do you can see that we are having this uh, add to cut button correct so here we can give some on click method so let's give on click and let's make this one as handle uh, add to cart and we'll pass this item all right now let's go here now for this one we will do async method so this will function handle add to cart we'll get the item here so this will be get item now here let's see what we are getting so first we'll do const response equal to avid now this will be add to cart from services and here what we need to pass we have to pass if i you know go here you can see that we have to pass the user id and also have to pass the product id so these two things we have to pass so what we can do we can simply take a object here and here we'll do product id and this product id will be basically this get item of id so this is the current item so we'll do get item dot id and then we have to also pass the user id and this user id will be user dot id now this user we are going to take from our global context and then here we'll just pass this user dot id all right now this will call the add to cart functionality now let's log here and let's see what we are getting in this response so let's save all of this let's go back let's open local host 3000 all right now let's go to our uh, all products page all right so currently we are in the all products page let's open our console now let's do one thing let's click on this first product we'll do add to cart let's see what we are getting product is added to cart this is true and this is done if i try to add the same product again product is already in a cart you can see that this product we have already added awesome so now this is working fine so now what are the things we have to do here the first thing is that when we will be adding this product in the cart we have to show some kind of loader here that we have done previously next thing is that once this is successful we have to open this cart model and then we have to show all the cart products here so this is two things we have to do so first uh, let's start with this add to cart functionality all right so we'll go here and then the first thing what we can do we can do basically this set component label loader and for this one what we are going to do will make the loading as true and also next we'll take id and this one will be this get item dot id now here we can check if this race dot success if this is true that means the product is added successfully so we can take this toast message from here we'll pass it here that product is added successfully all right else we'll do the same thing only this will be error all right so this is done now also another thing uh, i think we have already imported the notification component here so this is fine so now first let's see if this is working or not if the toast message is showing or not so we'll go here let's try to add this product here let's see so product is already in cart this is coming if i try to add this one product is added to cart awesome so now this is working fine now next thing what we need to do we have to make this loader as false again so we'll copy this we'll paste it here in both the places make the loading as false and we'll make this id as empty again all right so this is done now next thing also we have to open the model here but that we are going to do but before that let's do one thing here we can check the same thing that we have done for this one so we'll basically check if this component level loader and then component level loader dot loading if this is true so in that case we can basically uh, load this component level loader also you have to check this current id so here also we'll check and end this component label loader dot id this equal to equal to this item dot id so if this is true we'll show here component level loader or else this will be add to cut all right now here this will be add to cut 
now here we are we will pass the same properties here so we'll copy from here and let's pass here instead of deleting product we will we will be doing something like adding to cart let's see let's save this now we'll go back so you can see that we are getting adding to cart let me refresh this page once because we have to make this one as false again so let me just check see we are making this one as true so we have to make this one as false that is the reason all right so now let's see if i do here here you can see that it's working fine if i try to add this one this is also added to cart so these three items we have added to cart now what we have to do we have to open this cart here so for this one if i now go to our context you will see that we are having a uh, state here uh, let me just check whether we are having or we have to create all right we have to create here so we'll create another state here and this one will we are going to do cart model and set cart model uh, let's make this one a set so cart model and this one we are going to do as so cart model and this one we are going to do this one as use state of false then we'll pass both in our context let's format this now we'll go to our product buttons and here we are going to take it from here and this set so cart model this one we are going to do as uh, true when this add to cart will be uh, successful so we'll make this one as true here for this one we will don't show any or what we can do we can make this one as true also because we have to so that this product is also added all right so this is done now next thing what we are going to do we have to basically start working on this particular component and that is the cart model so let's start working on that all right so let's do one thing let's uh, create another folder here inside components and we'll uh, we'll mark this one as for example cart model now let's create our index.js and this will be export default function cart model and here we are going to return so what we have to return you remember we have created this common model so this component we have to return so we'll return common model and here we have to pass quite a few props all right so the first thing is that we have to pass so buttons this will be true and this i'm why not explaining again because this we have already discussed while working with this navbar component if you remember we use the same component there so we are going to show buttons here and then you have to pass a button component that what are the buttons that you want to render all right so for this one we will take a fragment now here inside this fragment we will take a button and the first button we are going to do this one as go to cart so this is one button and then we'll copy this then we'll paste it here and we're going to make this one as checkout so there will be two button one is go to cart and checkout we are going to do it style uh, styling in a minute but for now this is fine just to show you whether this is rendering or not next we have to pass the main content so this is all about the buttons we need so for main content what we need to do we have to render the cart items cart items means all the cart items that we need to basically fetch for that particular user and for this one we already created this get all cart items this one so this api also you have to do so what we can do we can simply call the api here in this particular component also we have to make this one as a client components will make this one as use although we can definitely make this one as a server component but for now this is fine because we are doing the on click functionality and those things here so it, is, it will be better if we do this one as a client component so that each and everything we can do here also because we also have to do the delete functionality for this particular component so we are having two uh, button here this is fine now next thing what we need to do we can basically go to this uh, navbar component so we are having these components and then we are having navbar here and now what we can do simply we can first uh, log uh, get this so cart model flag so if i now show you this is the one so if i so first i'll get here 
and then what we are going to do we will basically check here in this component that let's say if this is true then only i want to render this cart model all right so this is one thing now let's format this first let's see what is happening whether there there will be definitely some issues but let's first check all right so let's go back and then let's try to add this one this product is already added and you can see that we are getting a uh, error and that is transition is missing a so prop so you have to pass a so prop here so all right so this so prop we have to pass here so let's copy this two and then we can go to our cart model and then these two we have to pass here so we'll copy this and this one we can simply take it from here so this will be uh, let's go to our context so cart model and set so cart model these two we have to basically take so we'll copy this one and this will be equal to use context of global context and to show this so cart model we have to pass this one if this is true then only you show or else not so this is now fine now let's save this uh, let's see what is happening all right so this is fine now let's try to add this product here all right so now you can see that we are getting all of this and here we are getting the button and this is opening here all right so this is fine if i try to add this one this is also added but it is working fine now what we need to do in this particular page we have to basically call the api and then to, we have to basically get the list of cart items and the same we have to render here that we are going to do in the next video now once that is done what we need to do we have to basically click on this button and then you have to go to the cart page now in the cart page also you have to do the same functionality you have to get the list of products and then also you have to do the uh, delete functionality and those things so let's do those two functionality in the next video all right everyone so welcome back so now in this video what we are going to do we will be basically calling that particular api to get the list of cart items and then we are going to render in the cart model so for this one uh, in this cart model component we can create a uh, method here so let's say async function get or let's make this one as extract all cart items and let's do const response this will be await fetch and then you have to go to slash api slash cart and then uh, let's go here and let's see we are having all cart items sorry sorry we are doing wrong i think i we have already written services for that uh, sorry so you just have to call this get all cart items now here what you have to pass you have to pass the id now this id is basically this user id that we are going to extract from our context so we'll do user dot id right now let's log here this response now we have to call this one on page load so we are going to take use effect and then here uh, we are going to keep this user as a dependency so we have to basically check if this user is not equal to equal to null then only i want to extract these cart items now let's do one thing let's quickly check in our all cart items what we have written so you can see that we are basically checking if that um, id is present id is basically the user id so we're going to do cart.find so we'll basically find all the cart items then we want to populate the user id which is basically the user information and the product information so this product id is basically this reference products so you can see that what it will do based on that particular id it will render the details of that particular product product so here uh, let's do one thing because we are already storing this um, user information in the context so what we can do we can remove this user id part we don't want to populate so we will only populate this product part let's format this and then if this is true then sorry you have to make this one as return so you are going to return the true and then the data will be this all cart items that is available for that particular user all right now i think this looks fine now let's see what we are getting in this response so we'll go here let's go to our inspect and what i'll do right i'll just try to add this product although this product is already added in the cart so let's add this one let's see what we are getting 
and you can see that awesome so you can see that we are getting success true and data files so we are having five products and if i expand you can see here you are able to see this product id this product id although the name i have given this one as a product id what i will suggest you can also make this one some different like for example product information or something else it's up to you this product id will hold the product information for this particular product you can see that we are having the name category and all the other things so now this is very simple what we can do whenever we'll get the list here so this data we can map it and then we'll get the information and the same we have to render here i hope you're getting so now what we have to do so this we are getting so what we can do we can go to our global context so let's go to our global context and here we will create another state here and this will be our cart items set cart items and this will be used state of empty array we'll copy this and then we are going to pass it in our context now next we'll go to our cart model and then we we'll extract this one from our context and then we can basically simply check if this race dot success if this is true so we'll make this set cart items as this race dot data all right now this is fine and now what we are going to do also we have to do another thing we are going to do this local storage dot set item we are going to store this one in our local storage let's give this one as cart items because this information is very much important this will be useful in the checkout page when we'll be start working on this one so that is the reason whatever cart items we are having we are going to store those cart items for that particular user in the local storage and this one we have to do this one as json and this will be dot stringify and we are going to pass this race dot data so now what will happen we are getting all the list items here now we can basically create our content in the model that we have to pass all right so let's start with this main content that we have to render so let's after this we are going to do main content now this will be what we are going to check we are going to check if this cart items and and cart items dot length if this is true then then only we want to render or something like we can show some other message that we are going to show like your cart is empty for now i'll keep this one as null now here what i'm going to do i'm going to do this one as we take some evil and here let's give a role here role equal to list and we'll give a class name my of six we'll do divide y then we are going to do divide gray 200 let's make this one as 300 all right so this is our evil now here we are going to do cart items dot map so this will give us item and here we are going to render ali the first thing is that we'll do key so key will be our let's give this one as product instead of uh, or what we can give we can give this one as cart item instead of product so this will be our cart item dot id and we'll give a class name so class name we're going to flex and py of six all right now inside this we are going to take a div now let's take a class name for this div we'll take height of 24 width of 24 we're going to give flex shrink zero we'll do overflow hidden we'll do rounded md We'll do border and border gray 200 all right now inside of this we are going to take a image now here we are going to take a source so source will be our this cart item dot so we are we'll, we will basically check if this cart item and then cart item dot product id now remember this product id is basically the product information i've given name as product id you can give whatever you want it's up to you and this will be and and cart item dot product id dot image url all right so let me just show you here what is basically we are doing so i'll just uh comment out this part for now or else it will give us error I think it will not give us a let's see what is happening let's save this i just want to show you so let's see if i try to add this one here so all right so you can see that we are getting all the product right here see this is basically this 
ID and then we are having product ID and then we are having this image URL. So this is what we are rendering here. All right, this is fine. So this is all about the image and also let's give a alt here. So this will be our cart item. That's it. Let's give a class name here. We're going to H full W full. We'll do object as cover and we're going to do object as uh, I think we have already given let's give the object uh, center also this is fine all right so now next we are going to take another div let's take a class name so we'll do a ml of four flex flex one and flex column all right now here we'll take another div inside this we'll take another div and we'll be having a h3 here now before h3 for this div we are going to take a class name so we'll do flex justify between we'll do text base we'll do font medium and we'll do text gray 900 all right now let's take it uh, inside this what we can do we can take a anchor and here what we can do we can basically render this cart item so let's copy this from here and we can paste it here instead of image url we are going to render the name all right so this is fine so this is all about the name now next thing is that what we have to do so let's take after this h3 we are going to take a paragraph and we will basically render uh the price so the price we will get let me just check here the property name so we'll do add here so let's go to our data and we are having product id and then we are having the price so what we can do we can simply copy the same thing from here and we'll paste it here let's make this one as uh price all right now next what we can do we also have to uh, I think we have done it in the wrong place let's make this one as outside so after this h3 and then we are having div here we are going to render this one and also here what we can do we can give something like this dollar let's give a class name so for this one we'll do empty of one we'll do text small and then we'll do text gray 500 600 let's make all right and <clears throat> sorry after this after this paragraph we are going to take another div here and let's make a class name so we'll do flex flex one we'll do items end justify between and text sm here what we're going to do we'll take a button now this will be the remove button so we'll do this one as uh, remove for this button we are going to take a type of button and let's take a class name here so we are going to do font as medium for this one and what else we'll do a text yellow 600 and do sm order 2 all right i think this is fine let's format all of this let's save it awesome so you can see that it's looking good and it is fine so now what we have to do we have to also uh, design this cart and checkout button so for this one let's go to our code and then let's add some more uh, style here so for this button for this add to cart let's add this one class name we'll take we'll do a empty of 1.5 we'll do a w full we'll do inline block bg as black we'll do text as white we'll do px of 5 py of 3 then we'll do text excess font we'll do medium we'll do uppercase and we'll do tracking wide i think the same we have used multiple places same class will copy and we'll paste it for the checkout also and both we have to give the type as button so this one also will be type as button all right now here one very very important point is that 
let's format it in this checkout we have to give a disabled property so when this will be disabled when you don't have any cart items so that means if the cart items and and cart items dot length if this is zero that means you can't go to the checkout so for this checkout let's add some disable property so how we are going to add this one will take disable will make opacity as 50 done now let's format all of this and let's save it let's see what we are getting awesome so you can see that we are getting go to cart and checkout now if you want you can give another also something like this continue shopping or let's add this one also this is looking good so continue shopping means on click of that we will go to the all products page something like that so for this one what we can do we can take another div here after this and for this one we will take a class name and we will do empty of 6 we will do flex we will do justify center we will do text center we will do text sm and we will do text gray uh, let's make this one as 600 all right now inside this we will take another button and we'll do this one as continue shopping let's take a type as button and what else we'll do a class name here we are going to make font as medium and we'll do text gray let's format this and let's see what we are getting all right so this is fine now also if you want we can give this one i think we for this one we'll take a span here and we are going to make the area hidden sorry area hidden as true and here you have to pass this uh content all right now let's save it let's see all right so you can see that it's fine so now this is done now what else you have to do we can give also some here something like this okay so this is done and also you're getting the list now the main thing is that you have to start working on this remove functionality now this remove we will be doing in this particular component only so we are having this remove button so the first thing is that let's take on click here so we'll do on click and what we are going to do we have to do something like this so we'll do handle delete cart item and we are going to pass this cart item as a argument let's go here and then what we can do uh, let's do like here async function handle delete cart item do get cart item all right for delete i think we already have created the uh, sorry we already created the services so if i now go here let me just show you one thing so let's add this one here product is already in cart so we are getting data and then here you see we are having this id so this id basically we have to use now obviously if you want you can directly pass this id as an argument but for now I, I i'm passing the whole content so what i'm trying to mean is basically so if i go here you can see that we are uh, passing this uh, where is that cart item let's make this one only pass the id only here so here we'll do get cart item uh, id all right so this is fine now what we're going to do the first thing is that we have to do this one so let's go to our uh, where is that we will go to product and then we'll copy this level component level loader so this we are going to copy and then this one we will use this context then we'll do set component level loader the first thing is that we have to make the loading as true and id as will be this get cart item id this is the first step now what we are going to do we are going to call the api so we'll do await and this will be delete delete from cart right and then we'll pass this get cart item id done now once this is done that means we'll get the response back so we have to do if uh, res dot success is true so the first thing is that we'll make this one as false and also id will be empty 
same we have to do here else i think this we have done multiple times this will be also false now next thing we have to show the toast so we'll do toast dot success and here we're going to pass the race dot message right and then we have to pass the position here so position will be toast dot position dot top right and then let's copy this and we'll paste it here this one will be error so this is done now next one very very important point and that is once the delete is successful we have to get the list of updated uh, products how we are going to do that you can see that we are already calling this extract all cart items so you can simply call this method here so this will be extract all cart items so this will basically uh, call the api data again so i think this is done now next thing what we can do we can save it and then go to this remove and then do the same thing again so we'll do component level loader and then component level loader dot loading true and then component level loader dot id if this is equal to equal to this cart item dot id so we are going to show that component level loader orders this will be remove now here what you have to pass will copy from here only instead of rewriting the same thing again we'll copy the same thing text color and the loading state and we'll pass it here and instead of adding to cart we have to do removing from cart or let's make this one as only removing that's it now let's save all of this and let's see what we are getting so the first thing is that uh, let's close it and you can see that we are having one two three four five now let's add this product here so we'll do add product is added to cart this is coming here let's try to remove this one and see awesome see now this is deleted successfully and you are getting the remove back also if you notice one thing is that i know this is uh, we have to given white we have to give here black so that is the reason you're not able to see that how it should work so let's uh, let's try to add this one here so this is added now let's try to remove all right this is removed this is also getting removed removed now let's see if i remove this one then this should be disabled this is disabled awesome job also this is it, you'll notice that why this is not disable now obviously this is a card page so they will be able to go from here and in the card page will show something like you don't have any products added so please add products to cart so that is the reason go to cart is not uh, disabled all right so this is working fine let's try to add this one here and you can see that this is added here so that means we have completed the main cart functionality the same thing now we have to basically uh, create in the uh, cart page so if i go to this cart page so this this we have to basically uh, this we have to start working on the next video at the end this all are the same functionality we you can use the same component but we will create a different component because of ui but the functionality wise it will be exactly same so we don't rewrite most of the things so we can use the reuse the same things whatever we have written in this particular video and after that what you have to do i think we have already discussed we will be start working on this account functionality because you have to add those shipping addresses and those things because those shipping addresses you have to render in the checkout page so once this account is done then only will be moving to the checkout page so let's do those things in the next video hey everyone and welcome back so now in this video what we are going to do we will be start working on the cart page now in the previous video we have uh, almost completed the cart functionality the same functionality we have to replicate so if you see here on click of this add to cart we are opening this model and then this uh whatever products that we have added we are showing in this model now what we need to do in this cart page we have to do the same functionality only the ui will be different so for this one whatever functionality we have done the same functionality we are going to use instead of rewriting those in this particular page because at the end each and every functionality like uh, add to cart and get all products in the cart and also the remove from cart all will be exactly same all right so the first thing what we need to do we have to create our cart page so for this one let's go to our app and then here i'm going to create another folder and let's give this one name as cart so here i'm going to create page.js now let's make this one as a client component 
so this will be export default function and let's give this one as a card now here what i'm going to do all the api call and everything we are going to do uh, in this particular component and then just like we have created the common listing page and common details page we are going to create another component uh, inside this components folder and then we are going to pass data from this component to that component all right so uh, for now let's return here div and this will be our cart page all right now here let's save this now what i'm going to do let's start working on that uh, sub component that we are going to create inside the components folder all right so now here what we are going to do we will be creating another folder inside of this and let's give this one name as common cart now let's create index.js now this will be a client component so we are going to do use client and this will be export default function common cart now if you want you can give another name here it's up to you now here what we are going to do we will be creating the main structure so let's do one thing uh, let's create the structure here so we are going to return a section and then um, here let's give a class name so we are going to give a class name of h screen we will give a bg gray hundred inside this we will take a div here uh, let's give a class name for this one. We will give mx auto px4 and we'll give sm px6 large px8. All right, now inside this, we'll take another div. We are going to give a class name for this one. We will take mx auto mt of 8. We will give max w screen excel. We will use a px of four and then we are going to use the same so for sm and for large we will use the same padding that's it now here let's take another div let's give a class name so you give bg of white and let's give a shadow here all right now here we'll take another div inside of this let's give a class name so we'll give px of four py of six sm px of 8 and smpy of 10 all right now here we'll take another div we'll give a class name of flow root and now inside of this we are going to basically render all the cart items now obviously these cart items we are going to receive as a prop from the parent component so from the server component so we'll receive this one as a cart item all right so this one so we can by default this will be a, a empty array all right so here we can basically check if this cart items and and cart items dot length if this is true or else for now we'll give this one as null later we'll change it so we just have to do cart items dot map we'll get the cart item all right now here we will return a ul sorry uh what we can do yeah let's take i uh, let's take evil only now inside this or i think uh, what we can do right uh instead of doing the map here we will take a evil outside and then inside this we can map it so this will be cart items dot map so this is fine now this evil we are going to take a class name now here we'll map this one so we'll take cart item and we are going to return a li now the first thing we have to do to take a key so we are going to take this cart item dot id as a key all right now for this li we are going to take some class name so let's take a flex sorry flex column flex space y3 py of 6 we'll take text left we'll take sm flex row we'll do sm space x of 5 and we do sm space y of 0 all right now inside this li we are going to take a div so for this one we are going to take a class name and we are going to make this one as shrink of 0 here inside this we are going to take the image of that particular product so we'll take a source so source i think we have already done that will be this cart item and then cart item dot product id remember we have used this product id as a property 
and then cart item dot product id dot image url that's it let's take alt here so alt we are going to give this one as product image also you are going to take a uh, class name so we'll take a class name here we'll do h of 24 w of 24 we'll do max w full we'll do rounded lg and we'll do object as cover that's it so now what we are going to do we will be rendering all the uh, name and the prices so for this one we'll take a div here so let's take a class name of flex flex one we'll do flex column and we'll do justify between all right inside this we'll take another div we're going to take a class name so we'll do sm column gap of five sm grid and we'll do sm grid column two that's it now inside this we'll take another div we'll take a class name of pr of 8 and sm pr of 4 <clears throat> now we're going to take a paragraph and here we are going to render the name so we can copy the same thing from here and instead of image url we are going to do this one as a name for this p we are going to take a class name so we can take like text base font semi bold and also we'll take text gray uh, how much we can take like 900 let's format this all right so after this div we'll take another div here inside this we'll take paragraph and we're going to render the price so we'll copy the same thing and we'll just render the price here so this will be product id of price so for this we will take a class name so for this one you're going to do shrink of zero do w of 20 do text base font semi bold we'll do text gray 900 let's make this one as 950 we'll do sm order of one We'll do sm ml of 8 and sm text sorry to we'll do sm text right all right for this div the main wrapper we'll take empty of 4 we'll do flex gap of 3 we'll do items end justify between and then we'll do sm empty of 0 sm items start and for this one sm we are going to do justify end right so after this we are going to take a button here and this will be our remove button for this one we will take a type of button and we'll take a class name here so class name will do font medium text yellow 700 and sm order 2 that's it all right i think this is all about the main structure we need now next thing what we have to do so after this div and after ul and div this now for uh, this particular div what we're going to do we'll take another div here and we'll give a class name here we'll do a empty of six border t and border b and py of two all right now inside this we'll take another div We'll take a class name we'll do flex items center and we'll do justify as uh, between here now inside this we'll take a p here and we're going to give this one as subtotal and also for this particular uh, this subtotal text we're going to give a text of uh, small and we'll do text gray 400 and also i think for now this is fine all right and after this we have to render the subtotal so we'll take another paragraph here uh, let's give a class name so we can give text of large for this one and then we can use the same one here the text gray 400 and let's give a font <coughs> semi bold now here what we are going to do uh, we will take a dollar and then we will basically check if this cart items and and cart items 
dot length if this is true or else this will be zero then we are going to just do cart items dot reduce all right then we are going to take total comma item here and now we can simply take this item dot product id dot price all right then plus total and here we can simply pass zero as the initial value now next thing what we have to do basically we have to also render a shipping component shipping component that if you want to render for example in our case we don't have any shipping calculation for now so what we are going to do is just simply render the shipping as a uh, shipping is free so something like that so what we can do we can simply copy the same thing from here in this same structure and instead of subtotal we are going to make this one as shipping and we are going to make this one as zero dollar something like this all right that's it now next uh, what we need to do we also have to render the uh, we also have to render the total price now if you see the total price will be basically the same as this structure because the shipping there is no calculation so what we can do we can simply the copy the same thing from here and again paste the same thing and in this case we are going to show exactly that and just we will make this one as total that's it now at the end what we are going to do we'll render another uh, div here and inside this for this one we'll take a some margin top so margin top of five text center and then we're going to take a button and let's make this one as checkout now here let's give a class name so we are going to use this group inline flex we'll do w as full we'll do item center we'll do justify center bg of black then we are going to do px of 6 i think this we have done multiple times py of 4 text of large text white and then we are going to do font medium we will do uppercase and tracking white for now this is fine all right now let's format and save all of this all right so now what we can do is just have to simply uh, get the list of cart items in this particular page and then we are going to call this component and then we will pass the data as simple as that so here now i already told you that this is basically the same uh, functionality we are going to repeat so instead of rewriting all the things again and again i'm going to do this one i'm going to copy this one from that common listing page and uh, we'll use the same here all right so now i hope you will also understand because this will obviously saves a lot of time so we can go to our common listing page and let's go to our product button and now here i think we are having uh sorry not here we have to go to cart model so here we are having this extract all cart items so i'm going to copy this part from here and then we are going to paste it here now the first thing is that we have to import this get all cart items and also we need to get this user from use context of global context also we have to get this set cart items all right and then you have to also get the cart items from the context now these cart items is at the end we have to copy sorry you have to get this common cart and we are going to pass the cart items as these cart items from the state all right we also have to import this use effect here and i think for now this is fine let's see first what exactly is happening so let me just save this and now let's go back let's go to slash cart page alright so you can see that we are getting the data here this is fine we are getting remove and these things the only difference is that uh, there are some uh, styling issue here so let me just uh, check that one so we can go to our common card and then we are having this here we can use this uh, bg black sorry we can use this text black alright and the same we can use here also here and for this 
sorry i think we have given in the wrong place so here we are going to use the text gray 400 only for the value we are going to use this text black so the same we'll use here also for this one and also for this one now let's save this all right now all right so now this is fine now here another thing you will notice if i don't refresh this so we have to show some kind of loader now for this one we have already a common loader so if i now go to this context and you'll see that we are having this page level loader now this page level loader we have to show here why we are not showing component level loader because obviously this is very simple this is not a component level this will be on the whole page level so you have to show this one on the page level so what we can do we can simply copy this and then go to our common cart and then uh, what we can do sorry not here we can go here just paste it here now before we are calling the api i will just going to make this set page level loader as true and once we'll get the data we'll make this one as false again all right and here what we are going to do you can check if this page level loader is true so we are going to return let me check the component name so the component name is loader and then we are having i think uh, let me see where we are using this one in other places or not page level loader so all right so we are not using this one anywhere what we can do we can simply return the same component that we have used let me just check so you can go to this component level loader and then we can copy this one all right and then we can basically return this one here this pulse loader so we are going to import this one from react spinner now the size what we are going to do we are going to make this one as uh, 50 and loading will be this page level loader all right and color we are going to make this one as black now let's see what is happening let's save this all right so now you can see it's happening and 50 is too big let's make this one as 30 and also what we can do we can simply make this one in the middle so you can cut it from here so we'll take this one as div paste it here let's make uh let's take a class name so we'll do w full uh we'll do height full and what we can do we can also give this one as yeah i think height full is fine do flex justify center and item center let's see what is happening or else i think we have to give some mean height right that is also correct because if i refresh this page you can see that also if you notice when i refresh first time we are getting this one the reason is because this page level loader will be false first time so this we can easily fix we can go to our context and then we can simply make this page level loader as true and now i think this would work now let's save this see now this is fine so if i now refresh this this is correct but we have to make this one as uh make this one as uh center so let's go to our cart page and here instead of this height full we can make this one as mean height and we can make this one as screen this will work now let's see let's cut it from here let's save it all right awesome now you can see that it's coming on the middle if i click here we're working fine now we have to work on the remove functionality so for this one what we can do we can simply copy the same thing from here so let's go to our where is the page so you have to go to our uh, cart model and then we are going to copy this handle delete cart item and then we are going to use the same here so let's paste it here all right and the set component level loader we are going to import from our context and this will be our component level loader this is fine so now what we are going to do uh, we can simply pass this handle delete item as a prop so we are passing handle sorry delete cart item now we can go to this common card so we'll receive this one as a prop here this method and then we are having this remove here so here what we can do we can simply take on click and then you can call, call this and then we can pass this cart item dot id as a argument 
so that means uh, this id we are passing in this handle cart item as argument the same we will be receiving here if you see here we are getting the cart id this is fine so now delete from cart we are going to import uh, from our services and toast also you have to import this is fine now what we are going to do we can simply pass this component level loader as a prop here also obviously if you want you can directly take it from that context also but this is fine so we are going to take this one as a prop and now here we can i think we have already done this on multiple times that component level loader and component level loader dot loading if this is true and and component level loader dot id if this is equal to equal to cart item dot hyphen id so we are going to import the component level loader or else this will be this remove i think this we have already done in the previous video only now here we have to pass the uh, those functionality so let me uh, sorry those props let me copy it from somewhere so you can copy it from here only and then we can just simply paste it here so text will be we are going to make this one as removing all right color we are going to make this one as black and we are having this component level loader sorry we have to make this one spelling correct so this will be component level loader only and we have to take it from here component level loader also have to go here and we have to make this one as component level loader all right now this is fine now let's save all of this now let's see what we are getting so let's try to remove this one all right so now this is fine even if you noticed here right let me just show you another thing another thing is that on click of this button you have to open the cart model so this is very important so for this one we can do one thing we can go to our nav bar and then i think here we are having this cart so here we can give an on click and what we can do simply we can make this set so cart model let me just copy it from the context what is the name so the name is set so cart model so we are going to make this set so cart model as true all right and also you have to take it from the context all right so now let's see so you're getting here even if i remove from here you can see it's also removing from here also you have to make this one as uh disabled correct and also you have to show some kind of like your cart is empty so let's make this one so what we can do we can simply go to this common cart and let's go to our checkout button here we are going to give a disable property so disable will be this cart items and then this cart items dot length if this is equal to, equal to zero and i think we have already have given this disable property previously so your disable property we are going to make the opacity as 50 and this is done now let's save this let's see all right so now this is disabled also you have to show some kind of like your cart is empty so here we can do something like we will take a h1 tag and also your cart is empty let's remove this one from here let's save this now let's see all right so you can see that your card is empty if you want you can give some class name also here so let's give a class name we'll give font bold we'll give text large let's see how it is looking all right this is fine so now let's go to our all products so we are getting the toast message now this is fine let's add to cart here so this is added let's try to add this one this is added try to this one this is added now let's try to add this one we are getting error now click on this go to cart so on click of this you have to go to the cart page so this also we need to do so we'll go to cart model and here we are having this go to cart we can give some on click here so you're going to give router dot post and this will go to slash cart this will be small and let's go top and take the router so this will be use router 
let's save this all right so now let's go to our cart page and you can see that this is fine uh, we are going to fix this this alignment issue later when we will be leaving all the the whole website then we are going to fix this minor issues but for now this is fine let's try to open this one and you see that if i now remove from here this is also removed from here remove from here updated and you can see the checkout we have both the places checkout are disabled and this is working fine awesome job now i think we have completed our Art functionality now in the next video we will be start working on this account page because this account page is linked with the checkout page whatever addresses we will be adding in this account page you have to render in the checkout page so from the next page we sorry from the next video we will be start working on the account page so let's do that in the next video hey everyone welcome back so now in this video we are going to start working on this account page in the previous video we have uh, completed the cart functionality but there is one more uh, thing that we need to do and that is if I go to this details page, in this page also we have to uh, create this add to cart functionality. So let's quickly complete this functionality also. So we'll go to this page. So we are having product and then details. Then let's go to our common details page. And here, uh, I think here only we can uh, directly do it. Yeah, so this is the add to cart. So let's take a handle click and uh, we are going to do a handle add to cart and we'll pass this one as item as a argument all right so here let's quickly create this method so this will be function handle add to cart this is the item now for this one also the same exact same function that we need to do so for this one what we can do we can simply go to our common listing page and then product buttons and here you can see that we are having this handle add to cart functionality now this is exactly the same we need to do so instead of rewriting all the things we are going to copy from here the same thing and then we'll paste it here now obviously we need to import this and also to make this one as an async method and let's import all of this from our context so this will be equal to use context of global context so we need this set component level loader and also we need the component level loader also so this one all right then we have to import the toast we also have to i think this we have uh, taken as get item so let's make this one as get item also we have to import the user to pass the user id and also have to import this set so cart model all right so this is done now next thing what we need to do simply you have to copy this and this part we have done so many times now you also will be uh, will be able to do it so you have to check this one and and if this dot loading if this is true and also here what we can do right this id is actually not required because this is actually in this corresponding page so we can basically make this one as empty only all right and this is fine now here we can basically check if this is true so we'll just import this component level loader or else this will be this add to cart and here we have to pass the properties so the properties that we are going to pass the text so let me just check it from here so this is the one so let's copy this and here instead of deleting product we'll do this one as adding to cart will make this one as uh, white and this will be component level loader dot loading which is the loading state and i think this is done so now let's see what is happening so now let's go back now let's try to add this one here so we are getting an error there might be some error let's see so we'll go to our console so we are getting add to cart is not defined awesome I know what is the reason because we haven't import this one so you have to also import this service file so now let's refresh this all right so now sorry now let's close it and let's try all right so I think this is added and if I try to add the same one let's see but we are not getting the notification and the reason is we haven't imported the notification component so here we have to import the notification component also and now we will be able to see it 
so now let's see see now we are getting this one so now if i try to add this one the product is already in a cart let's go to our all products page and then let's go to this product here let's try to add this one and you can see that but here you can see we are not getting the updated amount and this is actually wrong so what we need to do here basically we have to also render the same thing and also let me check what is happening in this uh, uh, cart uh, page and here also this is actually wrong so what we need to do basically we have to take the updated uh, price for this particular product which will be after sell so this is another important function that we need to do and i also notice another thing is that if you see here let's say i try to add this product and if i try to go to go to cart this model is not closing so whenever we click on this go to cart button we have to close this model so let's do this functionality also so for this one we have to go to cart model and then we are having this go to cart and here we are doing this on click so the first thing we are going to the cart page and also we'll do the set so cart model as false now let's see if you see here if i now click here now this is fine and also this is one thing that we'll keep it in mind that we have to basically take the price after sale so this we are going to do in the next video so in this video we are going to complete this account functionality which will be the adding a new address updating deleting and to fetch a list of all the addresses for the particular user so for this one the first thing what we are going to do we'll go to our api folder and here we are going to create another folder and uh, let's give this one name as address all right now here we need four type of route and the first thing is the add new address the second one we need to get all the addresses so this will be get all address the third one we need update address and the fourth one we need and that is sorry we have to do this one inside address so this will be delete address now let's start with this add new address so we are going to create route.js now let's close everything else so the first thing is that we are going to use the dynamic property so this will be export const dynamic this will be equal to force dynamic now this will be export async function and this will be a post method we are going to get the request now here let's do try and we are going to do a catch block so here let's log the error and also what we are going to do we'll return so let's go to any other and let's go to the catch block and we'll use the same so we'll copy this and we'll paste it here so in the try block the first thing is that we have to connect to our database all right and then we have to basically check if the user is a auth user or not so we are going to do const is auth user and this will be called await auth user and we are going to pass this request so if you check if this is auth user is true then only they will be able to add a new address or else this is a unauthenticated user so we are going to show that one so this will be success false and we are some so like you are not authenticated all right and if this is true then what we are going to do we are going to basically get the data from our uh, payload that we are going to pass so this will be await and request dot json also you have to create the uh, here the schema that we need to validate so we'll do const add new address this will be equal to joy dot object and here what are the things we need we need full name this will be joy dot string dot required now let's copy this so we'll paste it to then we are having three four five six so after this we are going to need address we need city we need country we need postal code 
and also at the end we need the user id for this particular user all right now next thing this is all about the schema now we have to validate this schema so for this one we have already done what we can do we can simply take all of this so first we'll, we are going to destructure from that data and what are the things we have to destructure so we'll do full name then we'll do address city country postal code and user id all right so here we are going to do const error and this will be equal to add address dot validate and we are going to pass all of this all right so this will give us if any kind of error is there so we'll check if the error is true so we are going to return the message for that particular schema validation so this will be false and here what we are going to do we have already done so this will be error dot details of zero dot message if there is no error in that case we have to create the address but before that we have to do another thing and that is we have to create the model so we'll go to our model component and here we'll create another folder and uh, sorry file will give this one name as address.js now here we are going to do import mongoose from mongoose and then we'll do const new address schema this is equal to new mongoose schema now here the first thing is we need the user id this will be a type of mongoose dot schema dot types dot object id and we are going to give the ref as this user all right now next we need the full name which will be of string sorry then let's copy all of this because we are going to have all as a string type for five this will be we'll make this one as address this will be city this will be country and this will be postal code all right and then here we are going to pass timestamp as true so this is done now next thing we'll do const address equal to mongoose dot models dot address or we'll do mongoose dot model we'll pass this address and we'll pass this new address schema and at then we we'll do export default this address all right so this is all about the schema we need so now we'll go back now what we need to do if all of this is successful then we have to create the new address we'll do const newly added address and this will be equal to avid we're going to import address dot create and here we are going to pass the data all right and then we'll check if this new address is true so what we can do we can simply show like some message like address added successfully so we'll copy this and we'll make this one as true and we'll show here address added successfully all right else we can show something like fail to add address please try again so this will be false and we'll show here failed to add an address please try again later let's format all of this and let's save this and this is all about the add a new address uh, route that we basically need all right so now let next uh, we have to do this get all address so we'll start with this one so we'll do route.js now again here we are going to copy this dynamic property and we'll paste it here now here this will be a get method so we'll do export async function this will be get request and here we're going to do try catch 
and here we're going to do log error and now the same thing we have to so here so what we can do we can simply copy this and we can paste it here and let's import this one also all right now this thing will be same for all other files so what i'm going to do i'll copy this one and let's create for this delete address also so we'll do route dot js and we'll paste it here and this will be a delete address uh, delete route all right next we have for update address so for this one also we'll do route dot js paste it here and this will be a put method that's it so now let's start with this get all address so here first thing what we are going to do we'll do await connect to db all right now here we have to basically get the id of that particular user so we'll do const search params equal to new url and here we're going to pass the request dot url all right now this will be const id which will be equal to the search param dot get and this will be the id and this we have done multiple times if there is no id so we are going to show some message like we'll show a success of for example false and message you can show like you are not logged in something like that all right all right now next what we can do we can take const is auth user and this will be equal to avid this will be auth user of this request and we'll do if this auth user is true then only we are going to do this else we'll show again you are not authenticated so we'll copy the same here and we'll paste it here so if the user is authenticated so we'll do simply const get all addresses this will be equal to avid and then we have to do address dot find and here what we have to pass it was the user id which will be equal to this id that we'll be passing here and this is done so once we'll get the uh, list of data so we'll check if this get all addresses is true so that means this is true the success is true so this will be success true and here what we can do we can simply pass that data which will be this get all addresses all right and else what we can do we can simply show like fail to fetch addresses please try after some time something like that so we'll paste it here we'll do here failed to fetch fail to get addresses please try again all right so this is all about the get all addresses that we need now next we'll start with delete address now delete address again it will be the same thing what we need to do first we have to get the id that which address you want to delete and based on that we have to do the certain functionality now here again we'll do the same thing that await connect to db now these things we have done multiple times now by this time you should be able to do it very comfortably because you should also try to write these things by your own and this will give you good hands-on experience now here again we are going to do const search params this will be new url of request dot url and this will be const id which will be equal to search params dot get and this will be id all right and then we can check if there is no id so we are going to return this next response dot json and we'll do a success of false definitely and then message will be something like address id is required all right now next again we have to do another thing and that is to check if the user is authenticated or not so we can do here const is auth user this will be avid auth user of request and we'll do is auth user then only we'll do else here we'll show the same message that you are not authenticated all right 
now if the user is authenticated so that means they will be able to delete this particular so what you can do const deleted address and this will be able to await address dot find by id and delete and will pass this id and here we'll check if this deleted address is true that means the address is deleted successfully so we are going to return this one is true and here also address is deleted successfully all right else we'll show the same message that something like this one that failed to delete the address please try again fail to delete address please try again all right so this is all about the delete we need and now next thing we are having the update so update will be a put method so here the first thing what we need to do again the same process again and again that we will be doing await connect to db now here also we have to first get the data so this data will be this await request dot json all right now from this particular data we have to fetch all the data so what are the things we need to fetch we need to fetch the id of that particular uh, address we have to give the full name city address then country and then the postal code and this will be equal to data all right now here what we need to do we have to basically find an update but before that we need to do another thing and that is const is auth user and this will be able to await auth user of this request if you are authenticated then only you will be able to do it or else not so we'll cut it from here and we'll paste it here because if you're authenticated else will show you are not authenticated so we'll paste it here all right now next thing what we need to do we have to do const update address and this will be able to await address and this will be find one and then you have to do update all right now here the first thing is that what we need to do we have to pass this id which will be equal to this id so we are updating this id and then we are going to pass that the values that we need to pass and at the end we are going to pass this new which will be equal to true now these values are basically whatever user will be updating for that particular let's say they want to change the name from john to smith so they will update this name so these updated values we want to pass it here all right so now this will update so i think full name city address postal code and country this is fine so if this is successful means if uh, this update address is successful that means the updated um, the address is updated successfully else we'll show the same message that fail to update address please try again all right and here we'll pass if this is successful so this will be true and this will be address updated successfully awesome so we've completed all the uh, api routes that we need for this particular section which is the address section so now we have to create the services so let's go to our services and here we are going to create another uh, folder and let's give this our name as address and here we'll create our index.js all right so we basically need four services for four routes so we'll start with the first one this will be export const add new address all right this will be async method so we'll get the form data so this will be try catch and here we are going to log this error all right so let's copy this and we'll paste it four times so the last one will be delete sorry delete address so this will be the id we'll be getting 
this will be update address here we'll be getting the form data and this will be fetch all addresses here we'll be getting the id all right for add a new address we'll do const raise and this will be equal to await fetch so go to slash api slash address and slash add new address if you see the same here we are having address and then add new address all right now here we are going to pass the method which will be get sorry 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 this will be add a new address so this will be a post and here we need to pass the headers so in the headers we are going to pass the content type which will be equal to application slash json and also have to pass the authorization so this will be authorization which will be equal to will take template literal so this will be bearer and then we'll pass this cookies dot gate and this will be the token and also have to pass the body which will be equal to json dot stringify this form data that's it now next will be const data and i think this all we don't have to explain because we've done multiple times out uh, dot json and at the end we are going to return this data that's it so this is all about the add new address now fetch again the same thing so we'll copy from here and we'll paste it here so this will be a get here we no need to pass any content type the body is not required for get so only difference is that this will be a template literals and here this will be get all address so this will be get all address and here what we need to do is to pass the id which will be equal to this id that's it all right now next we are having update address now again this will be const race this will be await fetch so this will be slash api slash address slash update address now here we have to do method which will be a put method and here we are going to pass the same data so we'll copy this and we'll paste it here all right because for updating address also you have to pass the body whatever they want to update then this will be const data will be equal to await race dot json and at the end we are going to return the data that's it now let's save it now at the end we are having this delete so again this one const race equal to await fetch and this will be will take template details so this will be slash api slash address slash delete address then we are having id which will be equal to this id and here we are going to pass the method which will be delete now for this delete also you have to pass these headers so we'll copy this from here and then we'll paste it here so we don't need content type we but we need to pass the authorization and at the end this will be const data which will be equal to await race dot json and at the end we are going to return the data all right so many things we have done so we have created four api routes four services and one model for this uh, for creating or updating or deleting a new address now in the next video what we have to do we have to start working on this account page so in the account page we will simply render the user details so there will be nothing that much there will be some information for that user like name email there will be one button which will be view all orders and then we are going to create this add add new address functionality so that part we are going to do in the next video hey everyone and welcome back so now let's start working on this account page so we'll go here and then we are going to create another folder inside of this app and let's give this one name as account all right now inside this we are going to create our page dot js now let's close everything else so we'll do so this one we are going to make this one as client page and then we'll do export default function this will be account 
all right now here uh, let's first uh, create the structure so we are going to return a section and then inside this we'll take some div here let's give a class name so we'll do amx auto we'll do bg gray 100 we will do px of 4 sm px 6 and large will do px of 8 all right now inside this we will use another div and we'll give a class name we'll do bg as white and we'll do shadow all right now inside this we will use another div and let's give a class name here we'll do p of 6 which is the padding and then we'll do sm p of 12 all right and for now this is fine now next thing is that inside of this we'll take another div we'll take a class name and here we are going to make this one as flex flex column we'll do space y4 all right we'll do md space y of 0 and for md we are going to do space x of 6 and for md we'll do flex row all right now inside of this what we are going to do we will be having some random image but for now we will uh, keep it like this so what we can do we can simply uh, leave it like this later we'll just do it here what we are going to do so here i'll give some comment that uh, we have to render a random user image here first let's uh, implement the functionality now here what we are going to do we'll do div and we'll take a class name so for this one we'll do flex flex column and we'll do flex of one for this one now inside of this we'll take a h4 tag and here we are going to render const user which will be going to use context of global context all right so we are going to basically render the user dot name for this h1 will take some class name so h4 will do text of large we'll do font semi bold we'll do text center for md we'll do text left all right let's format this now what are the things we want to render so we also have to render the user email so now it's up to you whatever you want to render you can basically just make it i'm keeping the css part very simple so that we don't have to spend much time on the css so we'll do paragraph here and then we'll do user dot email and also let's render the uh, role of that particular user whether that is admin user or a uh, customer user all right so i think this is fine let's format this let's save it let's see what we are getting and also let's go to our uh, navbar component so we'll go to our navbar and here we are having this account so here we'll give some one click and then on click of that we want to navigate to the account page so we'll do slash account let's save it now let's go back let's click here so you can see that we are having this account here so we are getting name uh, email and the admin and i think this is fine now next thing what we are going to do we also will be having a button here and that will be basically the button to see the list of orders for that particular user so here we are going to take a button and this will be view your orders all right now here obviously on click of this it will go to some uh, orders page but we don't have that page yet so we're going to keep that on click nothing for now and for button what i'm going to do let's use the same class name that we have used in other places also because that is the same thing that we are using in all the other places so where we are using that maybe in the cart model so we'll copy this from here and let's paste it here and this w full we don't need now let's see how this is coming let's save it 
awesome this is looking fine so this is all about the view your orders now here what i'm going to do below this we will be basically will be rendering the addresses of that particular user and also let's make this one as five okay now what we are going to do uh, we can basically render so what is this div here yeah so here we are going to take another div here we'll take a h1 and we'll do your addresses all right so let's see and also for this one let's give a class name let's give a empty of six all right so for this one we'll do font bold we'll do text large okay now if you don't have any user obviously we are so we will be showing that you don't have any user please add a new sorry why i'm telling user if you don't have any address you have to add a new address so to add a new address what i'm going to do will be going to our context and here i'll be managing all the state because we are using the context for the state management all right so here i'm going to take two more uh straight here so the first thing will be our addresses and set addresses so this is basically the list of all addresses we'll take as a mtr and also next one will be our addresses form data so this will be address form data and this will be set address form data all right and this one we're going to make this one as uh what we can do we can uh, like we can take this one as a initial like something like this so we'll take a full name here we'll make this one as empty we'll take city take empty we'll take country empty string then we'll take postal code we'll take empty string and then uh, we are going to take city full name i think we are having also addresses which will be also empty string now this four we are going to pass here so this will be our addresses set addresses address form data and set address form data all right now let's copy all of this we'll go here and we will use basically this one here all right so now here what we are going to do basically we have to render the list of uh, users here sorry why i am telling user we have to render the list of addresses here so we'll take a div here basically and let's give a class name of empty of four all right so here now we are going to basically check if this addresses and and addresses dot length if this is true that means we are having addresses for that particular user so we are going to render or else we will basically take some h1 and we'll show something like uh, let's take this one as paragraph and also no addresses found please add a new address below something like that and here we are going to do addresses dot map so we're having item now here what we're going to do will take a div basically and key will be our this item dot id that we will be receiving from our database now here simply we will render some paragraph and i'll keep this one very very simple will not go into much uh complication here so for this one what we can do uh we can simply take a border and also we'll take a p of six now here what we can do we can simply show something like this that uh like what you can do name let's copy this and paste it five times and this will be city this will be country this will be postal code and let's keep this address after this so this will be our address and here this will be our item dot full name all right now let's copy this and this will be item dot postal code item dot country item dot city and item dot address all right 
so this is all about this structure we need if i now save this we'll be getting that no address is found please add a new address below so here we'll be having the, a button and that will be add new address now see what we are going to do on click of this add new address we are going to basically render a form below and after that uh, once they will fill the form we'll add the address and based on that it will basically automatically updated here so let's do that so now we will basically use the same button that we have used here and let's do one thing so we are having this section so after this we will take another div here and we'll paste this button here and instead of margin uh, also let's take a margin top here so we'll do margin top of four and this will be add new address all right now let's save it so we're going to add a new address so on click of this we are going to uh, show the form now inside of this what we are going to do we are going to basically render the form so for this one i think form we have already done multiple times so we'll take another div below and let's take a class name here we'll do flex 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 column margin top of five we'll do justify center pt of 4 sorry and we'll do align uh, sorry we have to do item center all right now here we are going to do we we will take another div here let's take a class name we'll do w full mt of 6 mr of 0 mb of 0 ml of 0 then we'll do space y of 8 now here we have to create the form controls now this form controls is basically the form controls that we are creating for uh, other forms also so for this one what we can do we can go to our utils so we are having this utils and here we will be creating a form control so this will be export const add new address form controls so this one we will start with id which will be full name then we are having type type will be of input then we are having placeholder which will be enter your full name then we are having label so this will be full name and then we are having the component type which will be input so i'm going to copy and paste it five um, four times more so two three four and five so let's make this one as address enter your full address this will be address then we are having city enter your city then we are having country and at the end we are having the postal code so this will be enter your postal code and let's make this one as postal code so this is all about the uh, for, uh sorry this is all about the form we need form controls so now we what we have to do we just have to map it so we'll do add new address form controls dot map so this will be control item so now here what we are going to do because we don't have any other component type then input so we are going to simply render this input component that we have created all right now here we have to first the pass the type which will be this control item dot type then you have to pass the placeholder so this will be control item dot placeholder you have to pass the label which will be control item dot label all right now we also have to pass the value now what will be this value this value will be uh, this address form data so we have to take this address form data of this control item dot id all right and then we have to do on change now on change what we need to do we have to take the event and then here we can simply take set address form data and we are going to basically destructure this address form data 
and then we'll do control item dot id equal to this event dot target dot value and this event we are going to use it here and this is done all right now next we will take another button here so after this we are going to make this one as add or let's do this one as save now let's save this and let's see what we're getting so you can see that we are getting and everything is looking nice so now only one thing what we need to do we have to toggle this form so for this one what you can do you can simply uh, do one thing so we can go to or for this one we can take a local state also so something like const so so we'll do so address form set so address form this will be equal to use state of false and then we are going to basically check here if this is true then only i want to render this so if this is true then only i want to render or else this will be null and we'll cut it from here and we'll paste it here all right and then if you see now it will not show so now on click of this what we are going to do we are going to basically do set so address form is equal to not equal to so address form so we are basically toggling this one so if i now go here and click here you see all right so this is fine and also we can do something like this so we'll make this one as if this so address form is true so this will be hide address form or else we'll show add new address all right so you can see that now ui is completed so now once we'll integrate with api so we will be able to see all the all the addresses here now another thing we need to do and that is uh if i go here here we have to basically need two more buttons and that is one for update and one for delete so to update the address and also to delete the address now let's format this let's save it so now let's start working on the api integration so the first thing is that we have to start with adding a new address all right everyone so till this part this is done now in the next video we are going to integrate with this uh, four api that we have created adding a new address update delete and to fetch all the addresses so let's do that in the next video all right everyone so let's start uh, integrating a new address uh, or basically all the other apis that we have created so the first thing is that uh, we are going to create a method here so this will be function handle add or update address because uh, in the same method we are going to do both all right so here this will be async method obviously now this we are going to copy this and let's go to our save and here we are going to on click and we'll pass it here all right then here what we are going to do we'll do const response this will be equal to await and here for now this will be add new address so this will be from our services now what we have to pass we have to pass two things the first thing is that we have to pass this addresses form data all right and also have to pass the user id if you remember so this user id will be basically this user dot id all right this is fine now next thing is that let's log this response and let's see what we are getting so let's save it so we'll open our console let's add new address let's type my name here address i'm going to give anything like india city will give like delhi country india postal code i'll give some random postal code now let's save here and let's see what we are getting awesome so you can see that we are getting address added successfully so that means this is working fine so now what we have to do we basically simply do here if this race dot success if this is true 
so you have to first thing is that you have to import this toast dot success so here we are going to show this race dot message and here we have to basically pass the position so sorry this position will be this toast dot position dot top right also what we need to do once we will be adding a particular address we also have to fetch all the addresses so that we are going to do in a minute and also have to make this set address form data as uh, uh, resetted so to reset this one what we can do we can simply go here we can copy this and then we can pass this reset value here else if there are any kind of error so we are going to copy the same thing and we'll paste it here and for this one this will be error all right now let's save this and now let's go below also have to import the notification component all right so now let's refresh this let's add i'm going to give some random name here like john we'll give usa we'll give ny sorry country usa and i'll give some random postal code let's try to save here so you can see that we are getting address added successfully and this is working fine awesome now another thing we can do we can basically um, what we can do we can go here and then we can copy this component level loader all right and then we can go here we can also import the same we can copy this before we are adding we will make this one this loading as true id will be empty and once this is done we'll make this loading as false the same we can do false here also and here we can basically check the same thing that if the component level loader and component level loader dot loading if this is true so we are going to render component level loader or else this will be save so for this one we will copy from somewhere the content so we'll go here let's go here we'll copy this and then we'll pass it here so for this one we're going to make this one as saving this is uh, fine and this is fine so now let's save it and let's see if this is working or not so we'll go here click on add new address give some random value for now just to check and then postal code let's save here awesome so now this is working fine so now what we need to do we have to start fetching all the addresses so for that one that will be pretty simple we can simply create a method so this will be async function extract all addresses all right now to get all address will do const response this will be await and this will be get all let me check the service name so fetch so this will be fetch all addresses and here what you have to pass you have to pass the id of that particular user all right and if this race dot success if this is true what we are going to do will do set uh, set addresses will be equal to this race dot data all right so this will fetch all the addresses now we can simply come here and then call use effect and then on page load or basically we can check on the user if the user is not null so we'll do if user is not equal to equal to null then we are going to do extract all addresses all right now let's save it and let's see what is happening awesome so you can see that we are getting all the user nice job now we can do another thing in this update so we'll do a mr or margin right of five also all right and another thing we can do for this one we'll do flex sorry sorry not here you have to do it here we'll do flex flex call and gap of four 
all right so you can see that we are getting all the uh, addresses here all right so this is fine now what we need to do whenever we will add a new user we have to get uh, sorry new address you have to get the list of uh, updated addresses so you can simply call this here so we can do something like this extract all addresses all right so now you'll see if i try to add a new address here let's sell a new address here country and postal code one two three four five if i add here see this is updated here so once this is done we are getting the updated address here and this is fine now we have to do the delete and the update so now let's start with this update so for update what we need to do we have to basically get the id and then based on that we have to uh, render this data in our form correct so for this one we can go here and then on this update we will take another on click and then here we will create another method and this will be handle update address here we'll pass the item sorry sorry this will be handle update address all right so we'll copy this come here function handle update address and this will be get current address all right now here what we are going to do we will simply call this set address form data because this is the data which is holding the uh, form state so we are going to and then here what we are going to do we are going to pass all of this value so we'll copy this and we'll pass it here this form full name will be this get current address dot full name now let's copy all of this again and we'll pass it here here and here also we need to do another thing and that is we will take another state here and this will be current edited address id and this will be set current edited address id this will be equal to null and here what we are going to do we'll do set current edited address id which will be equal to this get current address dot id all right so this is one thing now let's format it let's save it and let's see what is happening if i now click here see uh, also another thing we have to do so we have to make this set so address form this will be also true all right so now if i let's click on this update see all the values are getting populated here correct so that means whatever uh, they want to update here now based on that we have to basically pass this value on click of this submit or whenever they will click on this save button so now simply we can do one thing we can go this handle add or update address and here how we are going to check that we will check if this current edited address id if this is not null that means there currently updating a particular address correct so we'll make this one as sorry so we'll basically check here something like this if this is not equal to equal to null so that means now they are updating so we'll do await update address or else this will be add a new address and here what we are going to pass we will pass this address form data and also to pass this user id all right and this user id will be basically let me check what we have to pass we'll go to our api address update and we have to pass id all right instead of user id we have to pass the id so the id will be equal to this um, current edited address id all right and if this is successful then also we are going to do this set current uh, edited address id will be this will be null again now let's save it so let's refresh this and now here let's try to update this one so i'll click on update all right so we are getting all sorry sorry it's my bad so here we have to make this one as city this one we have to make this one as country this will be postal code 
and this will be address all right now this will work so if i try to click now so we're getting all of this let's update this one to one two three four five six let's click on save address has updated successfully and we are getting one two three four five six awesome job now let's make this one from john to john smith now let's click on the save and you can see that we are getting john smith all right now this is working fine now the last thing that is left and that is to delete a particular uh, address so that will be pretty simple also so we'll create another method so this will be handle delete this will be get current uh, we can do get current address id and here this will be const response this uh, what we can do we can simply do here const response await delete address this will be get current address id also to make this one as async let's copy this and then we'll go here we'll do on click and we'll do handle delete we'll pass this item dot id all right now here again we'll see uh, check the same thing if race dot success is true then we are going to show this text uh, toast message that uh, we have done here so let's copy this all right so this will be error and here if this is done we have to do another thing we have to get the updated addresses also all right so this is one thing so now let's format this let's save it now let's see now let's say i want to delete this one click here delete so it's deleted successfully you can see that now we want to give some kind of loader that also we can do so we can copy this for let's go to our handle delete we'll paste it here here and here so loading will be true first time when we will basically do this one and this will be get current address id this will be false and this will be false now here we can basically take the same thing and that is if this component level loader and component level loader dot loading and and component level loader dot id is equal to equal to this item dot id then we are going to render the component level loader or else this will be this delete now here what we can do we can simply copy the same thing from here and we can paste it here instead of saving this will be deleting all right now let's format all of this let's save it now let's see so now let's try to click here it's deleted this is fine let's try to add a new one so i'll give some name here maria smith uh, germany city something will give random value country will give germany and postal code let's try to save so we are getting the updated value here let's try to update from germany to spain and then we'll go here and do save see it's getting updated now if i try to delete this one here this is deleted if i try to refresh all right so here if we if we want we can give uh, some kind of loader in this particular section so let's do that so we'll go to our context and then we'll load we'll copy this page level loader if we want and then we will go to our this context and we'll paste it here now once we'll extract this one so we'll do set page level loader as true and once this is successful we'll make this one as false again all right so here what we can do we can simply go in this section so in this part so here we'll cut it and we can basically 
check here if this page level loader is true so we'll show some kind of loader or else we'll show this one and here what we can do we can simply show something like i think we are having this pulse loader and let's check this pulse, pulse loader where we are using so you can see that we are using here so let's copy this and let's paste it this so this will pay level loader size will make this one as 15 all right let's save it now let's see awesome so now you can see that we are getting the loader here then we are getting the data uh, let's see if i try to update try some value we'll give save here we'll be getting the data here even if i refresh this now we are getting so now each and everything is completed in this particular page now next thing we have to is start working on the main page and that is the checkout page so what we need to do whatever addresses we are having here we are going to render in the checkout page and from there they will be able to directly select the addresses they want to select from this particular address list so let's start working on the checkout page from the next video hey everyone in the previous video we have completed the account section now it's time to start working on the checkout page all right so the first thing what we need to do let's go to our code and then inside this app we are going to create another folder and let's close everything else here and now here let's give this one name as checkout all right and let's create our page dot js let's give this one as use client and this will be export default function checkout all right now here uh, what we need to do whenever we'll go to the checkout page first we need to get the list of cart items that the user have added in the cart and also you have to extract this addresses that the user have so that they can select a particular address all right uh, so for this one let's return here so the first thing what we are going to do for now we'll just return some simple div here and now the first thing is that we have to extract so we'll do const extract from use context of this global context so what are the things we need we need the cart items and also we need the user information for that particular user so these all are the cart items so now let's see log here this cart items and let's see what is happening so the first uh, we will go to the cart here and let's see any product so we, you can see that we are having only one product so let's go to our console and now we'll go to this checkout page all right so here in this page we should get the list of products that we are having but you can see that we are not able to see any product here so that we need to check what is the name of this uh, state that we have given here so i think we are having this cart items only so here one very important point we need to do you can see that we are getting this user information whenever we load this page on the page load so whenever we will be adding a product in the cart page so that time also we need to do the same thing so let's go to the cart page and you can see that we are having this extract all cart items and we are already saving this one in the local storage so if i now go to our local storage and let's see what we are having you can see that we are having these cart items so you can simply go to our context so let's go to our context and here we'll do const get cart items and this will be json dot parts local storage dot get item and this will be cart items all right so this one we are going to extract or else this will be empty and then we are going to do this one set cart items at this get cart items so now let's save this so now let's see what is happening so if i now go to our uh, console you can see that we are getting one product here so this is our cart items that is currently added in the check uh, sorry in the cart page so this is one very important step we need to do so now let's go to our checkout page now here the first thing is that we have to render this list of cart items so we'll go here and let's return here div now inside this we are going to take another div let's give a class name here so we'll do grid we'll do smpx10 we'll do large grid columns 2 we'll do large p 
px of 20 and we'll do excel px of 32 all right now inside this we'll take another div now here we'll take a class name of px4 and also we'll do a pt padding top of 8 all right now here we'll take one paragraph and we'll give this one as order or let's give this one as cart summary now here we are going to take a class name and we'll give this one as font medium and also we'll do this one as text excel all right now here inside of this we'll take another div now for this one we'll take a class name we'll make this one as empty of eight we'll do space y of three we'll do rounded large we'll do border we'll do bg of white we'll do px of two py of four and sm will do px of five now here we are going to basically render the cart items so we'll take cart items and and if the length is true or else we'll simply show something like we'll take a d that uh, no cart items or something like your cart is empty all right now here what we are going to do we'll simply map these cart items dot map so this will be item and here we are going to take a div now let's give a key of item dot id all right now for this div we'll take a class name so we'll take a class name of flex flex column we'll do rounded large we'll do bg of white and we'll do sm flex row sorry this will be sm flex row let's format this all right now inside of this the first thing we are going to render a image we'll do source which will be equal to item and if you remember we are having this item dot product id so let me just show you so if i now go here you can see that we are having this product id so item and an item dot product id and and item dot product id dot image url all right so uh, alt we are give, uh, going to give this one as cart image sorry cart product cart item we can give all right let's take a class name here so we'll do m of 2 we'll do h of 24 width of 28 we'll do rounded medium we'll do border object cover and object center let's format this so this is all about the image we need now after this we are going to take another div here let's remove this and here we are going to take a class name so we'll do this one as flex w full we'll do this one as flex column and we'll do px of 4 py of 4 all right now inside this we will take a span and let's copy this from here so inside of this we are going to render the name of the product so this will be item dot product id dot name and here we'll take a class name so for this we'll take a font bold all right so let's format this so this is all about the first thing and second thing is that we'll copy this and we'll paste here and we'll do this one as price we'll make this one as semi bold all right so this is all about the first thing we need let's format and save this and let's see what is happening so you can see that we are getting the same here so we are having the cart items only one cart, cart items is there let's go to our all products now uh, let's add this product to cart so product is added now let's go to the checkout page and let's see what is happening so you can see that we are getting two products now and this is fine all right now next thing what we need to do we have to uh, basically render all the addresses of this uh, particular uh, user so for this one we can go to our checkout page sorry we can go to our context 
and here you can see that we are having these all addresses so this is the state so you can copy this value from here and then we can just paste it here now what we need to do we have to basically get all the addresses so we'll create another method here so we'll do async function get all addresses all right so this will be const response avid and here we are having get uh, fetch all addresses all right and here we need to pass the user id so this will be dot hyphen id all right and here we'll check if this race dot success is true so this set address will be the data that we will be receiving so this will be race dot data all right now what we need to do we'll take a use effect here and here we will keep this user as a dependency and we'll check if this user is not equal to equal to null and this part we have already done so we'll call this get all addresses all right now let's log here this address address is basically this one the state variable so now let's format and save this and let's go here let's go to our checkout page so see we can we are getting three addresses for this particular user so these all are the addresses awesome so now what we need to do we have to basically render these addresses here so we'll go here and now after this particular div here we will take another div let's give a class name here we'll give a mt of 10 we'll give a bg day 50 we'll do px of 4 then we'll do pt of 8 and we'll do for large mt of 0 all right now next we will take a paragraph here and we'll do this one as shipping address details all right now let's give a class name here so we will give a class name of for example let's give a text of excel and font medium now let's copy this and here we'll give some text something like complete your order by selecting address below all right now for this one let's make this one as text gray 400 and font will make this one as bold all right now after this what we are going to do we'll take another div here and let's give a class name for this particular div we'll do w of full mt of 6 mr of 0 mb of 0 ml of 0 and we'll do space y and we'll do this one as uh, let's make this one 6 all right now here what we are going to do we are going to render the addresses so addresses and an addresses dot length if this is true that means this user already have addresses or else we will be showing some kind of uh, button that you need to add a new address something like that or what we can do we can simply log here some paragraph that no addresses added all right now here we are going to again do the same thing so we'll do addresses dot map item now here we'll take a div now what we can do simply we can go to the addresses section and we can simply get the same content that we have to render here so this part i am telling instead of rewriting so we have to basically render all this name addresses and everything so what we can do we can basically copy till this part from here we'll copy this and now here we'll paste it here all right and here we'll give a key so key will give this one as item dot id and for this one we'll take a class name we'll give this one as border and what else was there border and padding of six all right now here instead of this update what we need to give we need to give this one as select address because they have to select this particular address here so now let's format this and let's save it let's see what we're getting awesome so you can see that we are getting three addresses and this is the text here and they need to select from this particular addresses here 
all right now here let's say if they want to add a new address so in that case what we'll do we'll simply uh let's do one thing i think we are having this div all right so after this we'll take an uh we'll copy this button from here and we'll paste it and we'll just do here add new address so they will be able to add a new address if they want to let's save it so we're getting here so i think we have to paste it inside of this uh, div so you are having this add a new address here all right so if they click here they will be navigating to the account page all right because if they want to add a new address so for this one what we are going to do we'll take a const router equal to use router and then we'll go here and on this button we'll take on click and we'll simply do router dot push and this will go to the account page if they want to add a new address let's save it and let's click here so you can see that they will be able to add a new address from here let's say i want to add a new address so i'll give some random value for now and this postal code i'll save this one so this address is now added so now let's go to our checkout page so you can see that we are getting this address here so they will be able to select a new address from here all right now next thing what we need to do we'll go here now after this button that we have added we will be basically taking another div and let's take a class name for this one mt of six we'll do a border t and we'll do border b and py of two all right now inside this we'll take another div we'll take a class name for this one we'll do flex item center justify between all right now we'll take another paragraph here and we'll give this one a sub total and for this one let's take a class name so we'll do text sm font medium and we'll do text gray 900 all right now inside of this what we need to do we'll take another paragraph now here we'll take a dollar and now what we need to do we have to basically render the price of the total total of all the cart items so we'll do cart items and then cart items dot length all right if this is uh true what we can do we can simply do something like this or let's uh, do it here only or else this will be zero so what we can do we can simply do cart items dot reduce so you're going to reduce so we'll get the total the item and here what we need to do we have to do item dot product id dot price plus total comma zero all right so this will give us the total uh, price of all the card items let's format this all right now for this one let's copy this part from here this class name we'll paste it here we'll make this one a test large font bold all right so now next thing is that here so let me just check so after this particular div we will take another div here now inside this div we'll make a paragraph and we'll do shipping and we'll copy this and we'll make this one as free so for this shipping div we'll again do the same thing we have to see instead of rewriting these classes i'm just copy pasting here all right and for this one we'll copy the same class name from here and the value class name will be also same all right everyone so now next what we need to do we have to basically render the total amount so which will be basically exactly the same thing so we can copy this one and then we'll paste it here so instead of this subtotal this will be our total all right so now 
this is all about all the structure we need now let's save this and let's see what we are getting so you can see that we are getting subtotal shipping free and then uh, the total all right now after this we have to render the button so we'll copy this one from here and then after this div we'll give this one name as checkout so this will be our checkout button and then on click we'll remove this one for now so only difference is that here we need to give a width as full so we'll be giving width as 100 percent so we're getting this one and also let's do one thing let's wrap this uh, button inside a div and for this one we will give a padding bottom of 10 let's see how this is coming all right now this is fine so we are getting all the cart items all the addresses here and this is our checkout button so on click of that it will go to the stripe uh, checkout page now another thing we need to do we have to basically select the current address so that functionality also we need to do so whenever they will select this one will show this one as selected and will show some kind of uh, border here all right so for this one what we are going to do we'll take a local state so we'll go here we'll take this one as const selected address set selected address and this will be equal to use state so for this one what we can do we can make this one as null all right now here we'll create this method so let's do one thing let's do like function handle selected address and here we'll get the item so this will be get address now what we need to do basically whenever we will click on any of the item here so that means any of the current address so you can see that we are having this div here which is uh, we are mapping the addresses so we'll do here on click and we'll make this one as handle uh, handle selected address and here we'll pass this item which is the current address now this is simple now what we can do we can simply also we have to uh, take our uh, main order from data now either you can maintain that state in this component or you can do one thing you can keep this uh, that data in our context also because we are doing everything in the context so what we can do we'll do this one as checkout form data and set checkout form data and this will be called to use state of we will do something like we'll take a state here so do this one as checkout initial checkout form data and let's make this one as export so this will be export const now here basically what we need to do we have to basically take all the data that we need so whenever we'll be doing any kind of payment the first thing is that we need to pass the shipping address so this is one thing then we need to pass the payment method for now which will be as a stripe so we'll keep this one as empty for now then we have to pass the total price so this total price will be empty, uh, empty for now we'll keep this one as then it will be is paid that means whether the order is paid or not then we'll be having paid at which is basically our new date all right and then we'll be passing another one that is is processing so currently the uh, the order is in process state or not so this will be zero and this total price will keep this one as zero for now so this will be our initial checkout form data and the same we are going to use here so this will be our initial checkout form data now let's copy this and then we'll pass it here so this will be our checkout form data so now let's save it and we are going to take this one from our context all right so this is one step now what we need to do whenever we will select address the first thing is that we have to take and that is set selected address that means the current address that we are selecting which will be equal to this get address dot id that means the current address id this is we have selected so for example if we select this one so we'll get the id of this particular item all right and next what we need to do we have to do set checkout form data which will be equal to checkout form data right now here we are going to take the uh, shipping address and this will be equal to our checkout form data dot shipping address and then we are going to pass the five things that we need that is the full name then we need the city 
then we need the country then we need the postal code and also we need the address now this will be equal to this get address dot full name let's copy this this will be get address dot city this will be get address dot country then get address dot postal code and then get address dot address all right now let's save it now also we need to do another thing is that whenever we will select a particular address we have to basically show that this particular address is currently selected so how we are going to do that so for this one this is pretty simple so we can basically check we'll take template literals here and then here we'll check if this item dot id is equal to equal to equal to selected address that means this address is selected now so here what we can do we'll do this one as border red uh, 8900 all right and we'll do this one as uh, border we are already having or else this will be empty so now let's see what is happening and also it to do another thing is that if this item dot id is equal to equal to selected address so we'll show something like selected or we'll do select address so this will be selected address so now let's see what is happening so we'll go here now let's i'll click here so you can see that this is now selected if i click here this is now selected if i click here this is now selected all right if i again select this one so we have to unselect this one so how we are going to check it we can simply check something like this we can go here and we can check if this get address dot go, dot id sorry dot id if this is equal to equal to this selected address so what we are going to do we'll do set selected address as null and then we'll do set checkout form data which will be equal to checkout form data and then shipping address will be empty object now let's see what is happening in this checkout form data all right so now we'll go here let's go to our console so we are having object and you can see that we are getting all the shipping address here but if i unselect this one you can see that now i think we are still getting so this is wrong let me just check what is the issue here all right so we also have to do this one as return here sorry so now let's see all right now if i select this one so you can see that this is now not selected and this is empty if i select here now you can see that we are getting the shipping address if i select this one now this will be getting changed to that john smith so everything is working fine and we are getting the cart uh the cart items here also all the addresses so now what we need to do we have to make this one as now uh, we have to work on the stripe checkout another thing what we need to do we have to give a disable property for this checkout button so we'll go here and let's give a disable property here so this will be disabled in this case whenever these cart items and and cart items dot length if this is zero or else what we need to do if this object dot keys of this checkout form data dot shipping address dot length if this is equal to equal to zero all right and also here we can give a disable property so we'll give this one as disabled and we'll do opacity as 50. now let's see what is happening now let's refresh this so you can see that this is currently disable because we haven't selected any address here if i select this one this is enabled if i unselect this is working fine all right and let's go to our cart here let's remove this one let's remove this one also from here now you can see that this is also uh, disabled because we don't have any item in the cart if i go back to all products and let's try to add this one 
now let's go to our checkout also you have to give this on on click of that you have to go to checkout so that we are going to do so we'll go to checkout so now you can see that this is mm, dis uh, disabled if i select here this is now enabled and this is working fine now also let's go to our cart model components cart model and then we are having this checkout so on click of this we need to go to router dot push and this will go to slash checkout so now let's go to our all products let's open this card and let's click here checkout so you can see that this is going to the checkout but also have to make this set so model as false so we'll take this one cut it from here and then we'll paste it and we'll do set so cart model as false now let's save it so now let's go to all products now let's open our cart and let's go to checkout so it's going to checkout and we're getting all the things here so now everything is completed so in the next video we have to create our stripe session so whenever we'll do any kind of payment with stripe you have to create the session and for this one we are going to create all the api routes and everything and then we'll be start working on the integration from front end with the back end api routes for the checkout page so let's do that in the next video hey everyone welcome back so in the previous video we have created the main checkout uh, ui that we need in this video we are going to start working on the stripe now you can see that what i have done i created a account here now once you'll create account you will be navigating to this dashboard.stripe slash test dashboard right here now here you can see that uh, everyone will get this option and that is these developers so once you'll click on these developers you'll go to the developers page and from there you will be able to extract all the api keys that you need now mainly you need two api two kind of api keys one is the publish key and another one is the secret key now for this one i'll highly recommend that you create your own account and don't use anyone's keys here because that is not a correct approach so once you'll go to this api keys you can see that you'll be getting this publishable key and the secret key so from here you'll be able to reveal your test key and the same you can use in your application so for this one what we need to do see whenever we'll click on this checkout button we have to create a stripe session once you'll create the stripe session it will go to the stripe page and there you will be able to give all the information and then if the the payment is successful so it will again come back to this particular page and based on that we can do certain operations so let's see how we are going to do this one so the first thing is that we'll go to our api and here we'll create another uh, folder and let's give this one as what we can do we can do this one as stripe all right now let's create our route dot js now here what we need to do this will be our export async function this will be a post request we'll get the request here and also let's use our dynamic property so export const dynamic and this will be equal to force dynamic all right now here the first thing is that what we need to do is we'll try and then we'll get the const response this will be equal to await request dot json and also in the catch block we'll log error and then we'll just log here and we'll just do return next response dot json sorry json and here we'll do status as 500 we'll do success as false and we'll do a message something like something uh, something went wrong please try again all right so here what we need to do whatever response sorry whatever response will be receiving based on that you have to create our session so how we are going to do this one so for this one here we are going to create const and we'll do this one as stripe and this will be our require stripe that we have already installed all right and here what we need to pass we need to pass that secret key that you will be getting from your dashboard so i can reveal this secret key i'll highly suggest you don't use this one so i can copy this one and i can just simply paste it here that's it all right so let's format this i think there are something wrong okay here we are getting 
uh, this is fine so here what we need to do we'll be doing avid and this will be the stripe dot checkout all right and this will be sessions dot create so this will create the stripe session now here you have to pass some properties what you need to pass the first thing is that you need to pass a payment method types all right sorry and here this will be of card next i need to pass we need to pass the line items that is basically the cart items that we will be adding and this will be this response and then here we'll be passing a mode this mode will be a payment all right and also you have to pass two things what is the success url and what is the cancel url all right so here let's do one thing let's go here let's copy this all right now here we'll paste it so this is the success url plus and here we are going to make a status this will be equal to success and let's copy the same thing from here and we can paste it here and this will be status equal to cancel all right so this will create the stripe session and now what we need to do basically here we need to return the next response dot json so here we'll pass a success as true and here we'll get id and that is basically the session id that we have created so this will be our session dot id all right so this is all about the uh, route that we need so you can see that we basically first we got uh, the stripe and then we pass the key here and based on that we create our session and then we'll pass the uh, sorry we'll return the id back all right now next thing what we need to do so once we have done this one we'll go to our uh, services let's go to our services here and then we'll create another folder we'll keep this one name as uh, stripe all right now here we'll create our index.js so here we'll do export const and let's give this one as call stripe session this will be equal to async and here we'll get the form data all right now here we'll do try and we'll do catch so in the catch we'll just log the error and in the try we'll do const response this equal to avid fetch so first we'll go to slash api slash stripe because that is the uh, route that we have created and here we need to pass the method which will be equal to post also you have to pass the headers so the first thing is that we'll pass our content type which will be equal to application slash json and also we'll pass the authorization all right now here we're going to do bearer and then we'll pass this cookies sorry this will be cookies dot get and here we'll pass the token all right and in the body we'll just do json dot stringify this form data all right now i think you already know what next we need to do this will be avid race dot json sorry and then we are going to return the data that's it also another thing we need to do the first thing is that we'll go here and i think we haven't done this one so we have to check is auth user this will be equal to avid and this will be auth user of this request so if this is auth user is true then we are going to do this one else will simply return that you are not authenticated so we'll copy this paste it here we'll make this one as message and this will be you are not authenticated or else we are going to do this so we'll cut it from here and then we'll pass it here let's save it and now this is done now next thing what we need to do so we've created our route we have created the uh, the services so we'll go here so on click of this we have to basically navigate to the stripe page so how we are going to do this one so the first thing is that let's create a on click method here so we'll do on click and do this on a handle checkout okay and now here we'll go 
and then we'll do function handle checkout all right so now what we need to do first we have to get the publishable key so we'll do here publishable so this will be publishable key and this will be equal to so we'll go here we'll copy this publishable key from here and we'll paste it here all right now we'll clear the stripe promise this will be equal to load stripe so this is uh, from stripe.js package and then you have to pass this publishable key here all right now next thing is that on click of this handle checkout the first thing what we need to do we have to create so we'll create another stripe variable and this one you have to make this one as an async method and this will be equal to avid and here we have to do this one as stripe promise that we have created all right all right so now next we need to create the uh, line item so we'll do this one as const create line items and this one what we need to do is to take this cart items dot map so this will be item now here we need to pass the following properties so the first thing we need to pass and that is the price data and here the first thing we need to do we have to pass the currency and we'll pass this one as usd sorry this will be usd next we need to pass the product data so these all are actually you can see in the documentation of stripe so in this product data you have to pass the images so in this images we'll pass this item dot product id dot image url and also you have to pass the name and which will be equal to this item dot product id dot name all right so this is all about the product data next we need to pass the unit amount so this unit amount will be our item dot product id dot price into 100 all right and after all of this we have to pass a quantity so quantity we are going to pass this one as one so this will create our line items now what we need to do next we have to take const response this will be equal to avid and here we are having this call stripe session that we have created so we'll call stripe session and here what we need to do we have to pass this create line items as a response that will be getting sorry as a request that will be receiving in the in the route of this here all right now next thing what we need to do here we need to take another state that we are going to create that we basically will be checking if the order is currently processing or not so we'll take this one as ease order processing so this one basically we need to soak any kind of loader and this one will set is order processing and we'll make this one as use state of false now when we'll call this stripe session we are going to make this set is order processing as true and then we are going to take local storage dot set item and here we'll make the stripe as true so this is one uh, property that we are going to store and then also we are going to do local storage dot set items and this will be our checkout form data and this will be equal to json dot stringify and this will be our checkout form data that we are going to store all right now once this is done once we'll go to the stripe checkout page or basically we will be redirecting to the checkout page if there are any kind of error so that error we will be receiving here and this will be equal to avid stripe dot here we'll be getting this redirect to checkout and what we need to do here we have to pass a session id now we'll understand this session id from where we'll be getting this session id will be getting from this session that we are passing so this is the id that we'll be receiving if this race is correct so here we'll do race dot id all right and let's log this error for now and later we'll do if there are any kind of error all right everyone so now i think everything is almost done uh, so now let's see what is happening so let's go to our checkout page let's refresh this and now let's uh, click this address here now let's click on this checkout all right so you can see that we are going to the checkout page and here we are getting the details and so basically what is happening so this is creating this uh, uh, session id 
the session ID or which is basically the success ID and based on this success ID we are redirecting back, uh, redirecting to the checkout page now what will happen here we need to fill all the details and then once we'll click on pay it will again go back to the uh, success URL if the payment is successful so that is the reason you can see that we are giving here let's see what is happening although that functionality we haven't done so once we'll come back from the uh, success url we have to do certain functionality here so that we are going to do but let's see what is happening i'll give some random email for now let's give some uh, dummy we'll take demo credit card number we'll copy this paste it here give some name here select some country all right now let's click on this pay so now you can see that it will show if this is success so you can see that this is success now it will go to the checkout page again now here nothing is happening because we haven't done anything so once what we need to do now this is very very important so what will happen once we'll come back to the checkout page again what we'll do from this route we will be able to see that if the status is success or not so that means if this status is success on use effect we can check if this is success means the payment is successful based on that what we need to do we have to first remove all the cart items for this particular because these cart items are already they have paid and this will now go to the order and the cart will be empty and then here will be showing something like thank you payment is successful and view your order something like that so that part we are going to do in the next video the reason is that because once we'll come back here based on this success we have to call a api and that will create our final order and then that order will be saved in our database so let's do that in the next video hey everyone welcome back so in the previous video we have completed the uh, stripe session so now what we need to do we have to create our final order if the stripe session payment is successful so for this one there are quite a few things we need to do I'll close everything else for now and the first thing is that let's go to our models and then in the models we we'll create another uh, file here let's give this one as order.js all right so here we are going to import mongoose from mongoose then this will be const order schema this will be equal to new mongoose dot schema all right now here what we need to pass the first thing is that we need to pass user so this user will be a type of mongoose dot schema dot types dot object id all right now here we are going to give a ref which will be user and also we are going to give this required which will be true all right now let's copy this and let's paste it here next we need the order items so the cart items is basically so this order items here what we need to do this will be of array and inside this we are going to pass a quantity so quantity this will be type as number all right and this will be required we'll make this one as true all right now inside this we are going to pass the product so for this product again we will copy these two part from here and we'll paste it so this will be again type uh, dot object id and here we are going to give this one as products all right this is all about the order items we need now next what we are having we are having the shipping address so for shipping address we basically need five things that we have done multiple times so we need the full name which will be type as string all right and also this required will be true let's copy this and we'll paste it four more times four five all right now here this will be our address then this will be city this will be country and this will be our postal code so these all are the things we need next we need a payment method all right see this one will be having a type of obviously string and this will be required as true and also here we are going to pass a default value and this default will be stripe so this is our payment method then we are having 
total price which will be type as number and required will be true let's copy this then we are having is paid paid at and is processing so here this will be is paid whether the uh, order is paid or not this will be of boolean required true then we are having paid at so this will be paid at so this will be type as date all right and record will be true and then we are having the total price total price i think we are already having sorry this will be is processing so this will be also type as boolean all right now here we are going to pass the timestamp and this will be true next we we'll create our order here so this will be mongoose dot models dot order or mongoose dot model here we are going to give order and this will be order schema and at the end we are going to do export default order that's it so these all are the things that we need to create a particular order whenever the stripe payment will be successful based on that we have to pass these details into our database and then we are going to store this one all right now next thing what we need to do we have to basically create three api routes the first one will be to create an order which will basically based on this one second one will be to get all the orders and third one will be to get the order details so we'll go to our api create another folder and let's give this one as order here we'll create three folder the first one will be create order then we'll be having sorry so where where was that so we're having order and then here we'll do get all orders next one will be order details so let's create our create order so this will be route dot js now whenever we will be creating a order so let's do one thing let's first copy this from here all right so this will be a post method definitely so we're going to do export async function this will be post we'll get the request so here we'll do try and we'll do catch so in the catch we are going to return the same thing so we can basically show something like this all right now here we are going to do await connect to db also what we need to do we have to check is auth user so this will be equal to await auth user of this request all right so here again we'll do data this will be good await request dot json all right but here what we need to do before that we are going to do if is auth user is true or else we are going to show that you are not authenticated and this is very important this is we need to check every time so here we'll do false and here we'll show you are not authenticated and inside of this if the user is authenticated we will get the data and now here what we need to do we will do const uh, save new order now here what we need to do we have to basically do await we'll do order from model dot create and here we are going to basically pass the data that we'll be getting all right and here we'll check if this save new order is true that means what we need to do here we need to do one very important thing we need to delete all the cart items for that particular user so the first thing if this is true we'll do await and then we'll do cart so this cart we are going to import from model and then here we are going to do delete many and here we are going to pass this user id which will be equal to the user that we are going to extract so we'll do const user which will get from data now this one i am talking about this user that will be passing 
all right so here we are going to pass this user so that means we are deleting all the cart items for this particular user because the payment is successful and we are creating a new order after this we will return something like next response dot json and we'll do success as true and we'll do a message something like products are on the way all right if this is not the case so we'll return the success as false and we'll do like failed to create a order please try again all right so this is all about the creating a new order now next thing is that we have to basically extract all the orders or basically whenever they will create some order we have to store that order in in the database and we'll be getting all the orders for that particular user so for this one we'll create another route here inside this get all orders so we'll do this one as route.js now this one again will copy this dynamic property from here and this will be export async function this will be a get request obviously then we'll do try catch and this we have done multiple times now i think you also will be able to do it so we'll copy the same thing from here and we'll paste it also let's import next response so in the try what we need to do first we'll do await connect to db then what we need to do we have to do uh, so let's do one thing let's use the same from here so this will be our auth user so if this is auth user is true then we'll able to get it or else we'll show that you are not authenticated so we'll copy this one and we'll paste it here that means you are not authenticated here also what we need to do so we'll do const search params this will be equal to new url of request dot url all right now here we'll do const id which will be equal to the search param dot get of id this id is basically the user id for that particular user all right now here const extract all orders this will be equal to avid and then this will be order dot find all right now here based on this user we have to find which is the id all right and then what we are going to do we'll populate so here we'll populate this order items dot product so we are having the order items here so you can see that all right so here what we'll do we'll do order items dot product also let's populate i think this is fine i think only i think uh, the products we need to populate this is fine then what we are going to do if this extract all orders is true so we are going to return next response dot json will do success as true and we'll do here the data which will be equal to this extract all orders else we'll show something like let's copy this paste it here success will be false and here we'll show a message like failed to get all orders please try again all right so this is all about to get all the orders that we need and next we are having the order details so we'll create this one also so this will be route.js now this order details again this is exactly the same thing all right for order details because we have to get the order id for that particular order and then based on that you have to extract so for this one we'll use the same logic that you have written here instead of rewriting the same thing exactly and here this will be export async function get request so here we'll do try catch and here we'll log the same thing all right so the first thing we have to connect to our database 
then you have to check the authenticated user or not see this is the same logic again and again so here we have to import this one if is auth user is true else we'll show the same thing again that you are not authenticated all right if this is true then again we will be extracting the id so we'll do the same thing here all right so this id is basically the product order id now here we'll basically do so let's do something like const get let's do extract order details this will be called avid all right so this will be order dot find so here based on this find well, let's make this one as find by id so we'll pass this id all right and then we are going to do populate and again this will be order items dot product that we want to populate all right also here uh, we can basically check something like if this id is not present so you are going to return this next response dot json will do success sorry success as false and we'll show a message like product id is required all right and next if this extract order details is true so we are going to return next response dot json sorry so this will be success as true and then here we are going to pass this data which will be our extract order details else we'll copy this one we'll paste it here this will be false and message again the same message that we have written here that is fail to get order details please try again fail to get order details please try again that's it so now let's save it so we've created our main three route one is create order get all orders and order details so now what we need to do whenever we'll come back to this status success page based on that we have to do all the functionality and we have to call this create order route so it will create the order it will store the data in the database and based on that we'll be showing something like your payment is successful view your orders and after that we'll be working on the order and order details page so let's do that in the next video hey everyone welcome back so now in the previous video we've created all the routes related to order now let's quickly create the services then we'll be start working with integration with the front end so we'll go to services so let's create our order and then we'll create index.js so first thing we basically need three methods so first one will be const create new order this will be async next we'll copy this we'll paste it two times and this will be get all orders and this will be get all orders for user and this will be get order details all right and remove this one so for this create new order we are going to receive the form data and here we'll do try in the catch we'll simply log the error and we'll use the same for all the other all right now here what we need to do this will be const response avid fetch so this will go to slash api slash order and then we are having create order so we'll do here create order then here we are going to pass the method as post then we'll pass the headers so here again for the headers we have to do the same thing this content type and the authorization so we'll pass it here these cookies we need to import from js cookie and then we are going to do body which will be equal to json dot stringify this form data all right now next we'll be doing const data which will be equal to avid raise dot json 
and at then we are going to return the data all right now for this one again it will be the same thing for get all orders so this will be const response equal to await fetch and here we're going to template literals will do slash api slash order and this will be get all orders get all orders slash here what we need to pass so basically whenever we'll get all the details sorry we have to basically pass the id so we'll pass the id here this id you are going to receive from the front end this will be the user id and here we are going to pass the method which will be get now here we need the headers but we don't need this content type only this much and then we are going to const data this will be equal to await race dot json and we are going to return the data all right so this is all about to get all the data and now for this one i'm going to use the same thing from here because this will be exactly same to get the order details instead of this id of the user id we have to do the id of that particular order and this will be our order details so instead of get all orders this will be order details all right so i think everything is done we have created the three routes now what we need to do whenever we created this uh, we'll go to our checkout page let minimize this one go to our checkout page now here what we need to do whenever we, this is successful that means we'll go to the stripe page and again come back on the route as i already told you we'll be able to check from this status that if the if that uh, payment is successful or not and if the payment is successful based on that we have to call that route that we have created just now and that is a create a new order all right so for this one the first thing what we can do we can go here and then we can create another state and this will be order success set order success this will be equal to use state of false that means order is not obviously first time it will be false now what we need to do basically we need to basically load here some kind of loader if the order is currently in the processing phase so for this one what we can do we can simply check you can see that we already make this set is order processing as true so we can check if this is order processing is true so we'll do return here this pulse loader that we have used so i think we are using some places so this part we can remove that this pulse ladder will be showing some loader in the middle of the page so you can copy this one and we paste it here and we'll pass this is order processing all right so this will be obviously true whenever we'll show some kind of loader if this is not the case when the order is successful that time what we need to do so that time basically what we can do we can take a use effect again so let's minimize this one all right so where you can do let's do it here so we'll do a use effect now here this is very very important what we need to do the first thing is that we have to basically take the params now params is basically this uh, route here so that i think we've already discussed so for this one we have a hook here and that is called use params all right so from this one we'll be able to check that uh, sorry this is not use param this will be use search params all right now let's go to our use effect and we'll give this params as a dependency all right so here what we can do we'll give this params dot get and here we'll give this status so that means we'll check what is the value of this status if this is success that means the payment is successful all right so this is one dependency and the second dependency is the cart items if the cart items length is greater than zero so now what we can do here we'll create another method so this will be async function create final order something like that and here we'll basically check the first thing what we need to do we have to do const is stripe this is stripe is basically 
you can see that we are having this e stripe as to this one this we have already saved so we can basically do here something like json dot parse and this will be locals sorry this will be local storage dot get item and this will be stripe all right so now here what we can do you can simply check if this is stripe is true and then params dot get of the status if this value is equal to equal to success that means the stripe payment is successful and and cart items and and cart items dot length if this greater than zero so what we are going to do the first thing is that we'll make this c set is order processing as true again all right and then we also have to get the order sorry get checkout form data from where we'll be getting again you can see that we, we have stored this checkout form data here all right so you can do json dot parts local storage dot get item and this will be this checkout form data that we need to get all right now again next we can do const create final checkout form data and this will be equal to first thing what we need to pass let's go to our models so you can see that we are having this models first thing is that we are having user so you're having user will be equal to user dot id all right next we are having this shipping address this shipping address is basically this get checkout form data dot shipping address all right then we are having order items so this order items is cart items dot map this will be items now here what we need to pass we need to pass quantity we'll pass this one as one for now then you have to pass the product which will be item dot product id this order items is again you can see that we are passing here order items user and the shipping address what else you do was payment method total price is paid paid at the time and the is processing so after this order items next we have to pass the payment method which will be equal to stripe i think this is the default value let's see okay now next we are having total price what is the total price now total price is basically this calculation that we have done this dot reduce all right so you can simply copy this part from here and then you can pass it here all right now next is is paid this will be true because the payment is successful we are able to see it from this one success this status is success then what else we are having is processing this will be false uh, sorry this will be true so uh, this will be in the processing state and then we paid at which will be equal to new date so this is our final data all right now next this will be const race equal to await and this will be create uh, create new order and here we have to pass this create final checkout form data let's make this one as data all right if this race dot success is true what are the things we need to do first we have to make this set is order processing is false and you have to make set order success as true that means order is successful all right and also you have to do toast dot success we'll do race dot message and here what you have to pass you have to pass the poison which will be equal to toast dot poison dot top right else what we need to do we again copy this one from here so set is processing will be false set order success will be false because there are some kind of error and this will be dot error all right now at the end what we need to do we have to call this create final order method and this is done so now let's save it now let's see what is happening so this is coming as this is fine first we'll go to our order all products 
see we are getting already products are on on the way that means that is successful let's create a new order all right so this is uh, let's do one thing let's create add this one we'll add this one and we'll add this one so we are having three products let's go to our checkout let's select this address and let's click on checkout so we are getting loader it's going to the stripe checkout we are getting three product here let's give some uh, mail here let's copy this card um, card from here let's give some normal data all right let's give some value here let's click on pay now let's see so you can see that now if this is successful so this will be success here it will go back there now it will show the loader so you're getting loader and then we have to show something here so you can see that still we are getting this one so let's see what is happening here so let's go to our network if i now go to our cart page this is empty now so what we need to do now one very important thing here we can do simply if this order success is true in that case we have to render something so we'll return here section all right so here let's give a class name so we'll do age screen bg gray 200 all right so here we'll take another div we'll give a class name so for this one we'll do mx auto px of 4 sm ex 6 large px 8 inside of this we'll take another div we'll give a class name here also we'll do mx auto empty of 8 we'll do max w screen excel px of 4 and we'll use the same here all right now inside this we'll take another div for this one we'll do class name we'll make this one bg white and shadow now let's take another div inside of this we'll take a class name here so for this one we'll do a px of 4 py of 6 smpx of 8 smpy of 10 we'll do flex flex column and gap of 5 inside this we'll take h1 and we'll show your payment is successful all right let's give a class name here we'll give a font bold and text large and here we are going to let's copy from here this this button and let's paste it here so we don't need this on click remove this disabled and this checkout this will be view your orders now let's save it now let's see you can see now it's coming here because the order is successful so now we'll check from the beginning again so we'll go to all products so now let's add here and also let's do one thing let's add our notification component also all right so now let's add this one we'll add three four five go to checkout let's add select this address here let's click on checkout all right so now we'll copy from here we'll give some email paste it quickly i'll just give this one some value all 
All right, now let's click on pay. So now it should go back to the status of success to so show the loader if this is success awesome so you can see that now we're getting payment is successful and you'll view your new uh, view your order so on click of that it will basically go to the orders page all right order list page and from there we'll be able to go to the order details page now this is working fine so now i think this is done checkout is almost completed so in the next video we will be start working on the orders page because we have already created all the routes so we just have to create our uh, front end panda and we have to integrate with our back end so that's all for this video see you in my next video hey everyone so in the previous video we have almost completed our uh, checkout functionality but there are quite a few improvements that we want to do so the first thing is that uh, let me just log in here so you remember that whenever the payment will be successful we are basically showing this uh, message that your payment is successful and then there will be on button now instead of doing like this what we want to do whenever the payment will be successful here in this part we want to show something message like that your payment is successful you will be redirected to the orders page in three second or five seconds and then after that particular duration we will be uh, redirecting that user to the corresponding orders page Alright, so this is one improvement that we need to do and second one is this is actually from the whole application perspective and this is very 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 important there are mainly two scenarios the first one is when the user is not logged in now when the user is not logged in that means that user is an unauthenticated user so in that case if the user try to access some of the routes which are protected some for example checkout route account cart page then the admin routes so whenever they will be try to access those routes they will be automatically redirected to the for example the home page or for example you can create some route like on auth page and they will be redirected back to that page second scenario is that when the user is already logged in but the user is not an admin user so in that case what will happen if they try to access these admin routes uh, for example, let's say if they give an admin view, but the current user is a customer, so they will not be able to access this page. So they will be redirected back to a unauthorized page or uh, unauthorized page. So that part also we need to create. So the first thing what we are going to do inside this app, we will create another folder here, and let's give this one name as orders. All right. Now here I'll create our page dot js. So let's the uh, do this one is use client now this one will be export default function this will be orders now here what i'm going to do i'll just return here for example div and uh, let's return here section and we'll give this one as your all orders for now now let's save this now we'll go to the checkout page now here what we want to do basically whenever this order is success so the first thing is that we will take a use effect here all right and here we'll keep this order success as a dependency and here we'll do if this order success is true so we will take a set timeout here and let's keep this set timeout for now like 2.5 seconds and then what we want to do the first thing is that we'll make this set order uh, success this one as false and then we want to navigate to the order page so this will be router.push slash orders so this is the page that we just created all right and if the order is successful so here instead of showing this button view your orders we'll remove this one from here we'll show something like this your order is successful and you will be redirected to orders page in three seconds all right so this is another thing we need to do all right now let's save this and let's see what is happening so let's go to our application and then we'll go to uh, let's see what is there in the cart i think we don't have any products let's go to our all products page and let's add this one into uh, cart we'll go to checkout all right so here uh, let's select this address and let's click on checkout so now we'll go to the stripe checkout we'll get some demo credit card from here let's paste it let's give some dummy gmail 
all right let's give cvb let's give some name here all right now let's click on pay now it should go back and then after three seconds we should be redirected to the orders page and let's see if this is working or not so it's going back getting loader and now if the payment is successful we should get that message let's see what is happening so you can see that your payment is successful you will be redirected and now it's going to the orders page now here for some second you are able to see that page and i think the reason because we are keeping this one as false we can remove this part here and instead of 2.5 let's give this one as uh, 1.5 or like uh, i think 1.2 second is fine i think yeah let's make this one as uh, 2 second let's check the whole process again so now card will be empty here so we'll go to the orders page sorry all products page we'll add this one into cart let's go to our checkout page let's select this one and let's click on checkout let's copy this so we'll paste it here all right let's give some name here let's give some dummy email for now and let's click on pay all right so we have to give a all right let's click on pay so we're getting loader all right awesome so now it's going to the orders page and here we will be basically getting all the orders so this is one thing that we have completed this is a very important part we need to do now let's work on this unauthenticated route section this is very important now from where we will be managing that one from context because whenever we will load any page we will be basically loading this context and from here we will be able to see if the user is a authenticated user or not but before that you can see that what we are checking here if the token is not undefined that means there is a token so the uh, the user is authenticated if not so auth user is false and also here what we can do we can simply do this set user as empty object that means we don't have any user information the user is unauthenticated so this is an unauthenticated user so here what we have to do the first thing is that we'll create here two routes one is protected uh, protected routes so this one the first one will be our cart then we are having the checkout sorry then we are having slash checkout then we are having slash account then we are having slash orders all right then uh, what else we are also having slash admin view then we are having the same admin view and then the all products slash you can see that if i go to admin view we are having all add product and all products both so these all will be uh, protected routes let's copy this and let's paste it here and this will be all products now second one will copy this and we'll paste it here and this one will be protected admin routes so which are the admin routes so we are having mainly three admin view add product and uh, all products so now what we need to do here we'll take another use effect all right and here we will keep this user as a dependency and also so what we can do we can take here const router equal to use router and also we'll take const path name equal to use path name all right so here we'll check this path name as a dependency also so the first thing if the user is not authenticated at all that means the user is not logged in so you can check here if this user and and object dot keys of this user dot length if this is zero so you can see that here we are having empty object so this is unauthenticated user and this protected routes 
dot index of this path name that means these protected routes whatever we are having this uh, array is consist of any of the route let's say we want to access the cart page so that means this index will be greater than minus one so this if this is greater than minus one so that means this user is not authenticated so in that case what will happen we'll do router dot push and it will go back to the slash page or let's make this one as slash login page so that means they need to log in all right and let's see if this is working or not let's save it so now let's see or right, this is fine now let's see if i now log out I refresh this page now let's say i want to go to the cart page see what will happen see it's going to the cart page but it's redirecting back to the login page if i try to go to the uh, checkout page see it's going back to the uh, login page again obviously the user will not able to uh, like nah, directly access the checkout checkout page but in case if they tries to in that case we have to navigate back to the login page so it's going to the orders and then it's going to the login page again all right same will be for the admin view also see it's going to the login page then admin view all products So it's going to the login page and then admin view add product it's going to the login page so they will not be able to access those pages so this is the first step now second step what we need to do here we will create another uh, file here for example let's give this one as uh, anoth or like anoth user not anoth user what we can give unauthorized page all right and let's keep here page dot js so here uh, what we can do we'll keep this one as use client so we'll do export default function unauthorized page unauthorized page let's remove this page i think this is fine now here what i am going to do return and let's go to our checkout and we'll return this same section here whatever we are writing the same thing instead of rewriting and instead of this we'll show that you don't have access to view this page all right and so i think this is fine for now all right so this is the unauthorized page now let's go to our context and here we'll take another use effect and here we'll keep this user and this path name as a dependency and here we'll check if this user is not equal to equal to null and and uh, user and an object sorry we have to do object dot keys of that user dot length if this is greater than zero that means the user information is available so that means the user is logged in but that user is not a admin user so user dot role is not equal to equal to admin and here we need to check if this protected admin routes dot index of this path name if this is greater than minus one so in this case we want to push this route to the unauthorized page so rename copy this and we will paste it here so let's see what exactly we have, we have done here so first we are basically checking if the user is exist or not then you are checking if the user is not admin user and if he tries to access any of the admin routes so they will be navigating back to the unauthorized page because he is a customer he will not be able to access any admin routes so now let's see if this is working or not so we'll go back and let's uh, log in with the different user all right so now let's try to go to the uh, cart page first so if i go to cart you can see that we are able to access cart but let's say i want to go to the admin view and let's see what is happening you can see that we are navigating back to the unauthorized page because he don't have access to view that page if i try to go to the admin view add product 
see again the same thing and if i go to the all products it will go to the unauthorized page and this is working fine and if i now just log out and then now let's go to the cart page so it's going to the login page again so both the use cases we have done now these uh, two things is very important that we need to do so these things we have completed so in the next video what we need to do we will be start working on the orders page so in the orders page we will be listing all the orders for that particular user and then we'll be working on the order details once these two things are done then what you have to do you have to work on the order status so remember whenever user is giving a particular order the order is currently in the processing phase so the order processing is true all right but you can see that here if i just go to this order processing this is true so now if you are admin user what you can do you will be able to process this particular order or basically you will be able to approve this order whenever you will approve this order this order will be delivered so this functionality also we need to do so these things we are going to do in the next video hey everyone welcome back so in the previous video we have almost completed the checkout page and also we have completed the main authentication part from the client end so whenever any unauthenticated user try to access a authenticated route they will be redirected back to the login page so in this video now what are the things that we need to finish so the first thing is that we have to start working on the orders page where we will be basically showing all the orders for that particular user then we have to render the order details page and also after that what we need to do we remember that whenever user will place an order the order will be basically in the currently uh, processing uh, phase now whenever any admin user will log in they will be able to deliver or basically approve that order and in that case that particular order will be marked as delivered so that functionality also we need to do and don't don't forget that we also have to work on the home page so let's start with the orders page so the first thing what i'll do let's go to our uh, app and here i'm going to create another folder let's give this one as orders i think we already have a orders all right so we already have a orders page so here now we will be start working on this particular page now for this one we already created the route so you can see that for this order we have this get all order this is the route so here basically we have to pass the user id and it will basically populate all the orders all right so let's do one thing let's create a method here so i'm going to create async function so this will be extract all order something like that and here we'll take a use effect and what we need to do we will basically take the user as a dependency and this user we are going to get it from the context so this will be our use context of global context and we are going to get the user also we need to get the page level loader from this so let's go to our state so you can see that we are having this page level loader so this one also we are going to extract all right so what i'm going to do so the first thing is that this set page level loader will be true all right now here what i'm going to do i'm just do if user if this not equal to equal to null then only i'm going to extract uh, all orders all right and now here we're going to do const race this will be equal to await and this will be i think get all orders for user and here i'm going to pass user dot id and if this race dot success if this is true so that means this is successful else what we'll do we'll import toast dot error and this will be race dot message and here we are going to pass the poison and this poison will be this toast dot poison dot top right all right also we have to make this set page level loader as false the same thing we need to do it here also this will be false and then what we are going to do let's do one thing uh let's create a global level state only also if you want you can create the state here also but let's do let's create here only so i'll create const orders uh let's make this one as all uh, all orders for user and this will be set all orders for user this will be equal to use state of 
empty array now let's copy this and we'll pass it here now let's go here let's extract it so here we are going to pass set all orders for user this will be equal to race dot data and also if this is true so it'll show some kind of toast message here also if you want you if you don't want to want you can just don't add it and i think this is done and now let's do one thing let's log here this uh, all orders for user and let's see what is happening let's save it now let's inspect we'll go to console and let's go to our slash orders page all right you can see that there are so many orders we are getting so these all are the orders let's try to do one thing let's try to log in with a different user and let's see what is happening so i'll log here let's give a different user i think we don't have with this user let's see with this two okay we have so now let's go to slash orders i think we have i created three orders for this one so we should get three data something like that all right so we don't have any uh, order only for this particular user so let's do one thing uh, let's go to our cart page first so we, we don't have any cart also we'll go to all products let's try to add this one to cart let's go to checkout all right so we don't have any address also so let's add a new address here so i'll give us sangam 2 address i'll give india i'll just give the same here just give some postal code let's save it all right so we got the address now let's go to our cart let's go to checkout now and uh, let's select this address let's check out and let's add this one here we'll quickly add some dummy data all right let's give some email here let's try to pay now what should happen it should go back and then it will show that you will be redirected to orders page in two seconds and then it should go to the orders page let's see all right so this is done and it's going to the orders page now let's see if we are getting only one order for this user or not see we are getting one order awesome so you can see that we are getting this order just now we have done and you can see the ease processing is true for this one so now these data we have to render all right and also here what we can do we can simply show here if this uh, page level loader is true so we are going to return i think we already use this pulse loader so we are going to use the same let's see let's copy this let's search it here i think we have used in some other place so here this one so you can copy this and we'll paste it here all right so now let's see all right this is not defined so i have to import this one so we should get some loader and then we'll get the data all right so now we are getting data so now this one we have to render so let's start working on the ui part so we'll take section only for this one and let's take a class name here we'll do a age screen and we'll do bg gray 200 we'll take another div inside of this let's take a class name so we'll give mx auto px of 4 sm px of 6 and large px of 8 inside this we'll take another div we'll give a class name we'll do mt of 8 we'll do max w screen excel we'll do px of 4 and use the same from here so we'll use copy from here and we'll paste it here all right now let's take another div inside this now here we'll take another div let's take a class name so we'll give a px of 4 
py of 6 sm px of 8 and sm py of 10 let's take another div we'll give a class name of flow root and here we are going to check if this all orders for user and and all orders for user dot length if this is true or else we'll show some kind of that no orders found something like that so for now we'll keep this one as null only so we're going to do all orders so let's do one thing let's take a ul here all right now here we'll do all orders dot map oh, sorry orders for user dot map this will be item and also for this ul we are going to take a class name so we'll do minus we'll do sorry let's make this one as flex flex column and gap of four so for this one we are going to return a li first thing we are going to give some key key will be item dot id all right and let's give a class name here so we're going to give bg of white we'll do shadow we'll do p of five we'll do this on flex flex column we'll do space y3 py of six and text left all right now inside this li let's format this now inside this li we are going to take another div let's take a class name of flex now here we are going to take the h1 now here what we can do uh, let's take some class name also for this one we'll do font as bold we'll do text large we'll do mb of three and we'll do flex of one and here uh, let's take her order and then we are going to render this order id which is item dot id all right that's it and after this h1 we are going to take another div we'll take a class name so for this one we'll take flex and item center we'll take a p here and this will be total paid amount we'll take a class name so we'll do mr of 3 text sm we'll do font medium we'll do text gray 900 all right and let's copy this let's paste it here and this will be the amount so here what we are going to do we'll take a dollar and we'll just render item dot total price all right if we want let's make this one as 2 excel and let's make this one as semi bold and i think this is fine all right so now after this div we are going to take here another div let's take a class name of flex gap of two so here we are having the order items if i now just go back and see that we are having this order items here so what we can do we'll do item dot order items dot map so this will be our order item and here we are going to return a div all right let's take also the index here and we're going to pass the key as this index for this one we'll take a class name of shrink of zero and inside this div we are going to take the image so this will be the order item dot so let's make this one and you can see that if i now go here we are having order item and then product and then we are having this image url so this will be order item and an order item dot product and an order item dot product dot image url all right let's take a class name so we'll do a class name of height of 24 width of 24 we'll do max w full we'll do rounded lg and we'll do object cover let's give a alt here so alt will be order item 
all right so let's format this now what else we need we also have to show some kind of button that whenever the uh, the product that we are currently seeing that is or basically the order not the product currently is in the processing phase or not so for this one what we can do let's do this one after this so we are going to take another div here and let's take a class name of flex and here we are going to basically check if this item or let's take uh, let's do one thing something like this uh, let's go to some component let's go to checkout and here let's go below and we'll copy this button same button we have to use we don't need this disable property we don't need this class name also let's remove this w full also let's see how it is showing so we're having checkout so what we are going to do we'll check if this item uh, dot is processing if this is true so we are going to basically show something like order is processing all right what else it will show order is delivered something like that all right now also uh, let's take another button here below this only and we'll uh, let's give a gap also gap of five for example and here we are going to give this one as uh, order details view order details something like that and i think that's it so now let's do one thing let's also import the notification component let's save it and let's see awesome so you can see that order is processing view order details on click of this we have to go to the order details page all right and let's do one thing uh let's give this mx auto here also all right so now this is fine so this order will be automatically delivered whenever an admin user will approve this order all right for now this is fine Let's create another order quickly and let's see if that is uh, showing here or not. So we'll go to all products. Now let's try to add this one and this one. Go to checkout, select this address and let's check out. So now let's copy this paste it here i quickly just fill this all right let's give some email here also let's click on pay so now when it will go to the orders page we should see uh, two orders instead of one let's see if this is working or not so order is processing now it should go to the orders page awesome job now see we are getting two order now and both the others currently in the uh, processing phase and this is done so now on click of this we have to go to the order details page so that we are going to do in the next uh, video hey everyone welcome back so now in this video we are going to start working on the order details page but before that uh, there are two things we need to do the first thing is that uh, let's go to our code let's remove this height uh, age of screen because it will be basically fixed kind of that we have given so we don't need this one and next uh, let's go to our account page so we are having account and then here you can see that we are having this orders view orders button something like that so view your orders so for this one uh, what we can do we can import the router from use router and then we can basically navigate the user to the order, uh, orders page so this will be router dot push and this should go to the orders page all right so now let's see so let's go to our uh, account page so now let's click here and we are getting the orders awesome so now let's uh, create the order details page so let's go to our orders 
and here I'm going to create a folder. Now this will be a dynamic component and let's give this one as order details. And here I'm going to give page.js. All right, so let's quickly create the component. So this will be also if you want, you can make this one as a server component also, but I'll keep this one as a client for now. So here this will be export default function. This will be order details. All right, now let's return. So return simply order details page. Let's format this. Now, now what we are going to do, we'll go to our orders page. Now here you can see that we are having this view order details. So for this one, we are going to import const router equal to use router. And then uh, on click of this, it will go to the, that page should so take on click. And then here, this will be router dot push. And this should go to the, sorry, this will be slash orders slash. And then what we have to pass, we have to basically pass this item dot ID. So let's save this. Let's see what is happening. Now let's click here. See. So we're going to the order details page. Now let's go back. Let's click here. We're going to the order details page. So whenever go, we'll go here, we'll be able to extract this value. And based on that, we have to basically call the API. All right. So now let's do the same. So we'll go here in the order details page. We'll simply create a uh, method. So this will uh, sync function extract order details. All right. Now for this one again, we will basically do the same thing. So we'll copy all of this, this context one and we'll paste it here. We have to import this one. Now instead of all orders for user, we are going to take another state in our context. So let's do here. So we'll do const order details or we are having some order details already. I think we don't have, okay. Set order details. This will be called to use state of null. Now let's copy this and we'll paste it here. All right. The same we are going to extract here and also don't need user in this case. All right. Now next, what we are going to do, the first thing is that We'll make this set uh, set page level loader as true and then we'll do const response and this will be equal to await and this will be get order details and here we have to pass the orders but how we will basically get now for this one this is simple we'll just do const params and this will be equal to use params and now let's log here this params and let's see what is happening and I'll just comment this one for now. I think we don't have to comment because we are not calling this anywhere. So let's save it and let's see. So we'll go to our console. We are getting an object and here we are having this order details. You can see. So this one will get the ordered number for this particular page. So what we can do, we can simply pass here these params of this order details. Done. And now let's log this response here and let's see what we are getting. So what we can do, we can simply take use effect and, and here we'll keep this on empty and we'll call this extract order details. Let's save it and let's see. All right, so we're getting success true and data. So we are getting the data here. You can see that we are getting all the data. So that means this is working fine. So now what we can do, I think this you already know. So if race dot success is true, we'll make this set page level loader as false again. Else it will be also false. And uh, what else? I think we, we have to set this one. So set order details will be race dot data. That's it. And also, let's go here. So we'll copy this part from here. And 
and we will paste it here if this is true so we are going to show the loader and i think we are good so now let's remove this let's save it let's see so we're getting the data back if i now just go back and let's click on this order and we are getting the data back so you can see that so now we have to just work on the ui part now there are quite a few things we need to do so let's start working one by one so here we'll take a div and let's now it's up to you whatever you want to if you want to that means i'm talking about the design so the design of the page it's up to you how however you basically want to organize so it's not like that you have to just blindly copy whatever i am writing that is the reason i just want to mention so i'll take a class name so let's take a py of 14 px of 4 md px of 6 all right now inside this we'll take a div We'll take a class name we'll make this one as flex justify start we'll do item start we'll do space y of 2 and we'll do flex column now inside of this we'll take a h1 and here we are going to render order space and then here we'll return this we are having this order details dot id all right for this one we'll take a class name so what we can do we'll make this on a three excel text then for large we are going to do text for excel so we'll do font bold we'll do leading seven for large we are going to do leading nine and we'll do text gray 900 let's save it let's see what we are getting all right we are getting the order uh, details uh, sorry order id now after this we'll take a p we'll give a class name here so we'll give text base we'll do font medium we'll do leading six and we'll do text gray 600 now here what we want to do if i now just show you the data So you can see that we are having this created at and then we are having this date and the time so we can basically able to split it with this t all right so here what i am going to do so basically and also this time also you can split it all right so we can basically take here something like this so we'll do order details and and order details dot so this is created at created at and and order details dot created at dot split so you're going to split it with t all right and then we're going to take the first one so this is the first step now here we'll give some kind of like this divider and now let's copy this one now what we are going to do basically here the first thing we're going to take the first element all right and then again we'll do dot split we'll do with dot you can see that we are having this dot and then we are going to take the first element of this so this is basically the time all right let's save it let's see so you can see that we are getting the time and everything this is fine now next what else we need so we'll take another div so let's take a class name we'll do mt of 10 we'll do flex flex column all right we'll do justify center for excel we'll do flex row we'll do item stretch all right we'll do w sorry w full for excel we're going to do space x of 8 and for md we are going to do space y of 6 for excel we are going to do space y of 0 all right now again we are going to take another div let's take a class name we'll do flex flex call sorry flex call we'll do justify start item start we'll do w full we'll do space 
y of 4 for let's copy this so um, let's write it md space y of 6 and for x cell we are going to space y of 8 all right now inside this we are going to take another div we'll do a class name so for this one we'll take flex flex column we'll do justify start we we'll do item start all right we'll do bg gray of 50 we'll do px of 4 py of 4 all right for md we'll do py of let's make md p of 6 excel will do p of 8 and also we'll take w full let's make this one as flex all right so now after this we're going to take a p and this will be your order summary let's take a class name we'll do font bold text large and i think this is fine let's format this let's save it let's see what we are getting all right fine now next what we are going to do so after this paragraph we are going to basically map the order items that we are having for that particular order so if i now show you we are having these order items that we have already done so what we are going to do we'll do order details and and order details dot order items and and order details sorry order details dot order items dot length if this is true or else null so we'll just do order details dot order items dot map this will be item and here we're going to return a div we'll do a key so which will be item dot id all right and for this div we have to take a class name so we'll do mt of four we'll do md mt of six we'll do flex flex column all right md will do flex of row we'll do justify start items start we'll do md md item center all right md we're going to do space x of six excel space x of eight and w full all right now inside this we'll to take another div here let's take a class name so for this one we'll do pb of 4 md pb of 8 w of full and md w of 40 we'll take the image here and let's make the source so source will be basically this item and an item dot product and an item dot product dot image url all right and here we are going to take a class name so we'll do w full we'll do hidden and for md only we are going to show this one so md will do block that's it so now let's format this so this is about the image now let's save it and let's see whether we are getting that or not so we have done what you have done we have to do map all right so we are getting the image here this is fine now if i now just go back let's click for this one so we're getting two image this is fine so now what else we need to do so after this div we are going to take another div here let's take a class name so we'll do border b we'll do border gray 300 we'll do md flex row we'll do flex column we'll do flex justify between item start w of full pb of 8 we'll do space y of 
for an md space y of 0 all right inside this we are going to take another div let's take a class name so we'll do w full we'll do flex flex column justify start we'll do item start and we'll do space y of 8 now inside this we are going to take h3 and here we are going to basically render the name so i'll just copy it from here paste it here and this will be name for this one let's take a class name so we'll do text excel all right we'll do font semi bold we'll do leading six and text gray 900 let's save this all right so we are getting the name now all right so now what else we need to do all right so now what else we need to do we can copy the same and we'll paste it here here we'll take a dollar and make this one as price all right and we can basically here we remove this flex column what else we will make this one as between item start i think item start we can keep and we'll make space x of 8 this is fine let's save it and let's see all right so now this is fine now what else we need to do all right so after this now here we will take another div we have to render the total price and also you have to render the shipping free something like that those things will do flex we'll do justify center we'll do flex column we'll do md flex row we'll do item stretch we'll do w full space y of 4 do md space y of 0 all right we'll do md space x of 5 and for excel we are going to do space x of uh, how much we can make this one as 8 now let's take another div here we'll do class name we will do this one as flex flex column all right we'll do px of 4 py of 6 md will do p of 6 all right and excel will do p of 8 we'll do w full we'll do bg gray 50 and we'll do space y of 6 now inside this we'll take h3 we'll make this one as summary for h3 i think we are using some class name let's use the same all right now after this we are going to take a div now here we are going to take a class name we'll make flex we'll do justify center we'll do item center we'll do w full space y of four flex column we'll do border gray of 200 we'll do border b and we'll do pb of four all right now inside this we are going to take another div we'll make a class name here so we'll do flex justify between and we'll do w full let's take two p here so one will be subtotal for this one we'll take another one and this will be our total price so here what we can do dollar and then we'll make this one as order details and then order details dot total price all right so now let's take some class name for this one also we'll make this one text base leading 5 we'll do text day 800 for this one we'll make this one the same but only let's change the class name for the uh, color so we'll make this one as for example 500 so this is one we need now next we need one for the shipping and one for the uh, total all right so we'll paste it two more times so this will be our shipping and this will be free all right and here it will be also same save it let's see what we are getting 
all right so we are getting this is looking little bit odd let's make this one as 900 all right so now this is fine also you have to render the uh, user information now so that we are going to do all right so let's do one thing so after this div here okay after this we are going to render another div here let's take a class name so here we are going to do bg gray of 50 we'll do w full for excel we're going to w 96 we'll do flex justify between we'll do item center all right md we're going to do item start we'll do px of 4 py of 6 all right and let's make this on a flex column all right now inside this we'll take a h3 and make this one as customer details let's use the same class name that we are using all right so now after this what we need to do we also have to render all the user information so we're going to take another div here let's take a class name so for this one we are going to make this one as flex flex column we'll do justify start we'll do item start and we'll do flex shrink zero now here we'll take another div we'll take a class name we'll make flex justify center we'll do w as full for md we'll do justify start we'll do item center we'll do space x of zero sorry four and we'll do py of eight we'll do border b and border gray 200 now here we are going to take another see here if you want to render you can render some kind of image some kind of avatar you want to render but for now i'll just simply render let's take a paragraph and what we can do we can simply render this order details so if i now go in the console so here you can see that we don't have any user information for now so if you want you can basically you can simply get the user from the context and the same we can render here so this will be user and then we are going to render it here so this will be our user dot name and then also you can render the email All right, so for this one, let's use a class name. So we'll use a class name of text base. We'll do font semi bold. We'll do leading of four. We'll do text left and we'll do text gray 900. Let's make this on 950. Let's copy this, paste it here and let's save and let's see what we are getting. So we are getting here but this should be on this side so that we need to check all right so i think what we can do let's see where this div is ending so i think we have to paste it after this no not this one this one so this div that we have just created this one so we'll cut it from here and let's paste it after this and then in that case also remove this justify between and here uh, we'll make this one as flex column now let's see all right so this is fine but this is looking some kind of odd so we'll give here some something like name and this will be email and what else we can do we can remove this item center from here and also let's give a gap of four all right so this is fine but we are getting some kind of 
spacing here so let's see all right so i think we are using some spacing here so that we need to remove let's remove this one all right so now this is fine all right now next thing what we are going to do we also have to render the uh, shipping ad address for this particular user so what we can do after this div where this is end so here so we'll take another div after this let's take a class name here so for this one what we'll do we'll do flex we'll do justify between we'll do excel height of full we'll do item stretch w of full flex column we'll do empty of six and we'll do md empty of zero all right now inside this we're going to take another div here we'll take a class name we'll make this one flex justify center for md we are going to do justify start for excel we'll do flex column we'll do flex column normally then we are going to do md sorry md space x of six all right for large we are going to do space of 8 all right for excel we are going to do space x of 0 space y of 0 will do and now let's copy this and let's paste it two more times so here for md we are going to make uh, y of 0 and what else for large or excel we are, we are going to do space y of 12 all right for md we are going to do flex row we'll do item center and we'll do md item start all right now inside this we are going to take another div we'll make this on class name we will do flex justify center We'll do md justify start we'll do item center we'll do md item start all right we'll do flex column we'll do space y of four for excel we'll do mt of eight all right now inside this we're going to take p and this will be our shipping address now let's do one thing let's copy it and let's paste it one two three four five so this one will be our order details and and order details dot shipping address dot address all right let's copy this paste it here so this will be our city this will be our country and let's do this one as postal code all right now let's see what we are getting first let's save it all right so we are getting but something is breaking all right so this part we need to check so what we can do for this one we'll create another div here and then inside this div we are going to cut it and then we'll paste it here and then this div we are going to give a class name of flex flex column gap of 5 now let's see all right so we are having customer details and this is the shipping address so we are getting all the uh, things here if we want we can also do something like this so this will be address this will be city all right this will be country and this will be postal code all right so this is done what else we need to render we'll render another button here so let's do one thing so after this part 
or here only we can do so let's go here let's copy the button any button we can copy and we'll paste it here and this will be like shop again all right so this will basically navigate to the slash page also you have to remove this disabled from here i think we can also remove from here also we don't need so now we'll go to the top i'm going to render const router this will be equal to use router that's it now let's save all of this and let's see what you're getting so you're getting this on now on click of this it's going to the this page let's go to account let's click on view your orders let's click here so you're getting the details let's go back let's click here so you can see that we are getting this on. also from this particular page what we can do we can remove this bg only we don't need we'll, what we can do we can remove this part it's looking very odd all right so now this is fine also if you want you can give some kind of background for this let's see what is how this is looking here instead of this one what we can do we'll copy this part from here and let's give pg gray here instead of giving there let's remove this part all right now i think this is looking better all right so now this is fine and everything is done what else is left so now we are going to working on the one of the most important functionality and that is this processing phase so that part and any admin user can will be able to change this processing to delivered state so that we are going to do in the next video hey everyone welcome back so in the previous video we almost completed the order and order details now there are quite a few things we need to do so what i noticed uh, while testing that sometimes you might face this uh, mongodb error that if i now go to the order you'll see that we are using this reference as products and users so you might get some kind of uh, api error that it is not able to basically find this particular reference so it's better you just import this uh, product from this product and also just give the reference of this user from this user so this is one thing the next thing is that in the let's go to our order details page and here we want to give this one is order details and and order details dot id so that whenever the page will load if uh, it's not getting the id immediately so it might give you some kind of uh, error that id of undefined all right now last what we want to do and that is you see that we are using this protected routes here and we are having all the routes now because in the previous video we have worked on this order details page and that is a dynamic component so we can't directly put it here so what we can do we can simply remove this slash from here and let's see how we are going to do this remove this one we'll keep orders and here we'll only keep the admin view so we want to check if any of the route that we are accessing if this includes this particular text or not so for example if it's a order detail space so obviously orders will be included in that particular uh, path name so what we can do here in this particular logic that we are going to the login page whenever the user is not authenticated so we can basically check if the path name that we are having if this is not equal to equal to uh, slash register because for register it is not required to the user or um, have to be authenticated for this register page so any user can uh, check this particular or go to this particular register page but for this protected route dot in, uh, index of instead what we can do we can do in dot includes so any of the protected routes if this includes this particular uh, routes here then only it will go to the login page and let's see if this is working or not so let's say i'm not authenticated now let's i want to go to the orders page and let's see what is happening so it's going to the login page if i try to go to the orders and then slash order details so this is order details page it should go back to the login page all right 
so this is another thing is done so now let's do one thing we have to work on this order processing uh, logic so whenever you will place an order the order will be processing for the first time and if you are admin user you will be able to see all the orders for all the users and then you will be able to change the status of your order from processing to delivered so for this one let's go to our uh, register page and i want to register some particular user so here let's give a user name sangam3 and let's give this one as sangam3 i'll use the same password and i'll make this user as a admin user and let's register all right so user is registered let's give sangam3 and let's log in all right so now uh, we will go to the admin view and here we will be able to see all the orders so let's work on this one so i'll go to our api and here inside this admin i'll create another folder and let's give this one name as orders and this is inside admin all right this order that we are this is different and here i'll create two folder and this will be get all orders and second one will be update order now let's create this route dot js all right now let's close everything else so the first thing what we are going to do let's go to any other route let's copy this dynamic property let's paste it here and this will be a get method so this will be export async function get we get the request all right and this will be try and this will be catch we'll log the catch here and then we'll return next response dot json so here we'll return success as false and we'll return some message like let's copy it from here something went wrong now here what we're going to do we'll do await connect to db and then we have to check if the user is an authenticated user or not so we'll do is auth user and this will be able to await auth user of this request all right now here what we need to do let's go to our add product and you can see that we are checking that if this role is admin or not so if the user is admin user or not so what we can do we can just simply take this and else we will show that you are not authenticated something like that that's it now inside this what we are going to do will get all orders get all orders this will be await then order dot find so we sorry what we have done we have to do this one as await and this will be order dot find now here we need all the orders for all the other user all right and here this will be we want to populate something so what we want to populate we want to populate order items dot product so you can see that we are having this order items dot product in our model this is order items and also let's uh, populate the user and this will be dot populate and we want so uh, we want to also populate the user here all right now here we'll do if this get all orders is true so we are going to return so let's copy this paste it here so this will be true and here we are going to pass the data which will be our get all users that's it else we will show something like that fail to fetch the orders so we'll show failed to fetch the orders please try again after some time so this is one route that we need all right now let's go to the second one so which is to update a product so here we'll create another route this will be route.js so here let's copy this dynamic property and here this will be export async function this will be put this will be request so we'll to try catch now here let's copy from here instead of rewriting the same thing again and again so we'll paste it here 
so here we'll do avid connect to db all right now here we'll do this one we have to check if the user is authenticated or not all right and then we'll use the same logic that if the user is a admin user or not else we'll say you are not authenticated so let's take it from here all right so now what we need to do so here what we are going to do first we are going to extract all the details from the uh, the data that we are going to receive so first we'll do const data equal to await request dot json and here we are going to extract everything from data so the first thing we need the id we need the shipping address we need the order items all right we need the payment method all right next we need the is paid then we need the paid at and also we need the is processing the same this thing we are going to update so these all the things we are going to basically receive and then what we are going to do we'll do const update product sorry update order and this will be going to avid order dot find one and update and here we are going to pass this id all right as this id then here what we are going to do we'll uh, pass all the values and here we'll do new equal to true so here we'll copy all of this and we'll just pass it here that's it so this will update that particular order and then here what we can do if this update order is true so we'll simply return here success will be true and this will be product status sorry order status updated successfully else we'll copy this and we'll do here failed to update the status of order that's it all right so now this is done so now let's go to our services and here what we can do we already having product we already having order so inside these services we can create a admin uh, user if we want or let's do one thing okay we are already having this uh, product but here we are doing all the related to product we can do one thing uh, let's go to our order only and here we can create the method so let's do one thing let's copy the same method that we are using this is the get all orders for user this is a for a particular user but for admin user this will be get all orders for all users because admin user will be able to see all the orders we don't need anything here and then you have to go to api slash admin then you have to go slash orders and then get all orders all right so this is one we need now second thing we need we'll copy this and this will be update status of order so here we need the form data so this will be api slash admin slash orders and then slash update order so method will be put and here we need the content type which will be application slash json and also you have to pass the body so body will be json dot stringify this form data so we have two more which is to get all the orders for a user and this is to update the status of order all right so this is done so we have created two routes 
and also two services file now in the next video what we are going to do we will be basically fetching all the orders here and then on click of the button we have to update that particular order and let's see how we are going to do that in the next video hey everyone welcome back so in the previous video we have completed the two api routes now in this video what we are going to do in this particular admin view we are going to fetch all the orders and based on that we have to basically update that particular order so let's do one thing let's start so i'm going to do this one as use client now here uh, what we are going to do let's go to our context so we'll go to our context and we'll create another state here so we'll do this one as const all orders for all users and then this will be let's copy this and this will be set all orders for all users all right so let's take this one as use state of empty array now let's copy this and let's paste it here all right now let's go here so you are going to basically extract this one from use context of global context all right now let's create the method so we are going to do async function extract all orders for all users all right and here we are going to do const race equal to await this will be get all orders for all users and let's log here this response and let's see what we are getting so we are going to do use effect and then we are going to take here user so this user is basically this current user so we are going to having this user so we are going to check if this user is not equal to equal to null then only i want to call this extract all orders for all users so let's save it and let's see what we are getting so let's go to our console you can see that we are getting 18 uh, data so that means we are having all the orders for all the users and you, you can also get the user information from here now what we are going to do now you might think that okay i am ordering a particular order and i am admin user so i will be able to change the status it's not like that so what we are going to do from this particular user we are going to filter so the current user will not be able to see his orders his orders will only be seen by other admins all right um, i hope you're getting so let's say there are two admins and i'm an admin so i will not be able to see my own orders the other admin will able to see that particular orders so for this one what we are going to do so we can simply do something like this so we'll check if this race dot success is true all right and also let's do one thing let's copy this uh, page loader and this set page level loader so let's paste it here so we are going to make this set page level loader as true and here we are going to do set page level loader as false else this will be false again sorry we have to keep it inside now here what i am going to do i am going to do this on a set all orders for all user and this will be equal to this race dot data and and race dot data dot length if this is true so we are going to do set uh, race dot data dot filter we are going to get the item now if you see the response here let's go here so you can see that we are having this user and we'll be getting this uh, id here so we are going to basically take this user so this will be item dot user dot id is not equal to equal to this user dot id all right or else this will be empty so you have to do here so that means we are basically filtering based on the current user so now let's uh, log this all orders for all users now let's save it so in this case we should uh, get 18 result because for this particular user we don't have any order so let's see if this is working or not so what i'm going to do 
I will order a but I will place a order from this particular user now in that case the number should be 19 but here we will be able to see only 18 because the latest order we should not get here because this is the user is currently ordering so let's see if this is working or not so we'll go to client view first uh, let's go to all orders sorry all products and then here I'm going to do uh, add to cart All right, now let's go to checkout. Sorry, we don't have any address also for this user, so you have to add a new address. So we'll do Sangam3. I'll add the dummy user, give some, and let's give a postal code. Let's save it. So now let's go to our cart. Let's go to checkout select this address and click on checkout so i'll just quickly fill this let's click on pay All right, so now it should go to the orders page. Awesome. So we are getting one order. So now see the number of orders is 19. So this is admin user. So if I now go to the admin view, we should not able to see this order because mm -hmm. then obviously I will be able to change the status. So now let's go to the admin view and let's see what is happening. See, we are still getting uh, 18 here, but the number of data is 19. So you're not getting the last data. If I go to the last one, right, you see, this is Sangam 3. So I'm filtering this one. All right. So this is done. So now what you need to do, you just have to create the structure. So let's quickly create this one. So we'll do section here. All right. Let's take a class name. Uh, for this one uh we don't need any class name let's remove this one we'll keep it simple so we'll do we'll take some div let's take a class name of mx auto then px of four smpx six and large px eight or let's do one thing i i'm thinking that we are spending so much time on css the same structure that we are having for these orders so let's quickly go to the orders page so the same structure we will basically show here so let's copy the same structure from the orders page instead of rewriting so many css so we'll go here and from this div we are going to copy this one and we'll paste it here all right now there are quite a few things we need to do the first thing is that this should be all orders for all users all right then we are having order id uh, this order ID is fine and uh, let's see how this is looking based on that we'll change this order image URL basically we don't need here this item dot processing this is order is processing or order is delivered this is correct and instead of view order details we are going to do this one as update order status all right let's remove this on click from now so this is fine so now let's format and let's save it let's see what we are getting so we'll go to our admin view all right so we are getting all the orders here okay let's also give some kind of loader so that we are using so we can copy the same here and we'll just import this one and let's save it all right now what we are going to do we don't want to render this uh, image here and instead of total paid amount we want to basically render the user information here so let's go here so this will be our uh, username or user or whatever like let's give username only and here we are going to do item dot user dot and this will be i think name okay so now let's see what we are getting and also let's remove this 
डॉलर सो यूजर नेम इज संगम एंड ऑल्सो लेट्स रिमूव द मार्जिन फ्रॉम हियर वी आर गोइंग टू डू टेक्स्ट एस एम ओके एंड लेट्स लेट्स कॉपी दिस लेट्स पेस्ट इट हियर एंड लेट्स सी हाउ दिस स्ट्रक्चर इज लुकिंग नाउ सर्विंग यूजर नेम एंड देन यूजर नेम हियर लेट्स गिव ए गैप ऑफ थ्री and it's this will be our user email so this will be email okay but here we are getting something let's check all right now let's do one thing uh, let's remove this part from here we'll take another div here we're going to take class name we'll do flex flex column gap of 2 and now let's uh paste this two part here inside of this okay so we are having user name user email this is the order id and uh let's keep it like this only so we are showing all the images this is fine and if we want we can also keep the total price also so let's copy this paste it here so will be total paid amount and this will be i think uh, let's check what is the so we'll go to our console i think we are in total price so this will be our dollar item dot total price that's it all right so now what we need to do we are having all the other users uh, uh, order here so we will be able to update uh, the user data here all right so we are having the or basically the update the status on click of this you have to call that api and based on that this should not only update here this should also update in the corresponding use um, user uh, orders page so what we are going to do we'll just do here on click okay and we'll just do handle update order status all right and here let's do one thing let's pass this item so let's create this method so we'll do function and the update order status get item now here what we are going to do basically whenever we will click on that particular product we have to basically get the id and that id we are going to pass to uh, update the status so let's do one thing let's make this one as async and here we'll do const response equal to await and this will be update status of order all right and here what we are going to do we have to basically pass the form data this form data is basically at the end this uh, item that we are basically receiving so this is the whole item we need to pass here and as well as you have to pass the is processing and this will be now false so this is now no, uh, this is currently not in the processing phase all right so now here we have to do if this race dot success is true so what we are going to do basically we will be again calling the same orders to get the updated orders all right so here we are just going to do extract all orders for all users let's save this let's see what is happening so now uh, let's try to update this one let's click here so we are getting some error let's see what is the error so we'll go down we are getting that next response is not defined so i think we haven't you uh, imported the same in our admin orders update so here we have to import next response save it now let's see so let's say i want to update this one see order is now delivered so this order is now delivered now if i now go to this sangam2 and if i log in for this particular user you will be able to see this is as delivered if i now log out let's log in and let's go to this sangam2 user let's go to account view your orders 
order is delivered this order is still in the processing now you'll see one thing i'll log out let's log in go to register let's try to add another user so i'll add another user here and i'll make this one as admin only and let's register so let's log in i'll go to sangam 4 let's log in and i'll go to admin view and i'll see if i just call down you'll be able to see this sangam 3 user awesome so you can see now this is the user just i ordered a new order for this one you see order is still in the processing if i now update this order status see order is now delivered so if i now just log out log in and log in with sangam 3 log in now let's go to account view your orders see order is now delivered here so this is done all right so another thing let's do so let's show the information also whenever we'll update something so we'll just import this toast or i think this is fine because we don't have to do we can do something like this we have to show some kind of uh, loader so for this one we are going to copy this one this component level loader you remember we used in so many places and here while updating this one uh, what we can do we can make this set component level loader and we'll do loading as true and we'll do id as this get item dot id so if this is done we'll make this one as false and id will be empty else we'll do this one as empty and this will be false so now what we can do we can basically go here and we can basically check if this component level loader and and component level loader dot loading this is true and and component level loader dot id is equal to equal to this item dot id so we are going to import component level loader or else this will be update your status and here we need to pass all the props so let's see where you um, we are using that one so let's copy this one and let's pass it here and this will be updating order status let's save it now let's see so now let's go do one thing let's log out let's log in i'll log in with sangam 4 login i'll go to account sorry i have to go to admin view and here uh, if i try to update this one see now this is uh, order is delivered so now i think this is done and also if the order is delivered so you can see that here we have to give some disable property so here we can basically check if this item dot is processing if this is false all right and here we are going to do disabled and we'll do opacity as 50. so now you'll not be able to update any order status because this is already delivered let's try to update this one so this is delivered and this is done so i think we have completed a lot of things in this project now what are the things we left so only thing is left is in the home page now in the home page mostly it is like pretty simple html we have to write only basic css so that we are going to do in the next video all right everyone so we have now almost completed most of the things now in this video we are going to start working on the home page so let's go to our page.js and here so let's take a local state so this will be our products set products and this will be now the reason why i'm not taking this one in the global context because if you see we generally don't have any kind of that much state management here and these all are kind of static free images that i will use the link but here in this portion we'll be only showing some of the products only the two products and these are uh, are the products that currently in the sales now i will recommend one thing that instead of uh, exactly copying the same thing you can also modify this home page you can add some other functionality also also later in the future i'm i'm planning to add more features in this uh, particular website because there are a lot of things you can add all right so now that is the reason i will take some simple uh, 
local state for this one and then here we, we are going to basically fetch the list so we'll do this one as async function get list of products all right and this will be const race await and let me just check the what is the services name so your product and then we are having the i think we are having i think this is the one we are using get all admin products i think the same we can use all right and let's import it that's it so if race dot success is true so this set products will be this race dot data and we are going to take use effect all right and here on page load we are going to call this method because this uh, anyone can access these products let's save it and let's log here and let's see what we are getting in these products so we'll go to inspect let's go to our console so we are getting 15 so we are getting all the products here awesome so now let's uh, start working on the JSX part and this is mainly the JSX we need to work here all right so here what I'm going to do inside this uh, we are going to take a section all right uh, let me just check another thing I think uh, we already have main here so no need to give um, main here also so what we can do simply or let's keep it like this uh, later if you record we'll remove this one let's start working on this part so inside this we are going to take this div and here let's take a class name of mr auto then we'll do place self center and we'll do for large we are going to do column span of seven for this section let's take a class name and uh sorry i think uh, outer also you have to take another div here so you're going to take another div here and this will be our inner div so for this div we are going to take a class name so we'll do this some max w screen of excel we'll do px of four py of eight mx auto for large we are going to do gap of 8 for excel we will do gap of 0 for large we are going to do py of 16 and for large we are going to do grid columns of 12 alright let's format this so this is the inner div this is fine now inside this we are going to take h1 and this will be based fashion collection now if you want you can give any text you want based on your choice here we are going to give some class name so we'll do max w2 excel all right mb of 4 we'll do text 4 excel we'll do font extra bold we'll do tracking light sorry this will be tracking tight and this will be leading uh, we are going to give none then for md we are going to do text 5 excel for excel we are going to do text 6 excel and i think that's it now let's save it and let's see what we are getting all right this is fine now next thing all right so now this is coming fine now next thing what we need to do so after this h1 we are going to take another paragraph and let's copy this uh, text from here now if you want you can add any text you want here for now i'll just add some dummy text that's it now for this p we are going to take a class name so we'll do max w to excel we'll do a mb of four uh, let's make mb of six we'll do font light then we'll do text gray of 500 we'll do large mb of 8 for md we'll do text large all right for large also we'll do text excel let's save it and let's see okay all right so this is all about now after this what we are going to do we'll take another uh, let's take anchor here and this will be our gate started 
let's take this one as a button because I think we are having this uh, like it's up to you let's keep this one as button only so for this one we are going to do a type of button and now let's take a class name here now what I'm going to do instead of rewriting the class name let's take it from here all right let's take from here let's copy this sorry and here I'll paste it let's save this let's see so this is fine all right so after this we are going to take another div and another uh, thing I notice is that instead of this one we are going to keep this one as uh, we'll do explore shop collection okay this is fine and also let's import this const router this will be able to use router and uh, what we are going to do we on click of that we want to go to the all all products page so we'll do router dot push slash and let's see this route here so this one we are going to copy and we'll paste it here that's it okay now after this what we are going to do we'll just render some of the images so for this one we'll take a class name we'll do hidden for large we are going to do empty of zero for large we'll do column span of five and for large we'll do flex now inside this i'm going to use an image let's use a uh, alt of header something like that or let's give the same explore shop collection this image and here i'm going to give a source now for this source i will be using some dummy uh, image url that i'll be using i downloaded free from uh, google so you can basically use uh, whatever you like so i already have this link i'll copy the first one so let's copy this and i'll paste it here so this is the first one we need all right so now let's format this and let's see what we're getting okay so now you can see that this is looking nice so now next thing is that we have to basically render some kind of uh, this uh, sales product here all right so after this we are going to take another div let's give a class name here so we'll do max w screen excel all right we'll do px of 4 py of 8 <laughs> not sure how many times i use this px and py and this will be mx of auto for smpy of 12 for sm we'll do px of 6 and for large you're going to px of 8 now these all are like kind of standard uh, tailwind, uh, tailwind CSS classes that you can use to create a good layout. Now I have actually spent so much time uh, while creating this uh, particular application. So what I am basically doing, I already have written this one in other place and from there I am just uh, typing. If I just spend time while creating this video then it will be like it will take so much time. Alright, now here inside of this I have this another div now here we have class name of we'll do grid we'll do grid calls of one we'll do gap of four for large we'll do grid uh, for large we'll do of three and for large we'll do item stretch all right inside this we'll take another div we'll give a class name so for this one we'll do grid p of six bg gray hundred we'll do rounded we'll do place content center and do smp of eight <clears throat> sorry now here we are going to do another div and for this one we'll do a class name uh, let's make this one as max w md we'll do mx of auto we'll do text center and we'll do for large we'll do text left all right here we'll take another div inside of this and let's take a h2 and we'll do some kind of summer sale collection so for this one we are going to take another class name 
we'll do a text of excel we'll do font bold we'll do text gray 900 and for sm we'll do text 3xl all right and now here what we are going to do after this we are going to take another button and we'll do shop all and let's use the same class name that we are using here also so i'll just use the same here let's format this let's save it and let's see what we are getting all right so this is fine so we are getting summer cell collection shop all on click of that it will go to a, um, the same page now what we are going to do basically after this section whatever data we are receiving based on that we are going to only render some two data from the sales so this is the data that we are having you can see that this is the products so now let's go here in this part so after this we are going to take another div so we'll do a class here let's do a class name of for large we'll do column span of two for large we'll do py of eight inside this will take a ul and here we'll do a class name so we'll do a grid grid columns of two and gap of four here we are going to do this products and then products dot length if this is true all right so or else we are not going to render anything so this will be our products dot map this will be product item all right now here what we are going to return another thing we have to do so let's do one thing uh, let's filter this on first so we only want to render the sales product so we can basically filter this one let's take item so we'll do item dot on sale if this is equal to equal to yes all right and then we are going to do dot sorry dot splice so we are going to take only first two items and then we'll do dot map all right so based on this we are going to render and here we are going to take a li so we'll do a key here so this will be product item dot id for this li let's uh, i think let's take here we are going to render the image so let's take anchor for this one we are going to give a h ref or let's we can also do something like this instead of anchor let's take a div here and inside this we are going to render the image so we'll do source source will be this product item dot image url all alt we can give product item all right and uh, let's give this one a cell product item and here we are going to give a class name so we'll do object cover we'll do w full we'll do rounded and we'll do aspect square all right so this is done now next we'll take another div here and for this one we'll take a class name we'll do empty of three inside this we'll take a3 and here we are going to render this product item dot name all right and now what else we can do we can also render the price so we'll do a paragraph and here we are going to basically render this product item dot price and here we'll take a span and this will be basically how uh, if the product obviously is in sales we have to show how much currently the sale is going on so here we are going to do this minus and here what we are going to do we are going to basically do this product item dot price drop so this basically this percent is off let's take a class name for this one so we'll do a class name of font medium we'll do text gray 900 all right and i think this is fine for this this one will take a class name so we'll do a mt of one we'll do text sm and we'll do text uh, gray 800 so now let's format this let's save this let's see what we are getting awesome so you can see that now this is fine so this percent is off also for this span we can give some class name so we'll give a class name here we'll give text red 
800 let's make this one as 700 okay let's give also cursor pointer so we'll do class name we'll do cursor pointer all right and now on click what we can do right we can basically do router dot push and then this will basically go to the details page so let's check the route here let's go to all products let's click here slash product so we are having right so we'll go here and we'll do basically slash product slash and then it will be this product item dot id so it will go to the details page so if i now click here awesome okay so this is done now next thing what we are going to do we basically also render the uh, three category of like man woman and kids so for this one let's go to this particular div one two three and here we are going to take another div let's take a class name here so we'll do max w screen excel we'll do px of four py of eight mx auto we'll do sm uh, smpx of six smpy of twelve and large will do px of eight all right now here we are going to take another div inside this will take a h2 and we'll do shop by category okay for this one we'll do class name we'll do text center and for this we'll take a class name we'll do text excel font bold text gray 900 Let's make this on 950 and for sm we'll do text 3xl let's see all right so this is fine and what else we are having we have to render those blocks so here what we can do after this we are going to take ul let's take a class name for this one so we'll do grid grid columns of one we'll do gap of four will do empty of eight and for large we'll do grid columns of three all right now inside this we are going to take li and here we are going to basically uh, let's take a anchor all right or let's do one thing let's take a div only so inside this we are going to take another div let's take a class name so we'll do relative block group and then here we are going to render image let's give a source all right so and also have to give a class name so class name will do object cover we'll do w full and <clears throat> we are going to do aspect square so this is one i'm going to take the source from here just let's create the structure first so after this we are going to take another div let's give a class name so we're going to give here absolute all right we'll do inset of zero flex flex column item start justify end and p of six inside this we're going to take a history and we'll do this one as kids uh, sorry kids then we are having a button and this will be a uh, shop now something like that all right so the same structure we have to use so let's copy this li let's paste it here two more times and for the last li we are going to give a class name so for this one we'll do a large column span of two for large we'll do a call start to all right for large we'll do row span of two for large we'll do row start of uh, one all right and i think rest everything will be fine now let's do one thing let's go to our any button copy this class name and we're going to use in all the places 
all right now let's copy the all the images that we need so this is the first image so we are having image here then take the second image i'll also add all of these in our uh, github repo so you can basically use the same from there if you want and this is the third one that's it what else also let's give a class name for this one also so we'll do text of excel we'll do font medium and we'll do text of white and let's use the same so you have kids this one and this one all right now next what we can do we can make this one as woman and this will be men so let's format this let's save it and let's see what we are getting awesome so you can see that everything is done now only on click of that you have to give the route so let's copy this and let's start with the first one so here we have to give one click sorry not here we have to give here so this will be on click and you have to go router dot push and this will go here let's copy this and this will be woman and let's paste it here and this will be kids also we are having another place that is summer sale shop all and here we are going to go to this all products only so this will be all products let's save it let's go to home and let's click here so we're going to the kids if i click here it's going to the woman and if i click here it's going to the men all right so i think we have completed all the things now only one thing that is left that whenever we click any product here you can see that this product this value instead of this value we have to render this value so let's do this functionality also all right everyone so let's fix that issue also so what exactly we have to do uh whenever there is a product that is currently on sale so whenever we'll add this product so we should get basically 120 dollar instead of 150 how we can do that whenever we will be fetching this list of cart items there we basically do this data manipulation so let's go there and then uh, i think we are having this cart page all right so here you can see that we are having this set cart items so here what we can do if this race dot data and then race dot data dot length if this is true or else this will be empty so this will be race dot data dot map will get the item so this will return the item and then here we are having this product id and then inside this you are going to take item dot product id and then price this will be if this item dot product id dot on sell if this is equal to equal to yes then we are going to basically manipulate this or else this will be always this item dot product id dot price all right so what exactly we need to uh, manipulate so you can go to this uh, common card and here you can see that we are doing some logic here and that is let me just check so we don't have here let's go to our common listing page i think we have something here all right so you can see that we are basically doing this calculation so we can copy this and then uh, we can basically go here and then uh here we can basically paste it so this will be parts int of this calculation all right so this will be let's do this on outside let's updated data and this will be equal to this logic whatever we have done so you can cut it from here and paste it here and then we can pass this updated data and also you have to do the same we have to store the same in the local storage so this is uh, in one place and also i believe in some other place also we are using and that is uh, let's check wherever else we are using this 
we are having this cart model here also we are doing so let's copy this updated data from here and we can basically paste the same here and instead of this so we are going to do updated data and this will be our updated data if i now save this and now let's do one thing so we are getting some error so let's see what is the error we are getting so let's refresh this page first so let's go to cart let's remove all of this let's see what exactly is the error if i try to add this one so we're getting not a number so uh, let's see if the same issue is coming in the cart page or not here also we are having so that we need to check all right so i think here we need to do instead of item dot price we have to do item dot product id dot price correct and the same we have to use here also this will be item dot product id and item dot product id let's save it let's save it now let's check awesome so now if you uh, if i go here try to add this one see this 48 will be added here you can see that we are getting 48 if i now go to cart this will be 48 and 102 if i go to now checkout and also on here also you have to give one click so we'll go to cart let's go to common cart and then we are having checkout so we'll give one click and this will be router so we have to use router here also so const router equal to use router and this will be router dot push this should go to the checkout that's it all right so if i now click here you can see that we are getting 102 and 48 and the same will be calculating here and this is working fine all right so we have completed our project and uh, i hope that you learned a lot of things how to work with uh, client components and server components and this is a very big project now you will think that the reason you may think that why we have done this admin and client logic something like that you can obviously do this one in a different way but i'm just giving you some perspective that this is one of the way that you can achieve that also you can do something like the, something like this for example uh, let's say instead of giving an admin user or basically creating an admin user from the outside you can create a user and there will be one super admin and then whenever any user will basically log in inside this there will be option for example apply for admin access something like that and then once they will apply it will go to the super admin and then based on that they will get the admin access so something like that also you can do but this is a end-to-end -end project that we have created and also full stack with nextjs 13 so i hope that you learned a lot of things and try to apply this knowledge in your uh, main practical project that we are going to create if you are in college try to create some portfolio projects and also if you are in a company then you can use the same in your uh, client project also because this is the same concept you are going to use doesn't matter how much or big project you are currently working also everyone another thing i noticed uh, while testing and that is uh, if i now try to access this uh, page you can see that it is going to the login page because it is uh, going inside this particular logic here so what we need to do because this slash anyone can access so here also you have to give this path name is not equal to equal to slash all right so this is another thing we need to do so now i think this should work so if i now go to the slash you can see that you will be able to access this all right so this is another thing just i want to mention hey everyone i just noticed another issue that i want to fix so just now we have just added this particular logic that whenever the path name will be slash so it should it should not basically go to the login page because this slash page or the home page anybody can access now the same will be for the products page also so you can see that we are having all products men women and kids so now let's see if i now try to go to the all products you can see that it's still going back to the login page so this one we can uh, very easily fix so what we can do we can basically take another logic and we can give here if this path name dot includes is not equal to equal to product so that means if this is not product then only we want to further check the logic if i now save this so that means this is applicable for 
all the listing page and also for the details page now let's say if i now try to go to the home you can see that it's going to the home let's go to the all products it's going to the all products and if i try to go to the details page so it is going to the details page now let's see if uh, the other logic is working or not if i try to go to the cart page so it's going to the login page try to go to the orders it should go to the login page all right but if i now try to log in all right now let's see if i try to go to the cart page so it's going to the cart page let's go to account page orders page then order details let's go to the admin view and this is working fine all right so this is one very important point i just want to fix so what we are doing basically we are checking if the path name is not registered if the path name doesn't include any of the product route and also if the path name is not the slash or basically the home page then only i want to check further and based on that i want to navigate the user to the login page if the user is not authenticated so this is one very important logic i just noticed while testing the application all right everyone so that's all for this particular video and that's all for this application i hope that you learned a lot from this particular uh, video uh, if you like this particular uh, tutorial then give a like comment down and please subscribe to my channel i will see you in my next video till then good luck and peace